Seals are good. Oxygen's good. Just do what you did last time, and you're fine. Follow my one simple rule. Hella, what's my one simple Listen rule? Listen to Lynn. Boss lady knows best. Exactly. Listen to me. Mining's just like any other job. Go steady, go safe, go home with a pocket full of credits at the end of the day. Yeah, totally. It's just like, um, yeah, I work in the Stardock. Except, uh, with more cave-ins, lasers, and accidental dismemberment. Very helpful. Thank you. Eh, you're gonna be fine. Your first outing was solid. And, you know, let's be honest, it ain't exactly astrophysics. That's why I keep him around. Good pep talks. Yeah. And the fact that I can pinpoint a helium deposit from 300 meters. <laughs> Not untrue. A shame we won't find any down here. But the metal deposits alone should pay for our own helium. Hell, after this, we'll have enough jump fuel to bounce from one end of the settled systems to the next. Hey, more minerals, more money. And so the cycle repeats itself. Just no more unauthorized jumps in the house for room space, okay? He's just a big baby. There are worse lives. You know, most Dusties don't even make it this far. I have a good feeling about you. A uh, group hug now or at the end of the shift? <sighs> one of these days, Hella, I am going to leave you behind. Promises, promises. Okay, let's see what we've got. How are we on time? A uh, little longer. Grab some samples? Always. Uh, but not you. Check on Isabel. Make sure she eases up on the breach. I don't feel like getting buried alive today. Roger that. Remember, Dusty. Keep your breathing steady. And never take that helmet off down here. Oxygen processors don't extend this far. Yeah, because God forbid we drill on a rock with breathable atmosphere. Know what I love about working in Freestar Collective Space? Few will say. A job like this in the United Colony? Huh. Read of red tape. Get the readings. 
Yeah, about that. Problem? Uh, not if you consider a spike in gravity readings a problem. I don't. You don't? What we're after? It'll read as an anomaly. That's what I was told, anyway. Okay, now you're starting to freak me out. Relax. It's just another job. Come on. Getting close, I think. Yeah, everything is just... <laughs> Lynn, seriously, uh, there's something really effed up about this. Where is it, Hella? Through there, I think. Okay, you, you're up. Something goes wrong in there, we'll come get you. Uh, <laughs> why would anything go wrong? Would you shut up? Both of you do your jobs. Client is on his way. Okay, take it easy. You were out cold. Uh, no physical damage. Mentally, the jury's still out. You know who you are? New recruit for Argos Extractors? Ring any bells? Any of this look familiar?
Well, you got the sample. Client's on his way, then we all get paid. You remember anything that happened? Huh. Well, you passed out, that's for sure. Everything else? Probably just your brain playing tricks. Either way, we got what we were looking for. All this trouble for that stupid thing? Huh. Sure don't look like much. Never mind what it looks like. It's worth more than this mine has pulled in all month. We'll be... Speak of the devil. Whoa. A constellation contact you is on the approach. Good. Wait, the explorers group? They were kind of a joke. Not a joke. You're just too young to know better. Hey, I'm just saying they got a reputation. Hell, I bet half the crew here doesn't even believe they really exist. Half the crew doesn't believe Earth exists, but it's still there. Same with Constellation. Yeah, but come on. Exploring space? Who does that anymore? Ain't the space we've already got complicated Lynn enough? sure seems to like you. Not to them. Guess she would know. Being the boss and all. All right, Dusty. Airlock. Put your helmet on. of space, but hey, been there. Look, just hand over the credits, and I'll be happy to never see this thing, or you, ever again. That's why I like you, Lynn. All business. Barrett, the scanners on the frontier are reporting a ship coming in hot from orbit. I really thought I lost them.
Crimson Fleet hit us. just put you all on the Crimson Fleet hit list. How about I stay and I send your Dusty here in my place? I, 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 I know, I know, but he's not some miner anymore, Lynn. Soon as he touched that rock, something changed. Don't tell me you can't feel it. Fine. It's a deal. Get out of here, Dusty. You're on to bigger things. Just go. Before I say something I regret. Well, now that that's settled. Vasco, get him to the lodge. No deviations unless absolutely necessary, okay? Protocol Indigo. Indigo? Again? Very well. Oh, and hey, take this. You'll find it very useful out there. And it even tells the time. fits you perfectly. Now, questions? Come on. You're really not at all curious about that light music show you experienced? Why it only affected you? Because if you didn't notice, we've all been handling it since with no problem. The way I see it, Constellation needs that artifact, but they also need you. This mystery is only getting bigger each step we take. And you're part of it now. Technically, it's not even mine. Consider it alone. Vasco will keep you on course. Besides, I'm making an exception, since you can tell Constellation about that vision you had. See, that's the problem with the settled systems. Too easy to take everything for granted. While everyone else is busy playing politics, we're the ones braving the unknown, charting the vastness of space. Without us, the galaxy is just a big room with the lights turned out. That, my friend, is the million credit question. And Constellation can find the answer with your help. 
They're just following the loop, like pirates do. And I have something of a reputation as a loot collector. Come on. Because if you didn't, the way I see it, come. Come on. Because if you didn't, the way I see it. And Vasco, don't let him break my ship. no dalliances, in short, no fun. Unless, as strictly defined by Sarah, said deviations, distractions, and dalliances are completely necessary in getting this fine vessel, the Discovery-class Starship Frontier, back home in one piece. I guess I'm still technically borrowing it from Constellation, even if I have no intention of actually giving it back. I will attempt to boost the shields, just in case there are any difficulties. Shields ready. The rest is up to you. Centered on the HUD, we 
can log in to fire a homing missile. Be 
alien creatures are often unpredictable.
score. Hold them off here. My broken sets up on the roof. I'm on it. No one's getting through. Turn. Frontier has a new captain? You working with Barrett, or did you pry the ship keys out of his cold, dead hands? Oh, <laughs> no. You see, maybe your colleague Barrett didn't tell you, but there's a bit of a legend surrounding that ship. That constellation keeps treasure hidden in the cargo bays, the loot from a hundred planets. And it's going to be ours. That statement is partially correct. The frontier has been to many planets and moons, but the only things held in the cargo bays are spare parts, dust, desiccated food particles, and a variety of species of ant. I don't care what kind of lies Barrett programmed that robot to say. We're taking that ship. You're not talking us out of this score.
They aren't? You sure? I'm not falling for that. Your ship is loaded, and we want it. You're lying. We're getting what's on that ship. I've heard enough out of you. Kill them! Protocol dictates that I am to return to the lodge with no deviation. We are here. Centauri system, and then land in the city of New Atlantis. Do not worry, this will all become second nature before too long.
let me guess. And he's our new captain. My crew can take a look at your ship. And you can stop by the trade authority kiosk if you need to offload some cargo. Nothing for us to do. You're in good flying condition. I would try to viewport. They'll be on your left once you get into the plaza. I'm sure you can find something you like. The Trade Authority runs a vending kiosk next to my booth. It's just off to the side, near the ramp. Besides that, Jemison Mercantile is your closest shop if you're looking for a bit of everything. That's further in, past the security checkpoint. Sure, how about it? Everything looks good here. I'll be at my booth if you need me. I can assure you this unprovoked attack on the United Colonies Research Facility will not be good. This is New Atlantis Transit, or the NAS. It provides free transportation throughout the city. We can take it directly to the map. We may be in a United Colonies city, but Constellation is an entirely neutral entity, and always has been. Hello. Here we are, the Lodge. The front door should unlock if you hold up the watch that Barrett gave you. I have messaged the other members of Constellation. They will be waiting for us inside. inside. If Eric were here, he'd probably tell you that you're part of something bigger now. 
We appear to have a visitor. Welcome to Constellation. We have a lot to talk about. Would you care to tell us what happened to our friend? Why you're here and he isn't? I see. Vasco, verify. All statements made have been factual. Ugh. This is just typical. Barrett hands over our ship and our robot to some random employee of that discount mining outfit he uses. Walter. And if we hadn't insisted on installing those emergency protocols, I guarantee you this rock breaker here would be halfway to Neon. But that didn't happen. He's here with the artifact. Thank you, Matteo. Now, let's focus on what's in front of us, shall we? What happened when it was extracted? Did anyone see anything? Hear anything? We think it's anyone else who pulls one out of the rock for the first time. Why? We're not sure yet. So if you wouldn't mind adding another data point. Interesting. Similar to Barrett's description of the experience, with less embellishment. Are you hearing this? Do you all believe me now? Whether it happened or not wasn't in doubt. But honestly, Patrick, you expect us to believe in fairy tales. If this is the greatest mystery in the universe, why couldn't it be part of the ultimate mystery? But gentlemen, can we please focus? Noel, I think it's time we tested your theory. Right. Let's see. We know the artifacts react to each other. The pieces we already have move when they're in close contact. Now, if we add this new one to the two we already have... The artifact. If you could place it on the table here. That's it. Just like the others. And to imagine, we thought there were only two of them at first. Oh my god, that's it. They're reacting. Look at how it's coming together. That energy that's arcing between them, no manufactured material in the settled systems can do that. None of them. This proves Easy, that... girl. Breathe. You'll have a heart attack. She's not the only one. If they're coming together, that means there's a set. Built by an intelligence outside the settled systems. Still 2,000 credits for our little wager, Godfrey? You're on, Walter. Well, if we had all the answers, it wouldn't be exciting, now would it? Not to take away from the moment, but what are we going to do about our new friend here? <laughs> so, are you ready to get to work? See if exploration is the life you want to lead in this little universe of ours? We're all here because we're committed to exploring space. Humanity may have settled the stars, but that doesn't mean we should stop diving into the unknown. Beyond that, you'll be expected to use your own judgment, just like the rest of us. Individually, they're just odd hunks of metal, another oddity from the uncharted reaches of space. As to what they are, what they're building, well, you'll be part of solving that puzzle now. You should take some time to get settled in. Introduce yourself to everyone. Some of our members aren't here, but you'll meet them soon. Come find me when you're ready. You and I are going to be doing some traveling together. Get your feet wet. And here, I think you've earned something for bringing the artifact to us. In addition to credits, why don't we set you up with a backpack with some boost capability, hmm? You'll need it out in the field anyway. Just mind your head.
So, are you ready to get to work? Or was there something else? I understand. You've... Be I hope you are satisfied with the quarters available to you. This there is all feeling, exciting, though, that you've seen something there's that no one really else a lot of pressure on us, isn't that there? You know something no we one else does. Right. Are you doing okay? I'm not sure anyone really asked yet. Don't want you to think we're focused on the artifacts and nothing else. You matter too. You've done something really significant bringing that artifact here. I'm Mateo, theological scholar by trade, but now, well, an explorer like you. It's really good to have you with us. Second one was on Kazal, buried the same as the one you found. But the first one, right under our noses for years, sitting in storage, masquerading as an oversized paperweight. Can you imagine potentially the greatest discovery in human history collecting dust? Well, there was some overlap in interests. I'd spent years searching for religious relics from human history. I had made a really incredible discovery, only to lose it to a greedy corporation. So I tried to steal it back. In the process, I met Walter. Turned out he owned the corporation. After a long talk, we realized we had a lot in common, and I was invited to join Constellation. Take care of yourself. Well, I suppose calling you a rock breaker may have been a bit out of line. Still doesn't excuse it. My frustrations lie more with Barrett. Not the first time his shenanigans have jeopardized one of our ventures. Not fair of me to take it out on you, especially since it would seem he made the right call this time. So, let's start over, shall we? Walter Stroud, CEO of Stroud Eklund, member of Constellation, and off times grumpy old man. Welcome aboard. Yes, well, a stocked bar is a treat I think Constellation can afford. For now. But if you clean us out, you're on your own. By the way, in addition to a place to stay, the Lodge has a wealth of modification and research equipment. Spacesuit customization, pharmaceutical manufacturing, testing alien substances, the whole thing. You can even fashion industrial pieces for large-scale projects, if you don't mind extracting a few raw resources from a nearby planet, that is. I'm a fan of self-reliance, so I encourage you to make use of the tools we have to build what you need. Funny thing about companies, you build one sturdy enough, it doesn't need you there all the time to prop it up. Stroud Eklund functions quite well on a day-to-day -day basis, leaving me time to devote to more esoteric pursuits. For years, I was captivated by the writings of Constellation's founder, Sebastian Banks. I finally decided to do something more than admire from a distance, and so now, I call the Lodge home, as much as anywhere else. Until next time. I know everyone's excited by the artifacts, but we need to be as objective as possible and be aware of possible negative effects. That was intense, wasn't it? The artifacts, I mean. Sorry, this must all be a little overwhelming for you right now. I guess a lot overwhelming, now that I think about it. I'm Noelle. It's really nice to meet you. And thank you for bringing the artifact to us. Planning on sticking around then? Good! I think we can find a spot for you. And along the way, I can give you the very abbreviated tour. Right. So you've seen the library, obviously. I'm right. I have some.
Walter is quite proud of the collection, but Matteo has made more than a few contributions. Gardens are out the doors there if you need a moment of quiet contemplation. Emphasis on the quiet part, at least usually. Let's head upstairs. Sebastian Banks, Constellation's off, founder, he had this place built rather decades than ago. simply making things worse. It was a big to-do at the time, but most people in the city have forgotten we're here. I am at your service, Captain. So this is the bar, usually no tender, so help yourself, within reason, of course. Now let's see about that room. You're in luck. We were almost at max occupancy already, but there's still one room up for grabs. It's so nice having the place so full. Okay, this'll be you. Common room on one side, so that'll be quiet, and Mateo on the other side, so maybe a little less quiet. I'm sure Sarah has something planned for each of us, so I'd better get back to it. Don't want to keep her waiting too long. Enjoy! Ever since I got here, this has felt like home. These people are family. I hope it feels yeah. that way for you too. So Mateo, I hope you are satisfied. With Ready to get out there? To you. I'm so busy with our work here that I don't think Not much, but you've seen them for yourself. It doesn't take a lot to realize we're dealing with something extraordinary. Just what that is, we'll have to figure out. It's what we do. We're going to be doing some old-fashioned detective work. The artifacts are relatively inert once they're out of bedrock. That means people can pass them around, not even knowing what they are. I've been letting my contacts know to be on the lookout for strange metal objects. Get back a lot of noise, usually. But a tip from the UC Vanguard sounds promising. A volunteer force that helps defend the edges of United Colonies space. They're always looking for recruits. Lots of retired veterans and dangerous professionals mixed in with part-timers who barely have a laser cannon welded to a hull. My contact is in the recruiting office, so he hears a lot about what the volunteers are up to. Felt the same way when I started, too. There's an electricity in the air when you know you're about to uncover something. But it's not just that. I want to take this opportunity to see how you handle yourself, and for you to learn more about us. I'm going to be sticking with you for this. We'll be traveling together until we either find an artifact, or this lead runs dry. You mean, besides the ship, the robot, and a place to stay all rent-free? We do have some funds we can disperse from time to time. Not to mention, I think we can get you a proper suit. We're explorers. We keep a lot of equipment on hand for that purpose. 
So the more you work with us, the more we can share what we have. We'll need to head to Mast. Check in with the Vanguard recruiting office where my contact works. And listen, whatever you were before, or whatever you do once you're out there, I don't care. So long as you don't bring UC security to our doorstep. Every member of Constellation is their own conscience. Understood? I mean, Constellation has a roster of members who haven't always been on the right side of their respective society. We're risk takers. Some of us have seen the inside of a jail cell more than once. If you join us, it means you're committed to our mission. In exchange, we give you latitude in your choice of means. Good. Let's take a little stroll through New Atlantis, shall we? your friend hopefully oh, another space explorer hey you ever think of joining up with a vanguard help the united colonies earn some credits even get your uc citizenship all right all right can't blame me for trying right i mean i still haven't given up on getting sarah to re-enlist it's a game we play he asks i say no here's what i got for you two Vanguard volunteer by the name of Moera. Helps patrol the old neighborhood. Sol, Mars, Neptune, you know. The Sol system? Which Admiral did he upset to get that posting? He's Martian, born and raised. Not like I can get anyone else to care. Word is he's got some fancy metal ornament he's been showing off to the old grounders. Matches that description Sarah gave me. Oh, he goes way back. I think he was recruit number 81 or something. You kidding? Lowest posting request rate in the whole fleet. Only thing there the UC cares about is Mars. And no one wants to go to Mars. They want to get off Mars. Soul system is a lot of planets. But a vet like Moera will be checking in at Sidonia on the regular. You mean hitting the bars, don't you, John? Hey, nothing wrong with a little refresh between patrols. Anything for Sarah. UC always takes care of its own. Even the prodigal children. No, oh, brother. I'm serious about that recruitment offer, by the way. You just come talk to me when you're ready. UC is a good friend to have. Hey, Sarah's friend. You... Well, all right. Take the elevator down to the Vanguard Orientation Hall. You can get started at any of the registration terminals. The system will walk you through the rest. And if you've got any questions, I'm happy to answer them.
flown across most of the settled systems in all manners of spacecraft, and yet I still get sick on the NAT. Ah, oh, I've always liked that statue. It's beautiful, isn't it? Hmm. I wonder what the artist was trying to represent. By Vectera, by Vectera, by Vectera! I can't believe it! Is it you? Is it really, really you? Captain of the frontier, bane of the fleet, constellations shining star of stars. Oh, you must have me confused with someone who isn't your number one fan. There's nothing weird about that. Although, for a second, I didn't even recognize you. Shame on me. But now that I know it's you, what are the odds? And to think, I almost went for coffee instead. But I changed my routine for one day, and here you are. It's almost like it was meant to be. Me too. I was minding your business as well. Visualizing it, dreaming it, and tending to it like a garden in bloom. And now here it is, our first spring. Either way, it's such an honor to meet you. Hey, do you mind if I follow you around? Do you need a sidekick? What am I saying? You're a hero, of course you do! Lead the way! You won't be disappointed! It's nice to see a new face. First time in New Atlantis? <laughs> oh boy. I didn't mean for you to take it personally. It's just something that's at the customers. Break the ice. Know what I mean? Listen, you just relax. Make yourself comfortable. You're welcome to stay as long as you want. That work for you, new guy? Let me know if there's anything I can get you. Well, that's what I'm here for. What'll it be? Yep, spaceport traffic keeps me pretty busy. But just between you and me, I've got something in the works that'll change everything. A new drink that'll make this place famous. Galaxy-wide. You would love it, I guarantee. 
Only, I can't make you one right now. Don't have the ingredients. I made a deal with a holler to bring me some small samples of an ingredient I think will make all the difference. But it never showed up. Turns out the guy I hired was also hired by a few other folks. The kind of folks who ship less than legal cargo. Security got wind, and the whole lot was impounded. Now they're just sitting on it, taking their sweet time like they always do. It's killing me. Very clever of you. Your parents must be so proud. And really? I'm not even certain this is what I need to finish the recipe. I just... I think it is. I need to get my hands on that cargo. I mean, doing something about this won't exactly be on the straight and narrow, will it? I really do. It's gonna keep me awake nights if I don't try. Before we say anything else, I am in no way asking you to do anything that might violate any of the many, many laws in place here in New Atlantis or the larger United Colonies. This is just one friend talking to another friend, asking if maybe that friend could possibly find a way to get her important cargo out of the impound. And if, hypothetically, that were done in a less than 100% legal way, well, that might not be the worst thing in the world. You, uh, with me on this? Surely you're not seriously considering this course of action. The last thing we need is UC security on our backs. What? Come on, no! I'm already uncomfortable with this whole thing. Don't go making jokes like that. Seriously, can you help me with this or not? God, you have no idea what a relief this is. I'm obviously not expecting you or anyone to go in guns blazing and taking hostages or something. I just figure there has to be a way to get what I need. I know a few things, but not much. The cargo is being held down at the spaceport, not in the security office. Still, they use the same access cards. If you had one, it'd work. How or why you would have a UC security access card is none of my business, of course. I'm sure I'm better off not knowing. Beyond that, the ship decks over there might also be able to get in. I don't know any of them, or I'd be talking to them instead of you. No offense. I'm not worried. I'm annoyed. Wait, are you saying I should be worried? No, of course not. It'll be fine. Totally fine. I, I trust you. Stop by anytime you'd like to catch up. This really isn't a good place for civilians to be hanging around. There's something I can help you with? Yeah... I can't really just let you in there. Yeah, I hope so. Well, that's... Uh, thank you. All right, look, don't tell anyone I did this for you. I could lose my job over it. If anyone asks, I had nothing to do with this. You got it? One second. All right, make it quick, will you?
I really love this place. Couldn't imagine that- Hey there, new guy. Hope life is treating you well. Oh, no way. You really got it? I probably don't want to know what you did to get this, right? I mean, I want to know, but it's maybe better if I don't. I certainly hope not. This is a huge deal to me, but it's not worth either of us murdering over. Well, look, I can assure this will all be worth it in the end. Matter of fact, I'm going to let you have the first ever sample. On top of that, you get free drinks. Not, not like unlimited free drinks, but you want a little pick-me-up now and then? I got you covered. I need some time to work on what comes next. But this? This was the difficult part, I think. Really? Thank you so much. See you around.
2 and 2161, the UC issued the Centaurus Proclamation, granting UC citizens the right to settle distant worlds and form their own sovereign powers. It wasn't long before the first new faction, the Free Star Collective, was formally organized in 2188, later followed by House Maroon, revealing themselves to the universe in 2213. The result of the Centaurus proclamation has always left me torn. So much conflict arose as a result. Was it worth it? It was only in 2230 that the faction known as House of Arun first made contact with the rest of the settled systems. Founded by the passengers of a colony ship that had left New Atlantis and disappeared four decades earlier, House of Arun was a faction unlike any other. A theocracy dedicated wholly to the beliefs of its isolationist founder, Janan Varun. House Varun initially made overtures of peace towards the rest of the settled systems. They claimed their only intention was to spread the word of their god, the Great Serpent. But none could have guessed that this worship might take the form of a bloody war. The Serpent's Crusade. The Freestar Collective was initially founded in 2188, when the citizens of Aquila banded together with the pleasure city of Neon in mutual defense. But in 2194, after the deployment of a UC medical star station in orbit around their world, the citizens of Narion also requested to join the Collective. The resulting rise in tensions between the Free Star Collective and UC culminated in the Settled System's first intergalactic conflict, the Narion War. Despite a decisive victory by the UC, the colonies permitted the citizens of Narion to join the Collective, forming the basis for the fiercely independent union that persists to this day. Beginning in 2240, House Varun forces declared all-out war on the rest of human civilization, initiating the Serpent's Crusade. The next 23 years, Thousands of Freestar, UC, and independent souls were killed by agents of House Varun in the name of their serpent god. It was only with the death of their founder in 2263 and the succession of his heir, Jarek, that House Varun finally sued for peace. There remains, however, select members of House Varun who refuse to recognize the cessation of hostilities their leaders established. Even after House Varun's mysterious disappearance, these zealots remain a threat to all who encounter them. Their pacification, a goal of all space. Of the many conflicts between the galaxy's factions, none was more brutal than the recent colony war between the UC and the Freestar Collective. Set off by the unauthorized Freestar colonization of Vesta's Pride in 2308, a direct violation of the Narion Treaty, the colony war spread quickly across the galaxy. Both sides deployed every tool at their disposal. Armadas of warships, mechanized combat platforms, or mechs, even bioengineered alien creatures, the infamous UC Xeno weapons. It was only in 2311 at the Battle of Cheyenne that the scales finally tipped. The Free Star Collective, utilizing their civilian fleet as a human shield, successfully crippled the superior United Colonies Navy. After their shocking victory against the galaxy's greatest navy, the Free Star Collective offered terms of peace, which the colonies, out of an interest in staving off any further human costs, accepted. The galaxy has been rebuilding ever since. 
colony war was a horrible conflict that irreparably wounded the settled systems. There were times I felt that it would never end. The settled world were left untouched by the colony war. But nowhere could the viciousness of modern warfare be seen more clearly than on the free star planet of Nera. Initially occupied by invading United Colonies forces as a forward operating position, repeated attempts to take and retake the planet by collective forces led only to devastation. Swaths of the world were transformed into scorched husks, a nightmarish testament to the depths of human ingenuity and human cruelty. And today, Nera remains a continuing reminder to the horrors of unfettered war. I bring her here almost every day to stare at this thing. This thing's like an artist's rendition, right? No animal can be this ugly in real life. Dad wanted me to apply for the administration track at school, but I'm going to be a xenobiologist. It's science division or nothing. In the midst of the colony war, a different kind of tragedy struck the UC city of Londinian. A newly constructed but critical supply center for the United Colonies war effort Londinian found itself overrun by one of the galaxy's most no mysterious predators, between the Terramorph. I wonder if they can grab jump or something. A rare but pervasive threat to all human settled worlds. Terramorphs swept over the city, seemingly out of nowhere, on a scale never before seen in recorded history. Valiant efforts by the UC military slowed the onslaught, but the creatures proved unstoppable. Ultimately, the decision was made to destroy the Londinian spaceport, sealing off the city, the outbreak, and its citizenry from the galaxy at large. The tragedy of Londinian is mourned by the UC to this day. Devastation wrought by the Colony War, the UC and the Freestar Collective came together to ratify a treaty that became known as the Armistice. Both sides agreed to a vast reduction in standing forces and that Xeno weapons and mech warfare would be outlawed. All related research was sealed away, accessible only in cases of dire emergency. But the Collective had another demand, that the active commanders of the UC military stand trial for their actions. The United Colonies, in the interest of peace and galactic security, agreed. In 2311, three United Colony senior officers were found guilty. Commander Henry Durant, General Indira Rastogi, and Fleet Admiral Francois Senon, known better as Ve Victus. All were sentenced to death for their actions, bringing the colony war to a close and returning peace to the galaxy at long last. I was a strong supporter of the Armistice. All of the terrible weapons that both sides used against one another. It had to end. type of weapon combat tech won't make? It was into this new world that the Vanguard was born. An official branch of the UC Navy, the Vanguard is the United Colonies Volunteer Fleet, serving a myriad of security, logistical, and reconnaissance roles. And after a sufficient length of service, UC citizenship is guaranteed to every Vanguard member. Open to all captains, regardless of origin, the Vanguard is leading the charge to protect and support the citizens of the United Colonies, wherever in the galaxy they may be. No one is born a United Colony 
Chinese citizen. Only through service to the UC can one hope to earn one's citizenship. But the UC prides itself on taking care of its people. Cost of living controls mean citizens pay less than their foreign counterparts for needs big and small. All citizens are issued a grant upon joining to get themselves on their feet. And only UC citizens have the opportunity to purchase property, getting the chance to live in one of the most beautiful cities in the settled systems. By joining the Vanguard today, you too can begin earning your place here, in the heart of galactic civilization, as a citizen of the United Colonies. spent a fair bit of time in simulators just like these. They're startlingly realistic. Have fun. This is the Mark 18 flight simulation chamber applicant, currently in orbit around a high detail recreation of a remote world. When you're ready to begin, please take a seat in the pilot's chair. Your exam is simple. Defeat as many tiers of opponents as you can before your ship is disabled. You must defeat at least three tiers of opponents to pass the exam. Good hunting, applicant.
collected sufficient opponents to pass the exam. You may now exit the simulator through the hatch to record your current score, or stay and try your hand at the remaining tiers. Congratulations, applicant. You've passed. You can head up to Commander Tuwala to receive your final results and your probationary assignment. Or you're welcome to take another run at the simulation if you'd like to try and earn a better score. We'll only keep your best run. Actually pass? Well, if you can do it, I can. After I gather my thoughts. Only those on official United Colonies business can access them. Well, look who's back. Everything go all right with the exam? Did you have some questions you needed answered for? Ah, so these are your numbers that just came through then. You ready to hear how you did? Then let's get to them. So, looking at the data, hit every mural in the orientation hall, huh? A test of preparation and thoroughness. To trace the Vanguard values highly. Psychological results are all within expected levels. Navy doesn't have room for folks that'll fall apart the first time they're trying to outrun a homing missile. Now, how'd you do against your foes? Tier 4, not too shabby. The techs make us test each level of the Sim too. I can tell you that wave are some real artificial bastards. Good job putting them away. Hell of a job. I might even let you fly me around sometime. So then, looking at your results as a whole, and presuming you're successful in completing your probationary mission, you could have your UC citizenship after only... 10 years service. Pretty standard for combat assignments. But your performance in the simulator does mean I can offer a signing bonus. Help convince you to join the cause. 10 years might seem like a long time, but it's worth the climb if you wish to become a citizen. So, sounds to me like we've got Vanguard material on our hands. 
If you're interested, we could bring you on as a provisional member today. Get you the credits you've earned, then send you out on your probationary mission. First, though, all UC service people, provisional or otherwise, are required to swear an oath. So, you want to make this official? Commit yourself to the cause of the colonies? It's a big decision. John, you're not about to have my compatriot here sign some kind of contract that sells you their grandmother five years down the line, are you? Officer's honor, Sarah. This is honest work for honest credits. So, you ready to do the deed? You're not in the Freestar Collective here. Vanguard keeps this work above board. You want in, you have to do the same as everyone else. And that starts with the oath. Fantastic. Then just follow me. Wouldn't be right doing this where we couldn't see the stars. Now, raise your right hand. The motto of the Vanguard is Supra et Ultra, above and beyond. That is where we serve, beyond the furthest reaches of the United Colonies military, and with honor and duty above reproach. Do you swear to protect and defend the citizens of the United Colonies to the best of your abilities? and to uphold the values of the Vanguard. Honor, loyalty, self-reliance in all your actions as a member of the United Colonies Navy. Then let me be the first to officially welcome you to the United Colonies Vanguard. Now, only thing left is getting you that probationary mission. And what I've got is comms repair. Group trying to refurb an old colony war processing plant on Tau City 2. Sounds like they'd barely gotten set up when their communications died. Place is as isolated as they come, so Brass wants a vanguard to deliver the repair suite and ensure anyone present is safe and secure. So, can the people of Tau City 2 count on you? That's the spirit. Head down to the spaceport and talk to Crew Chief Harath. He'll get you the repair suite, plus your new recruit kit. Oh, and your advance. Give it your all out there. Supra et Ultra. It's been a long time since I've been to Mars. Soul system doesn't get a lot of traffic. to limp back here at all. Pull it for leeches, get it fixed up, and let her know we'll have it ready as soon as we can. Ah, you are new probationary then? Crew Chief Herat, pleasure to be working with you. It's my job to make sure all you rocket jockeys are ready for anything that comes at you up there. Now, Manifest says we're fitting you out with one comms repair suite. In addition to the standard issue welcome kit all probationary pilots get for their first mission. Med packs, some small arms, couple spare ship parts, all the essentials in case of any surprises up there. My people will have everything on your ship before you lift off. Won't even know they were there. Hmm. 
So, paying a visit to the people of scenic Tau City 2. Nice easy one for your first job. Just keep your head on swivel and you'll come home safe. Any questions before you head out? I honestly didn't realize it had people living on it until we got your record. Report they gave us seemed clean, no known hostile outposts. But I wouldn't say that's permission to let your guard down. Just watch out for wildlife and pirates. Keep those med packs handy and you'll be fine. Nothing too dangerous, if that's your concern. The repair suite's mostly just wiring and circuit boards. The welcome kit has some goodies in there I wouldn't leave sitting around when company comes to visit. But it's nothing some proper storage can't make safe. Then I won't keep you. Make us look good out there, recruit. that was on Vectera, right? Uh, you flew in on the, uh, frontier. Excellent. So glad I caught you. Tommy Bitlow, SSNN Research intern. Word is the frontier was involved in an attack? It's true, right? You saw some real action? Great, great! Uh, my boss, Nadia Mufaz, would kill to talk to you. An actual eyewitness! Uh, there's credits in it for credible newsworthy information. Everyone knows David Barron, the face and voice of SSNN, if you will. But Nadia is in charge of all the research. All the best stories were written by her. She's uh, really something. Just share what you want, then. All we want to know is about the attack itself. Just go to the SSNN building. It's not far. Keep it up, Tommy. You're killing it! in. Feel free to look around. I can take care of transactions, and if you've got questions, just ask. Oh, please, take a look. Appreciate the business.
managed to find such a delightful spot in this rather drab city. Leeches on the hall. Multiple leeches in the grab drive. Suppose that would explain the brownouts. So what's this going to be? Say I'm a fan of excitement and drama around here. He ain't been around. Went off on patrol. Hasn't been back in since. We're starting to think it might be time to pour one out to the blackest sea. You got another word for it? He means out of space. Ma'am. Believe me, I've heard it. After about round three or four, it was all he would talk about. He's got a voice that carries. Look, nothing more I'd love than to help out a fellow Martian. Especially one that's missing. But... <clears throat> he has a tab, and you don't know if he's coming back. It's a lot of credits, okay? I let it slide for a long time because he's a regular, but... If I'm out all that money, I've got problems. What do you say? No, I've done this routine. Let's skip to the part where you admit you're lying about what he owes. You calling me a liar? I'll throw both of you out of this bar right now. Oh, please. Two strangers arrive from Offworld, asking for information only you have. You see an opportunity. Everyone always does. Lower the price. Don't think we can't find another way to get what we want. Fan. Life on Sidonia ain't hard enough. You gonna guilt trip me? Don't try to guilt. Come on. I'm trying to help here. All right, I'll give up. Just trying to earn a living here. Last time, I was here, my wearer kept yelling about the lady of love. Just singing songs. All that kind of thing. Venus. That's only one planet. Hardly an entire patrol route. I got what I got, okay? Fine. We'll make do.
soul system out into the beyond and touched your magnificence. That he learned the truth of the shrouding, a coming eternal embrace. That you will reward the promised and cast the accursed into shadow. crew accounted for. We are ready to depart. Two steps in and we're already looking at a corpse. Okay, it's not
not Vanguard Moara. Looks like spacers were scavenging around here and someone else came in and said hello. Oh, this will be your last encounter with the spacer crew. They pillage abandoned facilities and shoot anyone who gets in their way. They're even less organized than the Crimson Fleet. Just countless desperate groups scavenging and killing to survive.
Am I glad to meet whoever you two are? Looks like we're all in one piece. Any day you walk away from, right? Ecliptic mercs. They'll work for anyone. And vanguards don't exactly make friends with local pirates, thieves, and scavengers. I think enough of them finally got fed up and they pulled their money to hire professionals. What? You guys still exist? Man, I've only heard stories. We've heard stories too. About a strange object you found on patrol. So, you know what that thing is. I tried to hawk it in Sidonia, and the guy thought I was peddling phony titanium. Mm, it doesn't play nice with scanners. It'd be worthless to someone trying to flip rare minerals quickly. So you're saying I shouldn't be using it as a hood ornament? Hey, I'll trade some weird space rock for a rescue anytime. Hope you figure out whatever that thing is. Let's grab the artifact. Good work. Let's get back to the lodge. Clamps released. I hope you are satisfied with the quarters <laughs> available to you. Go ahead. Do the honors. It fits. Energy spiked a bit, but it's restabilized. Is there anything new showing up? No, it's the same as before. There's a massive output as the artifact is added, then it harmonizes. Like it's waiting for the others. Hmm, that's speculation, but I think you're right. We need more. Here. You've earned this. Welcome to Constellation. As a full member this time. Honestly, this just makes it more official. Call it right person, right place, right time. But once the artifacts started coming together, you were one of us. Well, if you ever find a relic bottle from Earth, we'll all be happy to share it with you. By the way, how would you like to keep traveling together? I'm not sitting behind my desk for this. These artifacts are a new chapter for Constellation, and I'm going to be out there for it. And I want you out there as well. You got results. <laughs> I need someone like you watching my back. All right. We've got a few more leads we should talk about. First, there's an expedition that Samco has been putting together. It's in Free Star Collective Space, and he knows it inside and out. There's also the Eye, our star station in orbit. About time for you to meet Vladimir. He's been hard at work tracking down more anomalies. And last but not least, Noel. Have we heard anything from Barrett yet? A courier from Argos Extractors came by to let us know they're packing up the operation on Vectera. But that's it. No other word. Mm, that's not good. We should get over there and check on Barrett in person. Not at all. 
My parents considered themselves to be enlightened, but their lives were so busy they rarely pursued their beliefs. By the time I was old enough to start questioning these things, the idea of following any organized religion was almost an afterthought. It's not that I don't want to believe in anything, it's that my scientific mind is often at odds with my spiritual center. Having been out there, in the Starfield, seeing all those magnificent wonders with my own eyes, I need answers, not religious theory. I'm sorry if that disappoints you, but don't worry. While we're on this journey together, I fully intend to respect your religious beliefs. You mean, apart from being the chair of Constellation for the past five years? Well, let's see. I pride myself with my aptitude for astrodynamics, calculating optimal trajectories for grav jumping. That's been quite useful in the past. And as far as planetary exploration, my area of expertise is botany. So, don't worry. I won't let you eat anything that might put you in the hospital. <laughs> exploration is my entire life. I consider it both a career and recreation. That being said, I will make a confession. But you have to promise to keep it between us. Before I graduated from school, I was in a band. And no, I don't mean the school band. I mean a rock band. We called ourselves Ironic Comet. <laughs> a ridiculous name, I know. But uh, we were just a bunch of teenagers getting together and having fun. And before you ask, no, I wasn't the lead singer. I actually played the drums. The band never really went anywhere, of course, but those were good times, and I remember them fondly. Oh, okay then. Maybe another time. It's been ages since Constellation has had someone new. I wonder what he's like. Just go easy on him. Being interrogated by a kid ain't exactly the best way to make a first impression. I'll limit it to the really important stuff, Dad. This does not bode well. And you must be the latest poor fool to get dragged into our dysfunctional little family. No. Funny story, caught this one stealing my ship. Only reason I didn't turn her in is because we have the same last name. Dad. All right, that's my one. Whoa, I know a few dark sides of the Aquila moons, but if you're looking for deep history lessons, well, I'm gonna fall asleep before you do. Trust me, don't encourage him. Koriko, by the way, hi hi. Too late. Been there, done that. I think you should give this little lady the benefit of the doubt. You could be severely underestimating her capabilities. That's enough. Look, Cora goes where I go. But it's not like I'm dragging her into every dark cave we uncover. She'll be on the ship. Now, let's talk business. Sarah tell you about the expedition? Sure enough, that's where we're heading. The three of us are heading to Aquila, for a settled planet of the Freestar Collective and, not coincidentally, the home of their capital, Aquila City. We'll land in the city's spaceports, but the frontier is our goal. It's a rough country, spawned a lot of stories. And I got a lead on a tale that um, makes me think one thing. Artifact. Yeah, don't piss off the Freestar Rangers. As far as the Collective is concerned, they're judge, jury, 
and executioner. They're the good guys, but that don't make them any less dangerous. Outside that, just don't be an asshole. Okay, we'll meet you on board your ship. Talk more when we get there. Once we land on Aquila, it's gonna be you and me. So if you want to do any freewheeling before then, Cora and I will just be riding passenger. What do we got here? You're too clean to be one of the settlers. Or a pirate. You see on patrol, maybe? You'll make my day if you said you were a shock trooper out for a stroll. Vanguard, huh? Yeah, I expect they didn't. I'm Hadrian. I'm a... I was a researcher with the UC. I came here on a rumor of a... Well, I expect you saw the results on your way in. What's left of the settlers? The work of Oxisio Machina. A terramorph. One of the nastiest aliens humanity's ever crossed paths with. And this one, well, it's something of an anomaly. Possibly a worrying one. I can't believe that a terramorph did all this damage. I mean, I've heard the stories, but to see the decimation firsthand. Other than a remorseless killing machine. Among apex predators, they're the pinnacle. Resilient, agile, smart, and their mental prowess only increases with age. Some can even dominate the minds of weaker species, keeping them as pets, livestock, or toys. <laughs> They're creatures without fear. <laughs> Makes two of us. But this creature, 
I need to understand what it's doing here. To do that requires a tissue sample from it, and to get a sample, I need its corpse. But we're not without resources. This plant, it's got an automated security system. Though getting things online, as I've discovered, is not a one-person job. The admin terminal in this building needs its connection reset. And to do that, someone has to get to the security outpost. Across the compound. Not a far walk, but a risky one. You think you might be willing to lend me a hand? Good. Once I see the connection reset, I'll get things underway on my end. Take care of yourself out there. And make sure you leave enough of that thing for us to get a sample. restored. I'll make this quick. Hmm. Plant's turrets took a beating, but I should be able to get you a couple of kill lanes. Just get the thing to chase you down the alleys between the buildings, and you'll lead it right into a crossfire. Oh, hello? I wish I'd found this earlier. You notice those sensors around the facility? Part of a livestock tracking system. Should let you keep tabs on how close the Terramorph is. connected to this network. There should be a terminal in the adjoining room. Tune it to 183.5. We didn't stock up on junk. Trackers reading green. What's that sound? Lockdown is active. Shit. Stop. Stop whatever you're doing and get in cover. It's on the move. Additional power input required. 
tracker's gone quiet. I suspect it's either hiding or... Wait. You did it, didn't you? <laughs> Heavens above, you just flatlined a terror morph! Oh, yeah. Taken care of. No big deal. <laughs> you didn't happen to grab me a tissue sample, did you? All right. I spotted a microscope downstairs. Let's see if we can't get to the bottom of this. you can do. Running basic diagnostics? Nothing. Maybe a flax can? No. Spectrograph. Damn. This equipment, it's not set up to do a proper analysis of our sample. But this terramorph being here, of all places, it doesn't make sense. Humanity's spread plenty of creatures in our travels across the stars. Pets, livestock, pests. But terramorphs? They're different. To our knowledge, no one's ever spread them intentionally. Yet somehow, they follow us. So when humans settle a world, 70 to 100 years later, terramorphs tend to just appear. No one knows how or why. Dangerous, but at least predictable. Talcetti, though, it's too young to have a native population. It's only been colonized 20 years. But then the other option, that someone captured one of the deadliest predators in the galaxy just to wipe out some settlers minding their own business? That seems awfully implausible. Which means we're either looking at a truly strange murder or a faster type of terramorph growth, the results of which could be catastrophic. Terramorph outbreaks have taken down far bigger colonies than this one. Well, they're not exactly buying tickets and flying coach. The theory is that they're spread by some kind of egg or seed that's able to evade our detection. But how the hell an undetectable egg turns into a terramorph without anyone noticing is a question no one's ever found an answer to. And it's why what's happened here could be real bad news for the rest of human civilization. They have. They even took down an entire city once. A place called Londinian had to be quarantined due to a massive outbreak during the colony war. It's the only known loss of that scale, but it's the reason why any change in our relationship with these creatures needs to be taken very seriously. You're right. We just need more information first. Time was, I had access to one of the best repositories of Terramorph research in the galaxy. Seems a natural place to start looking, if I can figure how to access it. 
But we also need to get this sample properly analyzed. Get confirmation on just how concerned we should be. Luckily, I think I know just the person to help with the sample. What would you say to delivering this to him for me? Yeah, I'd do it myself, but I need to call in some favors. See if I can't get access to that Terramorph data. <sighs> Plus, maybe just pop by a hospital for a little bit. Clear it with your commander first if you have to. You can even show them this. My gene tag. Tell them Hadrian Sanan is worried there could be more attacks on the horizon. They should recognize the name. I was, long time ago, family tradition. But I know some of the folks from my old unit moved into the Vanguard. A couple even owe me favors. If I'm lucky, your commander is one of them. Oh, you don't understand what a weight off my shoulders that is. I need Dr. Percival Walker to put together a sample analysis for this thing. Full workup. He'll know what that means. I'm not sure exactly where to find him, but last I heard, he was contracting with the Trade Authority on Mars. There's a place called the Sixth Circle in Sidonia. A bar run by some old friends. I'll meet you and Percival there. And... here. It's not a lot, but... you've definitely earned it. Should cover the cost of fuel to Mars, at least. Now please, go check in with your commander. We need to know what we're dealing with. Who's back? All set with that probationary mission? We can do your debrief and formally welcome you into the Vanguard whenever you're ready. A terror? What? How did you walk away with the terror morph tissue sample running comms repairs? What happened to the settlers? You killed a terror morph on your first mission. If I could be frank for a moment, holy shit. Above and Beyond doesn't really begin to describe it now, does it? Earned yourself some serious hazard pay on this one. But, uh, if none of the settlers made it, who's got you delivering the sample? A researcher. Let me see that. Hmm, Sanan. I know that name. Let me check the database. Huh. A lot of this data's been classified. Here we go. Service record. Wow. That's a lot of commendations. Seems like she served with distinction as... Co-head of a UC Xeno Weapons Division. Faced tribunal at the end of the Colony War. And was dismissed from duty. Guess that's why I'd heard the name before. If she's former Xeno Warfare, though... Well, we can at least be sure she knows her aliens. I'm sure she doesn't list it at the top of her resume. But considering her service record and her area of expertise, 
I'm not seeing a reason to think this request is anything other than genuine. Did your survivor, Hadrian, did she mention why she thinks this sample is so special? I... I see. This uh, has been one of the more surprising debriefs I've ever been a part of. I did actually have another mission lined up for you, supporting UC system defense against the Crimson Fleet. But now I guess you have two options on how to proceed. Head to the UC Vigilance and help out SysDef, or deliver that sample. I'll make sure you've got the proper clearances for either path. Consider these your first official orders. And here, so everyone knows you're working with the Vanguard. Welcome to the Navy, Captain. Vanguard's also got some custom ship modifications. You'll be cleared for access to them next time you're down at the spaceport. Talk to ship services. Now, if there wasn't anything else, I'd suggest you move out. safe as your equipment out there. Welcome to Outland. We deal in only the finest, most reliable gear for whatever adventures may await you. All of our products come highly recommended by individuals who have devoted their lives to distant travel. And while I've never needed them myself, I stand by everything we offer. I've never left the planet, so no, I do not. Goodness, no, I just couldn't. You're out there millions of miles away from anything, and if something goes wrong... I can't stomach the thought. I prefer solid ground under my feet at all times. And preferably a hot, fresh coffee within reach. Can't get those in space either. Yes, by all means, have a look. Whenever I'm lost, I think, what would you do in my shoes? Not literally, though. I've got small feet.
we're here. You ready? Because once we get started, I'm gonna be riding your tail until this is over. She stays with the ship, usually. Got a few more years to go before I let her swill whiskey in some backwater bar. There's uh, something you should know up front. I'm a co. As in Solomon Co, first man on Aquila. That tale I mentioned before, the one I think is connected to an artifact, it's something of a family legend. After planet fall, Solomon spent years mapping Aquila, and he found a tiny little patch of nothing on his sensors. The kind of nothing an artifact produces. He called it the empty nest. Said it was a place even the wildlife of Aquila wouldn't go. Yeah, and the Coers have been coasting on that for ten generations now. Solomon's always a larger-than-life figure if you read the histories, but if you just listen to a few recordings of the man, he was simple. Just wanted to keep moving forward. Solomon's maps are locked up tight in the local Gale Bank. We'll be heading there. Hold it. By order of Marshal Daniel Blake, I need to inform you we've got some trouble at Gal Bank. Folks might be in danger, so you may want to steer clear. Well, all I know is there was an attempted bank robbery and things went sideways. You'd have to ask the Marshal if you want the whole story. It's just behind me on the right. The place is on lockdown, so you should steer clear unless you can help out. I guess that'd be the Marshal's call. Frankly, it ain't going well. Looks to be a stalemate. Maybe a little outside help will do some good. Well, I doubt those robbers are gonna let us leisurely peruse the Galbank vault. We better see if we can help move the situation along. If you make a move toward the building, a hostage dies. You planning to tell me your demands at some point? You find someone we can trust, and maybe we will. Like who? Not you. Not one of your rangers, and not these city guards, neither. <sighs> what the hell am I supposed to do with that? You need to stand back now. It's a hostage situation. Now please, get back, or I'll have the guards drag you away. I don't mean to be rude, but I don't know you. Now please, stand back. Aquila City at its finest, I see. Never a dull moment. Well, I'll be damned. Sam Cole. Been a long time. I won't hold my breath about you being here to take the badge again. Uh, listen, Sam, just so you know, I don't blame you for how it went down. For the others, though, you might get a different reception. Thanks. I appreciate you saying so. But I figure some of that reception is owed. Still, I appreciate the sentiment, Marshal. It seems you got a situation. My friend here may be the answer you're looking for. All right, Sam. I'll trust your judgment on this one. Some folks from the Shaw Gang tried to rob the place, but they got spotted by a guard. They took everyone inside hostage, and now they're keeping a watch so we can't move against them. They're using the intercom to communicate. It's a big group that hides outside the city and runs smuggling jobs off-world. They take in all kinds, rookies and veterans alike. Judging by their lack of preparation, I'd say this particular group is green as hell. Probably their first attempt at heist. That should work in our favor. Right about now, they're probably wishing they've just stayed home. They won't talk to me. 
Say they don't trust the badge. <laughs> they want a neutral negotiator. In other words, they didn't have a plan for this, so they're stalling while they come up with one. Hmm. All right, I'm willing to allow that. But a few things first. Say what you have to, but whatever they ask for, there's no way in hell I'm giving it to them. Also, there are lives at stake, so don't get cavalier. Find out what they want, and then report back to me. Take it slow and steady. Look for every opportunity to de-escalate. You got this. Hey, you in the bank. I'm sending in a negotiator, so don't shoot. Hands where I can see him. And don't I'm sure things nothing. will turn out just fine. You're the negotiator, huh? You think you're just gonna walk up here and get us to surrender? You're dead wrong. Uh, it, it, it's Jed. Jed Bullock. Well, ain't you polite. So tell me, stranger, how do I know you're gonna deal straight with us? <laughs> I don't know you. So why should your word mean anything to me? I... Uh, I see what you mean. Nothing we can't handle. That's the best you got. Maybe the marshal should send someone else. Nothing you say is gonna change my mind, so let's just move on. We want to guarantee a safe passage to the spaceport and a ship. We'll drop the hostages off somewhere safe in the system. After that, we'll radio back where they are, and the marshal and his crew can come and get them. But if anybody follows us when we break orbit, we start shooting people. Got it? Do you think we want to stay locked up in here? Hell no! Oh hell, the Freestar Rangers have got ships. They can give us one of them. <sighs> this whole damn job's gone wrong. It was supposed to be just a quick hit. Clean and simple, you know? So let's just... Let's all try to keep our heads, yeah? Because my guys, they're going crazy in here. How much longer we can last? What do you mean? Part of me just wants to be rid of these people, but we need them right where they are. Nice try. The Shaw Gang don't scare that easy. Damn it! I didn't think of it that way. Hostages. Yeah, that would be a lot worse. None of us want to be murderers. Things just got out of control. But 
none of us wants a murder rap. Nobody's been hurt. So maybe the judge won't come down too hard on us. Yeah. I think this has gone on long enough. You go tell the marshal we'll come quietly. You'd make a decent ranger with the way you handled that. They've got the marshal by the balls. What's the word? First things first. How'd you get the Shaw gang to stand down? Ha! Well, you don't like for confidence. Well, I bet you could sell dirt to a Dusty. Here. You've more than earned this. You got us out of a tough spot, and you did it with courage that's not common. As a matter of fact, you might just be Freestar Ranger material. If you're interested, head on over to The Rock and ask for Emma Wilcox. She handles the new recruits. All right. Now the lines are on. Let's get back in Galbag, see if we can get those maps. Baby. Marco! Well done. Are you well right? done indeed. They didn't hurt you, did they? It's okay. That pink robbery was something else. I'm okay. I, I, I just need to be me. And you're breathing? Back to normal yet? Mostly. Still feels a little weird, though. Guess I'm not used to having a tube out. But it's not like I'm out. Just walked in and tried to rob the place in broad Need something? You got some business with me? Really? You must have impressed the marshal. I'm guessing he wants to recruit you, so I'll tell you a little bit about who we are. Well, the Freestar Rangers ensure the safety and security of the Freestar Collective and its people. We might hunt down a fugitive, break up a smuggling operation, investigate a starship theft, or put some would-be bank robbers behind bars. Whatever needs doing to keep the people safe, we do. It can be, yeah. We tend to get called in when there's a threat too big for local security to handle. So that means we hunt the most dangerous game. I imagine you've got some questions. I'll answer anything I can. Well, in theory, a Freestar Ranger can go anywhere in Freestar Collective space, uh, even private property. But of course, it doesn't always work out that way. We also have jurisdiction over any local security when we're tracking a fugitive. Okay then, a word about myself. I'm in charge of making sure anyone that wants to be a Freestar Ranger is up to the task. That being said, the Marshal wouldn't send you here if he didn't think you had potential. So, what's it gonna be? Are you ready to sign up with the Freestar Rangers? <laughs> if you knew half of what I did about the man, you'd show him a lot more respect. Besides, I'm next in line. And I'll be damned if I'm letting you cut ahead of me. Might be a good fit for you. The Rangers can do a lot of good. Before I hand you a badge, I need to know you can handle the job. You helped out with the hostage situation, but sometimes people just get lucky. Tell you what, use the mission terminal and take one of the listed jobs. Your choice. Come back alive, and we'll talk about you joining up. Then I suggest you get going. Well, hey there.
That's the rock. Ranger Central. Not a bad part, too.
You're back. How'd it go? See you. Oh, you're back. How'd it go? Good. You did what I asked, so let's go meet the marshal. Follow me. A year or two back, I shared a drink with Ron Hope. That man can drink. We got a lot of bars at the We're headquarters. All class joints. Floors of the rock, but we also Set have remote baggies. stations throughout Free Star Collective Space. Helps us to identify and respond to threats more quickly. Just making my way. There are less than a dozen rangers in all. We operate with limited resources. Thankfully, most people respect us and are willing to cooperate. In this job, these rangers are some places like this make you appreciate home. Every bit as important as your badge. And your sidearm. Marshal? Emma! I take it you're here because you're satisfied that our new recruit can handle the job. Seems capable enough, and we could use the help. All right, then. Step forward, recruit. Let me have a word with you. I've got just one question. Do you pledge to defend the people of the Free Star Collective, even if it means risking your own life? Good. Here, take these. You're now a Free Star Ranger deputy. I'm assigning you to Ranger Wilcox for some field training. Listen good to what she tells you. Welcome aboard, deputy. Congratulations. The Rangers ain't a bad outfit, and they're lucky to have you. Wish we could throw you a welcome party, but there's work to do. We got word from a farmer on Montero Luna. She says someone's trying to take her farm, and she's afraid she might be in danger. Well, it's a moon that orbits Montero. It's got a breathable atmosphere, warm climate, and good soil for growing. Well, most things do at the start. Doesn't mean they stay that way. That being said, best not to assume anything. Just try to keep an open mind. Grab any supplies you might need, and let's get going.
Welcome to the Free Star Collective. Please maintain your current course while we scan your ship. And that's it. Arms like this all over the Free Star Collective. Over here! The Free Star Rangers. You have no idea how happy I am to see you. I'm Ranger Emma Wilcox. My deputy and I are here to help. Now, tell us what happened. I was out planting in the fields when I saw some men approaching. They look like soldiers with uniforms and weapons and such. They wanted to buy the farm. Didn't even ask if it was for sale. Their offer was so low, I told them right where they could stick it. They said they'd give me time to think about it, but if I didn't change my mind, I was gonna regret it. Then they left. Nothing I can think of, no. Truth is, we're in some hard times here. The last harvest was the worst we've had in a long time. Besides, it ain't like there's a lack of available land around here. That's right. The uniforms look like the ones worn by Free Star soldiers back during the war. They had a certain steel in their eyes. Like men who are used to violence. I was in fear for my life. Then I know where you can start. They heading into those canyons back behind the house. That place is dangerous. Steep slopes, narrow trails, rock slides, and all manner of hostile creatures, too. If you're going after those men, be careful. Oh, there's one other thing. They said they were the first. The first of what, I'm not sure. But there must be more of them coming. Thank you, ma'am. That should be enough for us to find these men. All right, deputy. Keep that weapon handy and your eyes sharp. They're probably not making an effort to hide their tracks. Now. Easy there. No bad guys around. Wait, no one's around. Nice change of pace from Aquila City. Boot tracks. Several pairs back alone. Not too old either. Let's head down into the canyon and see if we can find them.
like we're heading in the right direction. Or profit. Look out! Nice to get out under the sky. Look out! I'll talk to you later. Okay. 
times ahead. Stay fresh. I bet my badge that's wood smoke from a campfire. Post. Be ready. Stand off the bank on you the marshal tied up for a while. We're gonna have some fun. Well now, look who's here. Ms. Wagner called in the cavalry. <laughs> Except it ain't much of a cavalry. I suggest you turn around and walk away while you still can. A firefight here could get messy. Some good old-fashioned talking might be the ticket. You think you're in a position to make demands. Well, I've got news for you. All you're getting from me is a shallow grave. So, got any last words I should try to remember? Oh, I think it does. We've been fooled, though. Don't let them leave me Are you okay? Really? Guess you've led a pretty exciting life. Maybe the less I know about that, the better. Let's search the area. Maybe we can find something that explains what these guys were up to. Hopefully, we can find something that explains who these guys were and why they were after the Wagoner farm. Likewise. Thank you very much. Find anything interesting? Let's see what we have here. Hmm, interesting. So, their ship was stolen from the Hope Tech factory. 
Whoever pulled that off must have been one hell of a shipjacker. Well, I guess someone really wants that farm bad. Speaking of which, let's get back there and let Miss Wagoner know that she's safe. For now. What's the news? What happened? Did you find those men? On the one hand, I'm sorry it had to go that way. On the other, they had it coming. So who were they? And why do they want my farm? Hope Tech? The cargo ship company? Sorry, I don't know anything about that. They say the rangers always get their man, so to speak. I'm sure you'll figure it out. I can't thank you enough. I'd hate to be remembered as the wagoner who couldn't hold on to the farm that's been in the family for so long. Of course. All the same, I'm grateful. If you have any more trouble, give us a call. We're in system, so it won't take long to get someone out here. All right, Deputy. Let's get back to the Rock. We need to report this to the Marshal. Not everyone gets to say they work at the Rock. Might be hard work, but it sure beats living under the poop. What's the story on Montero Luna? That call we got from Wagoner Farm turned out to be a little more interesting than I was expecting. Some men were trying to run the Wagoners off the land. They tried to buy it first, but when that didn't work, they turned to threats. We confronted them, and unfortunately, it came to violence. None of them survived. You helped someone in need and came back alive. That's a job well done. For the time being, yes, but she could still be in danger. That's why we need to fill in some blanks. What did you make of these men who were trying to take the farm? If that's true, then someone must have hired them. Now, did you find anything that might give us a lead on why these men wanted the farm? Hope Tech ships ain't exactly cheap. That thief could probably tell us a lot about these men you ran into. There's something else. They were dressed in Freestar Militia uniforms. The unit badge was yellow on black with the number one. Didn't you fight in the Colony War, Marshal? That sound familiar at all? The 1st Cavalry. I was in that unit for a while. But it was disbanded decades ago. After the Battle of Nera. 
what was left of it anyway. The 1st Cavalry lost almost all their mechs and soldiers in a big push to take the United Colony's base. They were just about there when a ceasefire order came down. Both sides had just lost too much by then. It was a bloodbath. The commanding officer of the 1st disobeyed the order. He didn't want the lives of his soldiers to be sacrificed. For nothing. They court-martialed him, and the rest of the surviving officers, and locked them all up. The war between the United Colonies and the Free Star Collective? Worst conflict the settled systems has ever seen. Each side unleashed terrible weapons on the other, and countless people died. Uh, the armistice uh, was signed 20 years ago. But a lot of folks still bear their scars. Hell, it's our only lead. The Hope Tech factory is in Hope Town on Polvo. Nia Kalu's our ranger stationed out there. She can introduce you to Ron Hope, the president of Hope Tech. He might be able to help you find the thief. Just make sure you stay on his good side. He's on the Council of Governors, and they're the ones we answer to. Proud, stubborn, and smart. A self-made man. He built Hope Tech through blood, sweat, and sheer willpower. The ruling body that oversees the Free Star Collective and the Rangers. The council members are the political and corporate elite of the Free Star Collective. So we have to tread lightly when we're dealing with them. Good. The last thing I need is the council breathing down my neck. This is your assignment now, Deputy. Work with the other Rangers. Find out what you can about those men on Montero Luna. Meantime, I'll look into a possible connection with the 1st Cavalry. Good hunting. Ashtar sometimes spotted by the farms. That's why we only use robots. has a few different deposit boxes secured in here, so let's look around. Here's a copy of the key. Okay, now remember, Solomon was from an earlier generation, so it's not going to be on a slate. Big bundles of paper is what we're after. Oh, no. Jacob. Of course, that old mule saw this coming. He's just a bitter old man, interfering in what's none of his business. That we do. I was hoping to avoid the estate when we landed. Cora's gonna be so mad. Because I told her we wouldn't have time to check in with her Look, I was trying not to do this, okay? We really gotta do this. You're not wrong. I've just... been trying not to think about it. All right, fine. He's my dad, okay? We're not exactly on friendly terms. He probably figured I'd come for the maps at some point. Got ahead of me. Family business just wasn't something I wanted to get into, you know? <laughs> God, that's the worst part. They're the thickest thieves. Last thing I need is Jacob in her life. Let's leave it at that. Yeah, well, sorry I'm such a pain about it. No forgiveness between me and my old man. It's, uh, co-tradition. All right, shall we?
were saying, my family was on the first ship. My brother-in-law just got back from two weeks in Paradiso. The place looked amazing, but if I have to look at one more vacation photo... finally decides to darken our doorstep again. You know why I'm here. Oh? And what's that? You come to your senses? Realize where you ought to be for once? I ain't asking again. You ain't asked once. Let's hear it. I want you to say the words about what's more important to you than family. Okay, this was a mistake. The only mistake I'm seeing here is you. Bringing your constellation lackey here instead of my granddaughter. Come to help Sam loot his ancestry? You're not getting those maps. Full stop. There's only one place a co ought to be. And it ain't out there in the star field doing Lord knows what. Putting our future at risk. I got just as much right to those maps as anyone else in this family. That's exactly right, Sam. We all share Solomon's legacy. Only some of us are around to live up to it, and some of us aren't. All right, that's enough. Come on, let's you and I talk. In private. Hmm. Welcome home, Sam. Make your visit short, okay? It's what you do. I hope Cora doesn't get too much underfoot. Give me a sec. All right, let's talk options. No, no, no. I mean, this is no place for her, okay? The less time she spends with Jacob, the better. I just... I made a decision a long time ago about how my little girl gets raised. And it doesn't include Jacob Coe, okay? Leave it at that. Yeah, like I said before, they're thick as thieves. Can you imagine what that bitter old mule would do to her head if she hung around more? Damn it. Fine, fine, fine. But we'll go get her. I just... If there's any other options, I'd appreciate doing those first. Sam's Constellation Lackey here to bother me again? You mean besides the fact that you're some independent group that doesn't know where your loyalties lie? Or are you referring to the fact that my granddaughter lives in your clubhouse rather than in her family home? Well, that's not your decision, is it? It's co-property by birthright. It stays here. You really believe that, don't you? You think I'm not trying to help him? <laughs> Can't believe I'm saying this. But if I'll get you out of my hair, then fine. You can have the maps. They're in the other room, here. Key. Let's see if we can find the empty nest. All right, let me think. The way I heard it, the readings he was getting were normal at first, then they bottomed out. And no creature, alien or otherwise, would dare step inside. There. Found it. Oh, boy. <sighs> That's a problem.
First, it's in the middle of the frontier, which we already expected. No problems there, but the usual tussling with alien wildlife. But the Empty Nest is a cave right in the middle of Shawgang territory. Same outlaws who held up Galbank. Criminal groups in Aquila always find a way. But they usually have to keep on the move to avoid the Ashta. Well, it could just be a coincidence that the cave we want happens to be where the Shaw Gang runs around. But something doesn't feel right. Well, just remember, it's about the artifact, not them. Hurting bad guys puts a smile on your face, that's a bonus. Let's get to that cave. First step on a new world full of life and the unknown. <laughs> All right, this is Shawgang territory. Coming up. 
Let's get going. place to hold up. I think that's far enough. Hate to put a hole in the head of Akila's own prodigal son. At least not before we've had a word. You must be Shaw. What I am is disappointed. Samco in the flesh and he's peddling around the frontier with the has-beens of Constellation. Now you got past my crew, who I pay quite handsomely, I might add. Grabbed something from that weird cave. Probably whatever's been keeping the Ashto away. So... I'm down one hideout. Now, let's talk about what all that's worth to me. Your lives, your credits. One or the other, really. Oh, really? Let's hear it. Huh. The Shaw Gang's name in print outside a wanted poster does sound nice. <laughs> so what? By morning tomorrow, we're gone anyway. <laughs> you don't know what you're talking about. Sick of trading words with you. Kill them! Last push forward! Get close! Damn it! Just shoot everything!
piece. I'll call that a win. Let's get back to the lodge. up any kind of frequency or signal coming from it. That doesn't mean much. This thing could be emitting something we can't even detect. As far as we know, we could be building a gigantic bomb that will blow up as soon as we finish it. Or maybe it's some kind of interstellar children's toy. Why would either of those things give the Discoverer visions and music? It's a message. I'm sure of it. We just have to hope that finding more of the pieces will give us some clue. I hear that. Moving forward sometimes means fumbling around in the dark. I think Cora and I can use some downtime, but you let me know if you ever want to team up again. Oh, and since it tends to come up, me and my Rugrat co-pilot work as a team. That's non-negotiable. If I'm coming with, that means Cora's on your ship. Hmm. <laughs> Why not? What do you think, Kara? It's really nice to have more company. New stories, new data. What? Data? <laughs> All right. We're in. Let's see what the galaxy throws at us next. All the soldiers around here, bad place to start trouble. I'd hate to live my whole life in a bubble. This place is older than Aquila. This old stories, old planet. Invoices can be collected from the. Oh. Not here for a delivery, are you? Do you know? Well. I do wish I could help you, Captain, but Dr. Walker has been missing for some time. A shame, too. We had such high hopes for Percival. I brought him on myself to do medical and biological consulting around the city. Not the sort of work the Trade Authority traditionally does. But we thought it had the potential to become a whole new type of revenue stream for our branch. I invested no small amount of personal capital into the endeavor. But then he decided to run off after a... discipline issue. I presume the miners have him hidden somewhere. <laughs> Plenty of cracks on this old rock. But at this point it's probably for the best. Dr. Walker decided to start brewing and selling his own pharmaceuticals to our customers, below cost. Something his contract expressly forbade. As such, we requested our cut of the profits and began garnishing his salary. Perhaps a little too severely, but well within legal limits. It was around then that he ran off, abandoning his duty and his unpaid accounts. 
That's correct. We're no longer interested in Dr. Walker's services. He did leave his post, however, with a sizable debt to his name. If you were to find him and get him to pay, the Trade Authority would be most grateful for it. Aw, oh, someone owes you bloodthirsty leeches money? Oh, I'm sorry, that's rude of me. I should apologize for insulting the leeches. Yeah, get your own damn money. Looks like you could use the exercise. Hmm. Pity. Perhaps a little advance on my part might pique your interest. Visit the Sixth Circle, a bar on the lowest level of the city. If someone in Sidonia knows where Percival is, you'll find them there. This is a courtesy reminder that despite the low gravity on Mars, a fall into Sidonia's lower level is still likely to result in injury or death. Please exercise caution. Broken Spears upstairs. Go drown yourself there. This bar is for devil's vets and their kin. Where the hell are you from? The Red Devils? Best fighters since the Spartans. This is our bar. So folks like you can go drink at the spear. The hell you just say to me? I gotta. Andy. Sit down. You. Don't appreciate some stray wandering into my bar harassing my patrons. Even the ones I should have cut off two drinks ago. Now spit out what you want, or march. Doc Walker? Well, you're barking up the wrong... Hey, enough. And you. Why don't you come over here, Captain? Stray topsider wanders into my bar, asking after a man like Percival Walker. Raises questions. What do you want with him? Is that so? Well, Captain, then you should have no problem answering a few simple questions about the Vanguard, right? Like knowing, for example, what Supra et Ultra means. You remember? Your vanguard motto? Hmm, I see. And tell me, what grade was it you got on your entrance exam? A? C? D plus? That... is right. All right, Captain. Maybe you are who you say you are. But look, even if I decided I was going to help you get in contact with Dr. Walker, Percival made himself scarce for a reason. His debt to the Trade Authority. But if someone resolved that debt, well, Percival wouldn't have to hide anymore. Can bet that person would make a friend out of Percival, and the rest of us devils. And I'm always inclined to help a friend. Red Devils were the meanest marine unit the UC Navy ever had. Couldn't get in if you hadn't done at least one stint as a Martian Dusty. Made us tough. Reliable. It's why they chose us as the handlers for the UC Xeno weapons. No other unit could handle that pressure. Percival, though, he wasn't a grunt like all of us. Science officer. Made sure the monsters behaved themselves around the Devils didn't with everyone else, but it was those monsters that did us in. When the colony war ended and the armistice came down, everything associated with Xeno weapons got shelved, Red Devils included. Now, yeah, now they're just a memory. Me? Nah. Infantry officer. But my grunts deployed alongside the things. Never seen anything like it, before or since. Monsters from the darkest corners of the Black rampaging across the battlefield. 
and understand why they banned him. Brutal. Armistice hurt us more than most, but... Wow. Wasn't all bad that came out of that agreement. Well, the most straightforward way to take care of this debt would be to just saunter up to the authority and pay him direct, if you've got credits to throw away. Of course, rumor is the Trade Authority keeps all their records and collections files on a central server inside their storeroom. If someone was to break in there and adjust Percival's debt to something a little more reasonable, say, a few hundred credits, I'd be happy to cover the costs. I mean, clearly that's a crime. And doing it would just be terrible. And, uh, one soldier to another. Sidonia's full of old utility tunnels and crawl spaces. Wouldn't be surprised if there was one that let out right into the Authority storeroom. Say, with an entrance behind the bar at the Broken Spear. Ooh, and you might need these. And I look forward to hearing the good news. Psst, hey, you. You be Vanguard. Come here. Heard you talking with Lou, so you're going to help Dr. Walker? Oh, <laughs> no, I, I mean, I've got my suspicions, but look, you're planning to help Percival, right? Oh, good, good. Uh, Percival's a good guy. Listen, I know how you can do it without having to resort to any B and E. Aqueous hematite. Mars is full of it. People think it's just garbage. But Percival and I, we've been working on some projects in the deep mines. At least when he wasn't slaving away at his trade authority contract. But we stumbled on a way to make it useful and profitable. You give our research over to Octai at the trade authority, it should more than cover Percival's debt. That guy's always looking for an angle. No, 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 no. Well, yes, but, but the medical kind. I'd help him make whatever the city was running low on that month, and we'd sell it to the miners for cheap. But the trade authority got wind and wanted their cut. And then some. Oh, I'm Cambridge. I was Percival's assistant. Well, apprentice, really. I couldn't work in the mines anymore, so he gave me a job helping with some of his side projects. Know his experiments inside and out, and I know this one was gonna be big. It's mostly iron and about three centuries of human water runoff, though only Percival would be able to tell you all the trace elements and whatnot. But it builds up around human settlements, and something about the Martian soil changes it, it makes it into something new, and we think we found a use for it. Well, yeah. We were never able to finish the research. Spacers moved in and ran us out. Started setting up shop. Oh, so it's a tiny little favor. Just mind the mindful of armed rabble. But if you can clear them out, I can walk you through how to finish the research. Then you can give it over to the Trade Authority. They'll get folks working in the deep mines again. Jobs come back, I become a modern-day folk hero. <laughs> then I don't have to sleep on an inflated spacesuit anymore. Great, great. So access to the deep mines can be found outside the city. It's not far. Shouldn't even need to hop back in your ship. We'd set up right near the main drill. Taking out the spacer leader should get the message across to the rest of them to buzz off. Once you've managed that, phone up here on the comms panel, and I can walk you through finishing the research.
Spacers, spacers everywhere. Wish we could get rid of them all one day.
all set? Good. Uh, you can take the elevator in that room back to the surface. There should be a key stashed in the thresher room if the spacers didn't make off with it. I'll be waiting at the circle. Slate, let me see. Reduce joint wear? Oh, increase lifting capacity? A dose of this stuff could make a miner way more efficient. This formula's gotta be worth at least as much as whatever Percival owes. Okay, so here's what you do. Tell Octai and the Trade Authority you found a business proposal that will make miners more efficient, higher yield, synergy, you know, all that business crap. And that you'll trade it to him for clearing Percival's debt. You good at doing pitches and stuff like that? Oh, this is gonna be great. Oh, and here, a copy of the formula for yourself, in case you ever wanna try maximizing your own industrial output. Oh, use that if you can. Good luck. Was there something else? Hmm. I'm never one to turn away an opportunity. But I'd be curious what you think you've uncovered in the Martian market that others have missed. Aqueous hematite. Iron and wastewater. Well. I'm not surprised no one has proposed something like this before. And exactly what does this new drug of yours do? Hmm. An interesting proposal, if your data pans out. But where's this hematite coming from? The active mines would be too expensive to retool. The deep mines could be an option, but they're full of spacers. Or so I've heard. Well now, that is intriguing. A completely untapped resource pool, and the sort of utility every mining firm in Sidonia would be clamoring to get their hands on. We could contract out all the actual lab work, bring on one of the hungrier mining concerns for materials, the licensing fees alone. And think what it would do for our image with the general populace. This mine reopened thanks to the Martian Trade Authority. Very interesting indeed. And what do you want for the rights to this drug? Dr. Walker's dead? That's it? Consider it wiped. Well, it seems we have a deal then. And here. A finder's fee from the authority. A perfectly reasonable amount for a discovery with this sort of potential. Wouldn't want you feeling short-changed down the road. We'll just be taking that slate before you have any second thoughts. It was a pleasure doing business with you, Captain. A reminder that particle... Uh. 
has it. I could uh, really bend your ear when you got that. Yeah, you know, the way you handle things, not bad. Not bad. So how much of a thrill has it been traveling with the one and only last descendant of the great Solomon Co? Is it everything you imagined? Ain't you ever heard of sarcasm, friend? Okay, so how's it traveling with one of the great cars? Not better? <laughs> yeah, but no autographs, okay? I gotta say, it's a relief being with you. So many people hear Co and they expect me to pull some miracle out of a hat. Time has a way of just building on itself. Solomon was a good man. Great one, even. But if he ever heard all the bullshit being talked about him these days, he'd flat out deck him. There's books about him. Lots of them. All right, a couple of high notes. He was one of the first grav jump explorers, back when they had no idea of the dangers. First solo jump out of Soul System, all him. He explored all the planets in Cheyenne and settled the Kila. Plus, he formed the whole Freestar Collective with Voli. So, as you can see, the names got some serious heft. I am. And I'm not. Yeah, there, uh, there was a time, well before Koro, where it really weighed on me. I felt like every little thing I did or didn't do was a reflection on our great legacy. It's enough to drive you crazy. Now I just hope I can help Cora to... I don't know. Your kind words are appreciated. For my father, Cora, and me, everything starts and ends with Solomon Co. He looked out at the stars, and he dreamed a way to get there. Imagine being the first person to jump into a new system, set foot on a new world. Well, I get it. That's powerful stuff. And now... <laughs> I'm just getting sappy. You're a bad influence, you know that? That's what I like about you. Well, I hope the comic book they make about our adventures is better than that rag on Solomon. The stuff they publish is just downright embarrassing. Yeah? Did you know? Fine work. My end of the bargain then, I suppose. He's holed up in the old Red Devils HQ. The place was sealed up tight after the UC shuttered our unit, but we snuck him in the back entrance through the deep mines. I was also going to warn you about spaces down there, but it sounds like you might have already tossed those drakes. Yeah, the passkey. And I'll let him know there's someone he owes one hell of a thank you on their way down.
me out of the red with the trade authority. Can't say I don't appreciate it, but I doubt you came all this way just to do me a favor. Now you want to explain to me why you're going around harassing nefarious old men by wiping away their hard-earned debts? Oh, I'm sorry my forced into exile lifestyle inconvenienced you. But if you came all this way just to deliver a sample, what exactly is it you brought me? A fast-growing Terramorph. That is concerning. Who exactly told you to bring this to me? Hadrian. She's... She gave you this. If she made you come all the way for this... Let's get inside. I need to see these cells. Gonna ask you to not touch anything. Got some projects in the works down here. I wasn't expecting guests. Oh, and Lou mentioned how you took care of the dead. Can't say I'm thrilled the Trade Authority got their mitts on the research, but I guess that's the price you pay not to live in a cave the rest of your days. All queued up. Let's gaze into this abyss, shall we? All right. Just get those cellular markers tagged. Wait. Where are the markers? This... this can't be right. This sample... it's... Londinian. I'll... I'll need to get this all in the slate. Adrian really gave you this sample. You're not lying to me? Because if you told me this was a hoax, and it'd be the best damn fake I've ever seen, I'd be mad and very, very relieved. She was disconcertingly correct. Trying little habit of Adrian's. Which is why, if you wanted to have your film crew jump out and yell surprise, I wouldn't be saddened in the least. Can't just humor an old man, huh? This sample. It's got all the indicators of the worst Terramorph attack in human history. I presume you've heard of Londinian. It was. An entire city wiped off the map. The swarms were so bad, they had to blow the spaceport and seal the place off from the galaxy at large. Not a lot of samples made it off the world from the time of the attack. But the ones that did, well, they looked just like this one. I didn't detect any of the telltale signatures this specimen ever sat on a ship while it was alive, either. I don't think it was transported to Talcetti. This specimen... It grew there. Faster than any Terramorph should. Which means... If we're about to start a new era in human Terramorph relations, where big, sudden Londinian-style attacks can happen outside Londinian... That's not gonna end well for humanity. That is the definition of an existential threat, dear lord. So, you lugged this bad omen all the way here. You want to tell me what your plans are for it now? Because until now, the Terramors that wiped out Londinian had the good sense to stay put. What happened there? It was a tragedy. But at least it was contained. So to find evidence for a similar attack on a different world... Well, we don't have enough information to know precisely what this means. But I doubt it's good. So I'd love to know what it is you're planning from here. The Circle, huh? <sighs> Could use a drink about now. Here, faster we take the lift to the surface. Not supposed to use it, but... Given the circumstances, I'm inclined to just ask forgiveness. Let's get going.
You know, hassling yourself anymore, Major. Our friend here showed me your sample. Suffice it to say. Not here. Let's talk somewhere more private. Lou said we could use the back. I see your parents didn't skimp on your P's and Q's. I spotted it on our last planetary foray. All part of the service. I wouldn't dream of it. I'll keep my eyes peeled. Who knows? Check in with me now and again and I might find more. Do you have a Lou gave me the abridged version of what went down. Yeah, I can't thank you enough for taking care of all that. Makes two of us. I hope it ultimately didn't end up being too much trouble. That's definitely not what I thought I was signing you up for. But thank you. So, were you two able to get that work up together? Got it right here. That sample? It's an exact match for the ones from Londinian. Londinian? That's exactly what I was afraid of. Not thrilled to be the bearer of that kind of news. That's for damn sure. So tell me you've got some kind of plan for that workup. Well, right now, we've got more questions than answers. So I've been trying to figure out what it's gonna take to access our old Terramorph data. Good place to start. What'd you find? It's in the archives. The Armistice Archives? Doesn't that mean we'd be dealing with the Cabinet? And the Freestar Collective? And House Varun somehow? Guess we can kiss that approach goodbye. I didn't think the Cabinet would be willing to hear us out either. But I called in some favors. They've agreed to hear us out on two conditions. One, they want to see this analysis you two have procured. And two, they want to discuss what happened on Tau Ceti. With both of us. Well, when the colony war came to a close 19 years ago, with the signing of the Armistice, three factions were involved in the negotiations. The UC, Freestar, and House Varun. They made a lot of decisions about what sort of tactics should and shouldn't be permitted in future conflicts. All information related to the things they decided should be banned was locked away in the archives. Now, it's possible to get things out of there, but only with the agreement of members from all three factions. And as to what our research is doing in there, well, I'll get to that. Of course, you deserve the full story. Percival and I, we're not just researchers. We were military scientists ran a division of the UC together that deployed aliens on the battlefield as weapons. Place I was hiding out. That was our unit's home base. After some early fits and starts at other facilities, the place eventually became the heart of UC Xeno warfare. A practice that's been banned ever since the armistice went into effect almost 20 years ago. And the UC military cut us loose for what we'd done.
No. We were both dismissed after the war for what we did. These days, we're just concerned citizens with a very particular area of expertise. Our damage has been done for a long time. Well, it was during that assignment that the UC asked us to explore deploying terramorphs on the battlefield. The project never got off the ground, but the data our team gathered is now sitting in the archives, along with all the other information banned after the colony war. Under the watchful eye of monitors from all the galactic factions still participating in regular politics. But if we can convince the cabinet to help us access that data, It'll give us the tools we need to decipher what exactly this sample might mean. And hopefully, how to prevent more attacks like the one that spawned it. All right. I'm gonna go get this work up into the Cabinet's hands. I'll meet you out front of Mast in New Atlantis. Good luck. You two are gonna need it. Any day you make it through, there's a victory in my book. Seek a community center representative to plan your event or regular gathering today. Workups in the cabinet's hands. They said they'll call for us once they've gotten to properly review it. But listen, I know I should have been more forthcoming about who I was earlier. So, in the interest of full disclosure, there's one more thing you ought to know before we head up there. My relationship with the UC. It's more complicated than it might seem at first glance. The UC's actually the only reason I'm here in the first place. I am a clone of a man named Francois Sanon, one-time fleet admiral of the UC during the Colony War, former head of the UC Navy. They called him Ve Victus, Woe to the Defeated, in Old Earth Latin, a title he earned. The program I was a part of, it was... The UC's attempt to create a new generation of military minds from one of their most respected tacticians. Secure the leadership of the UC military for generations to come. A non-trivial amount of gene editing. Clone, honestly, isn't even really the right term for our relationship thanks to the amount of donor material that was required to bring me into this world. He and I are different on more than a few levels, but there's no denying the fact we're inextricably linked. I'm the last. A few of my siblings, they passed when we were young, training accidents and the like, but most of the rest were deployed to the front lines during the colony war, and they never came back. Not a day goes by where I don't think about what the world would look like with them still in it. He would have happily told you he was one of the greats. Ultimately, though, it didn't matter. The man I was cloned from, my father, was executed for acts he committed during the war. The man caused a lot of death on both sides. Freestar Collective, and you see, military and civilians. And the things he did, well, they're a part of the reason the UC and Freestar Collective aren't really on great terms to this day. So my involvement, it could be another obstacle they throw at us up there. I just wanted you to be forewarned.
He had his men open fire on civilian ships during the Battle of Cheyenne. A battle that he ultimately ended up losing anyway, devastating the UC fleet and bringing the colony war to an ugly end for the UC. But he's also the one who ordered the bombing of the Londinian spaceport during their outbreak, condemning countless lives. Both sides agreed the settled systems would be better without him. Well, my areas of expertise are pretty specific, but messed up families are up there. You know, while we've got a second, was there anything else we needed to discuss? I know you got dropped into the middle of this pretty fast. Or if you've got any last minute business to attend to, now might be a good time. No telling how long the cabinet's gonna keep us waiting out here. That's actually a souvenir from my time on Mars. The Red Devils unit I was a part of, they were founded by recruits who'd worked some of Mars' deepest mines. Folks used to adversity. The dust at those depths, it seeps into everything. The human eye included. Where the name Red Devils came from in the first place. It became an unwritten rite of passage that anyone wanting to enlist with the Devils had to do a stint in the mines before they could join up. The devils were always talked about in such revered tones during my training, so as soon as I was old enough, I signed up, and the eyes were my parting gift. Uh, it's hard to know exactly what might sway them. I'd just be honest about what you saw. A colony wiped out, and a lot of lives lost. Something we don't want anyone else to have to experience. I mean, we never spent a lot of time together. He was too busy being Fleet Admiral to deal with kids. I was raised by a pair of Guardians instead. Until his defeat during the Colony War, though, he was known as an extremely effective commander. Savvy. Perceptive. That mind opened a lot of doors for him. And for me, too. But Ve Victus, for all his ability, was heartless. Ruthless to a fault. In the end, that's what cost him his life. Then I guess it's just a matter of... The cabinet meeting is about to begin. All parties, please proceed to the cabinet chambers. Sounds like our cue. Here we go. Welcome. You must be the captain Hadrian mentioned in her report. You have our thanks for the risks you faced in securing this information. Oh, I'm sure she did. Yes, well, precisely how urgent is what I hope we'll determine here today. So now, we have two petitioners here making a surprising request. Access to the UC Xeno Warfare team's Terramorph data, currently housed in the Armistice Archives. A request which will require not just this body's agreement, but that of all three Armistice signatories. UC, Freestar Collective, and House Varun. Now, Captain, we've all read Hadrian's report on the subject, but we have yet to hear from you. Perhaps you could summarize for the Cabinet what it is you see as the goal of this endeavor. All knowledge related to the technologies banned by the UC and the Freestar Collective after the Colony War resides in the archives, including the aforementioned Terramorph data you and Hadrian are after. I want to know what you, someone with less direct involvement in the Armistice, sees as the purpose behind granting said access.
That's quite the leap, Captain. Madam President, I object to the very premise of this meeting. While no one would argue that what happened on Tau Ceti was anything less than a tragedy, terror morph attacks are not some sudden new threat on the horizon. They've been happening for generations. To demand, we hand over banned archival knowledge and possibly upset the balance of galactic diplomacy because of a single attack seems at best panic. And at worst, a power grab by the daughter of a bloodthirsty warmonger and her associates. I would remind the chief diplomat who he's speaking to. If it's my father you're looking to address, you're welcome to consult a medium. I would also ask, how many deaths the cabinet requires to act? Fifty? Fifty thousand? Because if tragedies like Tau Ceti are just prelude to more attacks, I have no doubt you'll get the body count you require. Let's keep this civil, shall we? And while there should be no doubt, the preservation of life stands paramount among this body's duties. Chief Yassine has a point. Will a single attack, however troubling, be sufficient to convince the other factions to grant us access to what they no doubt consider weapon data? I don't think it's enough. Perhaps you can help, Captain. As the one who actually collected the sample in question, did this terramorph seem at all alarming to you? That is worth considering. This attack took place on an almost completely uninhabited world. The casualties were minimal as a result. But if there's another attack, will we be so lucky? Hmm. Yes, a fine point, Admiral. So then, Captain, given the discussion now and the information you've been privy to thus far, if you were in our position, would you grant the request made to open the archives? If the stakes weren't so high, we wouldn't be asking. But, well, we're asking. I'm inclined to agree. As am I. Uh... I suppose that does get to the heart of the point, doesn't it? Very well. I consent. The galaxy was lucky you were here today, Captain. You and I are in agreement, Chief Diplomat. So, if there are no other objections, I believe we can agree to give our full backing to make the request to... <gasps> what was that? Incident. Chief Sarkin, what's happening? There's been an attack at the spaceport. Terramorphs. Terramorphs? More attacks. Just as predicted. Good God. Uh, Holy, we need to move. There. There must be another explanation. The creatures evaded our scanner somehow. There will be plenty of time for conjecture. Later. Chief Sarkin, order the evacuation of the spaceport and have your men contain the things, but do it discreetly. The last thing we need is a citywide panic. Yes, ma'am. Admiral Logan, the local barracks can provide support? I'll make the order myself. Nearest anti Xeno squad, though, is off world. Going to take a while to bring them in. Well, then, we'll have to make do with the tools we've got. You two. We can't risk those things getting out of the spaceport. I want you both on the next train there. We'll let them know you're coming, and that you've dealt with these things before. Now go show them how it's done. We're on it, ma'am. Captain, I'm right behind you. Let's get down there.
you for what you did. We didn't... We didn't want to hurt them. The way those people were acting. I've seen this before. They were under the Terramorph's influence, weren't they? I... I don't know. They were down at the port, and they just started... screaming. We'd tried to restrain them, get them on the train to get them out of harm's way, but... But some of the other officers down there... We couldn't restrain them fast enough. They just... started firing on us. People we knew. They went berserk. Fermonic projection. Some Terramorphs, they can induce this fog. It affects everyone differently, but some people just lose control, turn against everyone around them, even if they don't want to. They're like a puppet. You kill the morph, you break the hold. But this means we're going to need to be real careful with our fire and keep that EM weapon at the ready. I honestly was just wondering the same thing. But no, you don't need to worry about me. I've had a Terramorph try it on me before. I'm not susceptible. So we'll just have to make sure to watch out for each other down there. Let's do it. Nat's unlocked. Please, do what you can to help them. What was that? God, no time to waste, Captain. Stash the EM and pull some firepower. Let's move! All citizens are required to proceed to the nearest shelter. Terrible! You might back up. Don't just stand there. Good! They said you've done this before. Huh? Well, got one fire team to spare and whatever supplies you need, but I, I can't risk them taking over any more of my men. Put those things down and do it fast. We will hold them as best we can. Heard you might be looking for some backup. You say the word, we're out there on your six. You two have any experience with Terramorphs before? Only the brief they just gave on the way here. But we know how to handle pressure. Surviving a full-on mental assault isn't the same as keeping your cool in a firefight. Might make you more liability than asset. We're not UC security. You don't need to worry about us. Roger that. We're on you. False alarms. Gotta stay sharp.
I wonder what Jacob would think of a co helping to save New Atlantis. Damn if I'm not proud of it, though. They weren't kidding about you two. The universe put the right people in the right place. Hmm. Certainly doesn't feel like it. I don't want to think what would have happened if you two hadn't been here. Just glad we could rise to the occasion. Captain, we should report back to the President. Let her know the Terramorphs have been dealt with. Take care of yourself, Sergeant. a relief to hear. Thank you, gentlemen. Let your people all know how much we owe them today. Yes, ma'am. Ah, there you are. I believe we have some things we should discuss. Losing anyone in the lobby Captain? Hadrian? It would appear that the Cabinet owes you our thanks for what you did for the city today. As well as an apology. Your concerns about the Terramorphs? Well, consider them validated. Thank you, ma'am. Of course. I only wish we could have acted sooner. Now, today's events have only clarified our path forward in the eyes of the Cabinet. You will have our full support in collecting the Terramorph data from the Archives, as well as a subsequent investigation into the nature of these attacks. But to accomplish those goals, we're going to need the right people in the right places. As such, the Cabinet has authorized me to reinstate you, Hadrian, effective immediately, to your former rank of Major. As soon as we've got the data in hand, we want you investigating these attacks and how to stop them. Will you do this? I... Y yes Yes, ma'am. I'd be honored. Excellent. But as you've both made clear, for such an investigation to succeed first, we're going to need someone to convince the Free Star Collective and House Varun to play ball. Someone who knows precisely the sorts of dangers the colonies and all the galaxy are facing right now. The Cabinet wants you, Captain, to be that representative. The Cabinet wants progress, and wants it quickly. You're already far more familiar with the situation than any diplomat would be. There's also no diplomat alive that can claim they helped keep a cadre of Terramorphs off the Embassy doorsteps. The Cabinet was unanimous. They want you. We do. In exchange, we're willing to fast-track your citizenship upon collection of the data. So, will you help us? I'm glad to hear it. Now, we, of course, won't be sending you in without the proper support. Deputy McIntyre in the Office of Interstellar Affairs will be your guide on gaining access to the archives. You should be able to find her in our office across the hall. And on behalf of the whole of the United Colonies, you have our thanks. We are dismissed.
The next time Terramore rear their ugly heads, the UC is going to be ready. I'm gonna go check in with Chief Engineer Kim We got a rook on deck. Good to see Constellation getting some fresh blood. Former Crimson Fleet. An old Jacobons would be the term for it, back in my day. Left that life behind me. Even before I signed up with Constellation, I was retired. Ah, gotta pass the hours on the Star Station somehow. And the iron's always been good to me. Word to the wise, don't arm wrestle him. I'm still hurting from that. Wish I could have been down at the lodge to see the artifacts come together. But I got a little lost peeking through the eye. That one's all on me. The eye is the nickname for the star station. Think of it as one big telescope. Probably would have just gotten annoyed at being bothered. I'll catch a smile at our next big revelation. You know there's more to come. Now, this station, the Eye, rigged up for deep space scans. Barrett and Sarah teased out the signs of where our artifacts could be hiding after we caught our second one. But the data takes a slow ride along the Sea of Light. Years or decades between us and the fringes of space without a grav drive. You won't be the only constellation out there. Andresia and Matteo are both following up on scans themselves. Matteo went out recently, but Andresia... It's been a while. Hate to pull the worried old man act on you, but... I'm an old man, and... I'm worried. Another rook in Constellation who's making a name for herself likes to be on her own. I can relate, so I try to look out for her more than most. She's as tough as they come, but happy to lend a hand if needed. She should be at one of the two sites I've marked on your star map. Can take care of herself, but we all need backup sometimes. Anyway, Hopefully you'll be catching Fortune's smile, and we'll have some more artifacts to take a closer look at. Happy hunting. Usually it doesn't. I'm overdrawn from Lady Luck three times over. It's a long tale to tip your ear on, but if you ever wanted to visit, I have a house out there in the Starfield. Thought I was going to see life's eclipse from there, but... Constellation swept me away. Haven't been there since we started on the eye. If you do go there, turn the lights off when you leave, okay? Where to next?
Don't come any closer. Identify yourself. Ah, oh, good. I suppose I should have guessed. It has been too long since I checked in. Well, I guess making sure you were all right was a bit of an overreaction, judging by the dead body and all. You are the newest member, yes? Do they often send you to check up on other, more senior members? Perhaps. I suspect Vladimir worried you might find me on the ground, instead of this one. We waste time. We should complete our mission and then we can talk. Triumphant. Something may be nearby. Always worth checking. Never know what you might find in their pockets.
best not to leave anything useful behind. Finding valuable stuff like this, for some reason, never gets old. You did not respond when I called to you after you pulled out the artifact. Does that mean Barrett's theory and experience were correct? The artifact grants the first person who touches it a vision? The fact that it has happened to both you and Barrett is already more than we had before. I think it is important that we discuss what you saw back there. That man. What I had done. It was, yes. I appreciate that you see it that way. A very practical outlook, not one I find is shared amongst members of Constellation. May I ask what your background is? Argos. I have heard of this company. Small, reckless, Interesting. I do not have experience with this profession, but I have my own experiences with... <sighs> ...risk. We both seem to be... ...unusual additions to Constellation. Please, I would ask that you not mention to Vladimir the... ...circumstances in which you found me. This is not the first time that... ...Varun zealots have attempted to corner me. If it is known that this has happened again, well, it has been a while since I was given an assignment on my own. I would not want it to be even longer in the future. Do you understand? You are unfamiliar. This is a surprise. Few have not heard of them. They are fanatics. Having taken the teachings of House Varun and twisted them into a belief that the galaxy must be wiped clean before the Great Serpent's return. So, in this I would say I have done the galaxy a favor. Mom, this means we are in agreement. Thank you. That is good to know. I will finish here, and return to New Atlantis when I can. You should go now, as they will be expecting us. stuffy sometimes. Sorry, I plain forgot what I wanted to talk with you about. <sighs> that girl. 
If Cora leaves her tools out one more time... I mean, I love her more than life itself, but I can only say the same damn thing so many times. Oh, next time I see her, I'll paste on a smile and ask her ever so nicely to pick them up. Again. I mean, this is between me and you. But Cora wasn't exactly planned. I don't know if I mentioned, but I served a spell in the Freestyle Rangers. Had a partner. Lillian Hearts. Well, we were like fire and ice, but, uh... Well, it wasn't all bad. She's one of their top rangers, so they keep her in the field a lot. And that's how she likes it. It wasn't always like it is now. Hell, when Cora was born, I was completely out of my depth. For the first few months, I kept thinking what a colossal mistake I made. Me, a father. But one late night, early morning, whatever, Little Cora gave me my first smile. And I knew. I'd do anything for that girl. Yeah, sure don't feel like it. You said Cora's great, and I think so too. But I see so much of myself in her. I've, uh... I've done things I'm not proud of. I <laughs> said things even worse. I try to be better for Cora, but is she going to fall into the same traps? That's really reassuring. I do the best I can by her. I know it seems crazy, towing her across the stars, but I'm not exactly swimming with options here. Her mother, like I said, another story another time. And what, have her raised by Jacob, my dad? I'd sooner ship her off to Vladimir. You think? Well, she does say the damnedest things. And if she just learned to pick up after herself, she just might live until she's 13.
in my way. Pumping, huh? That's where the code. Not need not. Hey! 
Neon's got nothing on New Atlantis. Constellation. It's always nice to come home. I invent your circuits, Captain. We were worried. Why? Was there a concern that I would not contribute? Look at you two. I'm jealous. I tried following up on some leads myself, but came back empty-handed. They could be anywhere, can't they? Embedded in a rock, or in the hands of an unsuspecting novelty goods trader? I catch myself just staring at the collection sometimes, wondering what it all means. Maybe that's how our ancestors felt when they were looking up at the stars for the first time. They didn't just gawk at the stars, Mateo. They explored. They tested. Science brought us to space, not daydreaming. I disagree. What's the point of science if not to enable humanity's dreams? And where do those dreams come from? Not every dream is a pleasant one. I agree with Noel. The work is what moves us forward. You're with me, right? Science or dreams? Which one is the true muse of space exploration? Another realist has joined our ranks. I'm outnumbered. The truth hurts, Mateo. And Mateo ropes us into another round of philosophy. Can't we agree both are important? You know what? I just realized I completely overtook this whole conversation. This should be about you and Andresia celebrating a win for the group. I do not mind being asked to join in a debate. It was good to hear everyone's sides. But I do agree that we accomplished something together. Thank you for your help. I have no objections. Let us see what else we can find out there. Noel, pulling some interesting data from those new artifacts. Oh. Tell the Rook to meet me back on board the station. Thank you, but it was not necessary. We succeeded. Now that those artifacts aren't just blips of hope in the Blackest Sea, I found an interesting pattern. The grav anomaly generated by one of those artifacts? It matches one on another planet. 
a bigger one. This one has been in my list of possible artifact sites for a while, but the profile didn't quite match. Now that we've got more artifacts, the similarities are as clear as day. All right, let me transfer over the data. But I need you wearing caution's boots for this one. No telling what this thing is or why it's so large. Going to send you the mark close as I can. But I'm having trouble pinpointing the source. You'll need to explore the area on foot. Put your scanner to work. Don't know what you'll find. Keep your eyes open. And from there, maybe you catch a smile and uncover the source of it all.
rings. Uh, are they moving? They seem to react to us. Bright lights and reflections are almost enough to make you forget about those living down in the well. Back again. Who do you think will be the first to ask us questions? Matteo or Noel? Crix's bones. Look at you. If you don't mind, I'm gonna start doing some scans. Like, right now. We were right about the anomaly, weren't we? Tip our ears on the tail. Draw the words another. Crix's bones. If you don't mind, I'm going to start doing some scans. We were right about. An entire building generating a signature just like the artifact. Um, Vladimir, look at these readings. Cardiovascular and neurological levels aren't in the normal range. I think we're going to need a little demonstration. Mind putting the paces to it? Everyone saw that, right? Like a literal gift from the heavens. And also the most practical consequence of our little venture thus far. Got no old shipwise for this one. Going to just call weird, weird. So we have artifacts, a temple, and this power. All connected. But we do not understand the connections. We need additional information. Can we find more of them? Already picked one up from the scans. Matches another one of the artifacts we found. In theory, there might be one temple for each. But sifting through all the signs to identify a match is tricky. Impossible if we don't have the right artifact to compare. And even then, it takes time. You'd still need to cross-reference the artifacts we have with the data from the eye to pinpoint the source. Don't think it's just Fortune's laugh that this temple responded to you. The artifacts, the visions, this power you've gotten, all seems to be the same song somehow. Plenty to think about. 
Anyway, catch a smile out there. I'll work on finding planet anomalies that match the other artifacts we have. It would seem that the work here has come to an end. Well, you're back. Oh no, don't start. I've had enough Barrett for one lifetime. I don't need the sequel showing up on my doorstep. More pirates showed up when you were gone. We weren't as lucky this time. Calvert, Troy, some of the new Dusties, they didn't make it. You're right. You tell yourself you got deadlines, that the credits are what matter. But it's people doing the job, not machines. You think if you're strict with them that they'll focus on the work, give you a little distance if things go wrong. But you want them to win. Every boss does. Anyway, I was pinned down behind some crates with Barrett. Bullets and laser fire everywhere. No smile on that damn carefree face of his. Like he knew this was it. I started stealing myself to go out fighting. Then that idiot puts his hand on my shoulder and says, Stay here, Lin. I got you. For some, perhaps. Barrett is quite capable. All things considered. Next thing I know, two of the pirates are dead, and he's got the third one in a headlock. Drags him out into the open at gunpoint and demands to talk, or else I'm going to demonstrate Newton's third law on this guy's temporal lobe. And that's when they brought out Hella. <sighs> I didn't overhear everything, but after the ten longest seconds of my life, Barrett put his hands up, and both of them ended up getting taken aboard the pirate ship. And that's the last I saw of either of them. Too risky to put that in the message. Too much liability. You know how it is. Our clients need to know when the operations start and stop. We handle the rest. They could have grav jumped anywhere. I tried pinging a transmission to the ship in the comms building before they left, but the pirates must have fried it. You want to try it? Go ahead. But the odds of them being alive, even if you could find them... <sighs> I've lost a lot of people on this run, Dusty. I just want to pack up. and succeed at that before we are discovered.
try fixing that computer? Go ahead. Don't see what good it will do since they're already gone, but fine. Here. You need any more, feel free to scavenge around. Only managed to scrounge up one so far. I'm sure there's more around. before we're out of range. Out of range of what? Out of range of the sensor array on Vectera. Would you keep up? Once we're outside the star system, the bandwidth goes from instant speed to effectively never. What good is sending a transmission down there? You gonna tell Lynn how royally screwed we both are? She doesn't even have a ship. You underestimate how many of my admirers there are in the galaxy, Heller. One of them is bound to show up. Looking to reunite with this handsome face. We're doomed. Capital D, doomed. Got it, okay. Whoever finds this, I'm attaching the interstellar coordinates to the metadata on the transmission. Rescue us. Repeat. Rescue us. actually get that computer working again? What? Let me see that. <laughs> Funny. Even knowing he's alive, I still never want to see him again. Hella, on the other hand... Okay. Let me send you the location data embedded in the transmission. Find them, okay? What? Really? Uh, not really cut out for whatever it is people like you and Barrett do, but it might not be a bad time to think about a career change after all this. If you have room in your crew for an outpost supervisor, maybe we can talk. Be a while before Argos comes to pick me up. I'll be here if you need me. And hey... If you ever need a little extra help, I've been thinking about a career change lately. Maybe it's time to put Argos behind me. Seems like you've been keeping busy, Dusty. If, uh, you find yourself in need of a capable traveling companion, we should talk. My contract's up with Argos, and I could use a change of scenery. Works for me. I'm not fussy about assignments. I'll go where I'm needed. Right. I'll get to work. Let's catch up later.
Let's see what's on this ball. some pirate coming back to kill me. Lucky me, right? Man, I was so terrified when I got pulled on board that pirate ship. There it was all. Sorry, brother. I'll get us out of this. Trust me. Yeah, I'm starting to see that. He tells me we need to start pretending to fight each other. <laughs> Trick the pirates into thinking they need to come in before one of us gets killed. I just remember him shouting, This kid is a killer. How am I supposed to defend myself against these pearly whites? He's gonna bite my face off. I mean, I didn't think it would work, but they came in. All of a sudden, we were wrestling with two of them. Barrett reached for one of their guns. Bingo. Blasted the pilot right in the back. <laughs> Through to the flight console. And dropped orbit like a rock off a high rise. <sighs> I blacked out. And when I came to, there he was. Smiling like it was just another day on the job. You miss the fun part, Heller. <laughs> I mean, I go through all the trouble of saving your butt, and you weren't even awake to notice. Then he did the little finger gun thing. Well, no, I don't think so. I caught him holding his ribs a few times. <laughs> Favorite his left leg a bit, you know? Oh, yeah. Probably should have talked about that first. <laughs> Did I mention I'm on a lot of painkillers? So, I was real excited when a ship showed up. <laughs> then, less excited when I realized it was a Crimson Fleet ship. And then, really, really less excited when Barrett said, it's okay. I got this. He mumbled something to him, and then they were all gone. I was drifting in and out, but... Yeah, I think so. Got a signal from the ship before they grab jumped. Guessing it was Barrett. Haven't really been in a good... <coughs> Face to have a listen. Here you go. Hey, uh, uh, I should come with you, right? 
I don't think anyone else is coming. Yeah, just, uh, don't ask me to operate any heavy machinery for a while. <sighs> Give me a minute. I think the worst of it is... Yeah, I'll be all right. I'll be all right. Ready to wisecrack with the best of them. Let me know when you want to head out. Still think there might be a spot for me on your ship? I gotta get off this rock. Phew, oh, I'm glad to hear you say that. For a second there, I thought you were gonna leave me behind. What's on the agenda today? You got it. Catch you on the flip side, boss. Thanks. You've given the fleet a lot of trouble, Barrett. Hey, since when is surviving being attacked causing trouble? Isn't that just fighting back? Hey, pilot, could you move your arm a little bit to the left? I can't make out the console. Don't move! He's trying to figure out our destination, probably transmitting this conversation right now while we're still in orbit. Well, yeah. Thought I was making that pretty obvious. Okay, okay, put the gun down. I'm done. See? My retinas are pointing away from the console and towards this lovely view of space we have out the window. Time up. Once we get back to the base, the fun starts. yet had a moment to talk about what happened to you at that place T temple i am not sure what to call it in all my time amongst the stars i have never heard of such a thing what do you think that place was i can imagine certainly it is too soon to speculate about who built it but how can we not after what you experienced, do you have any insights? It is hard to argue, but the implications... I am sorry. After what you have been through, I should be asking about you. Are you alright? Have you felt any side effects? Yes, I meant apart from that. I am still trying to comprehend that on its own. The artifacts, that temple, this new ability you have acquired, clearly they are all connected. This is all so much bigger than we realized. You are right. Now we have even greater reason to press forward. To learn more about what is at work here. I 
hypothermia can set in quickly, and the effects can be deadly. We should keep that in mind. certainty to the universe at all. Once you really start getting out there, the laws of physics kind of turn into suggestions. You're pulling my leg again, right? The thing you've seen. No exaggerations this time. Holy shit. You actually found me. I do not understand. Is Barrett being held hostage or not? Well, this is turning into a regular constellation party, isn't it? I should have brought drinks. Matsuo the Grim here and I actually have a lot in common. Both escape artists. Being captured by Sistep myself plenty of times. See, that's what I'm talking about. Relativity. We're all just creatures of the universe trying to get away from what's after us. You know, it's actually been kind of nice. Matsuo the Grim here is a great host. No sense letting people's last moments be unpleasant. See, that's what I like about you, Matsuri. A real renaissance man. I have enjoyed our time together, Barrett. But I can't just let you go with nothing to show for it. Is Constellation willing to pay ransom in exchange for this man's freedom? You want me to end all this with nothing to show for it? He has been more entertaining than most hostages. Nobody wants that.
I haven't agreed to anything yet. Enough! I must insist on payment for Barrett's release. That settles that. Goodbye, Barrett. I have enjoyed our time together. Likewise, Matsur. Good luck with all the, uh, you know, pirating. I find comfort in the idea that the odds of something killing us here are at an all-time low. Got a little held up on Vectera. Barrett, we were worried sick. Well, some of us were. I see what you did there, Walter. And I know you've been secretly crying into your piles of money just waiting for I you. hope you are satisfied Actually, with the Walter quarters has available been complaining to you. about you more than usual, which is always a sign when he's worried. Don't start, country. Wait, is that? <laughs> and to think the first artifact was taking up dust on the library show. Now look at them all. feel it a bit, can't you? Ever since I found the second one, had the visions. Being around them is just... comforting. So hey, I I'm still not a hundred percent, plus I feel guilty dragging you into all of this. Why don't I stick around, help you get adjusted to the weird corners of the universe? It doesn't really matter to me. We never get too attached to ships. After the fifth or sixth time one blows up and you get marooned, the romance fades. Plus the frontier is a constellation ship, and you're one of us now. So it's just as much yours as mine at this point. Marvelous. If you have a moment, I have something I'd like to discuss. I must admit, you've surprised me. I thought you were going to take off as soon as you'd gotten something from us. But I was wrong. I want you for a little soiree I'm planning. All right, fine. I need your help. It's about an artifact. And our goal is simple. We're going to purchase it. Our seller is a freelance operative in the city of Neon, which means the artifact is almost certainly stolen from someone. I just need a little more presence in the negotiation to show we're serious. And I think you'd be perfect. Ah, yes, you're intimately familiar with the area. No need to sugarcoat that. It's going to be treacherous, but I'm hoping our combined talents will be able to handle it. We've got our very own local guide. Makes a world of difference. What do you say? I just need a ride to Neon, we talk to a few of your fellow Neon citizens, and then we're back for drinks. To the Volai star system, then. I admit I'm a little excited.
smell that? Construction, incense, industrial chemicals of every kind. But they still can't get rid of the odor of chasm bass. Quite true, but also opportunity. Our opportunity. We need to stop by the Stroud Ekman offices. There are certain authorization procedures when large funds are being transferred, even for something like this. See that huge shield? It's part of the power system. Lightning provides a substantial amount of Neon's energy. Kind of checkpoint ahead. Let's let them do their jobs so we can move along. What the hell is this about? Cut the act. Sniffers picked up the Aurora you're carrying the second you stepped through. All right. Get up slowly and turn around. Try to run and we open fire. What's the plan, Nesha? Smuggle the Aurora into Aquila City or New Atlantis? No, no, I just forgot I was carrying it, is all. Honest mistake, right? Uh, can, can we just settle this right here? I can pay the usual. We don't make the rules. That's Administrator Bayo's job. Now, shut up and start walking. Move it, let's go. Yannick's got to come through for me. I heard there's shortages over the Astro Land. Not really my cup of tea, as it were. I'll follow you. You don't need to wear your helmet. Benjamin Bayou's Tower. It's big, all right. <laughs> the Astral Lounge spared no expense with their marketing, huh? The Star Yard of the future. This is where quality ships are made. And I don't just say that because it's Stroud's business. It's all right. It's just true. just a short chat with my counterpart. Is she in today? Yes. Uh, allow me to bust you in, sir. You know, Mr. Stroud? You are so lucky. Walter. Issa. Shall we continue from last time? The luxury cruise line market is completely outside of our core competencies. Investing into it is a mistake. No, I'm here about... Wait a minute, a mistake. Our ship designers are the best in the settled systems. They design personal craft and military ships, Walter. Large-scale accommodations and hospitality is a completely different beast. Oh, I'm so sorry. Here I am, arguing with my partner. <laughs> and you're just standing right here. Issa Eklund, the hyphenated Eklund in our glorious company's branding. I see my partner has brought a labor dispute to my office. No, I did not. Look, this isn't the time or the place. I disagree. I don't see a reason we can't have this discussion. I won't belittle your position with some speech about how Stroud Eklund pays people more than average, or our years of charitable contributions. The fact is, the invisible hand of the market does not give out its gifts equally. We are literally in a tower, standing above the streets of the city. The metaphor isn't lost on me. No, I won't. Stroud Eklund, its people, its employees, its partners, its investors, they are who I care about, not the entirety of Neon. I wish I could say I was a better person, and that I would gladly martyr myself and my company for a better tomorrow. But I am not, and I won't. Yes, I forgot. Helping one's own community will destroy everything they ever worked for, obviously. 
don't let that cold air fool you. I've seen her move mountains for others. If my partner is done undermining my position, why doesn't he tell me just how you two met? Merely pointing out your finer qualities, Issa. And my colleague here is from Constellation. Ah, yes, the daring explorers my partner is so infatuated with. <laughs> you should hear him reciting that speech. <clears throat> There's no need to go into that. <laughs> oh, my heart skips a beat when he does it. Really, it does. Such passion. If he talked to the board that way, I wouldn't need to placate them so much. I know. It's my favorite hobby. Now, why are you here, my dear? The board meeting isn't for a while, and our vacations aren't coming up either. It's the discretionary fund, Issa. I need all of it. Ugh. This wouldn't have anything to do with that meeting you've set up at the Astro Lounge, would it? I never said that. Did you have an agent hack into my files again? Only after you had one hack into mine. Tell me, can mutual distrust lead to a point where it's actually the same as mutual trust? Exactly. You can see how removed my husband is from the groundwork, if he's overlooked something so obvious. That was the point. Neutral territory in the open. With no leverage? Oh, you must let me help. It's been too long. I have this all taken care of. Some investigation into the cellar. What's motivating them? Then, some preliminary casing of the Astral Lounge for security flaws. Give you the advantage if things go wrong. Bribe a few bouncers, alter the codes on the doors. Yes, exactly. I hate being selfish, but I would like some time with my husband. We need to go through the fund authorizations anyway. James Newell is the broker who knows our seller. He'll be able to help you find out more about them. And it shouldn't be hard to find the Astral Lounge. Here, let me at least give you some operation funds since I won't be joining you. Meet me back here. I'm going to be present for the negotiation. I'm not leaving you to the Neon Sharks, I promise. Aren't you? Name's Boone Morgan, your new best friend on Neon. If you're here for a drink or listen to the music, I've got you covered. But if you're here for something a little more exciting, we have plenty of Aurora for sale. Oh, no, 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 no. Drugs are for street gangs and junkies. Aurora is on an entirely different level. I like to call it an exquisitely crafted transcendent experience. <laughs> Only problem is that won't fit on the package. Here, take a look at the menu. Now, I'm not going to lie, the Aurora is a bit expensive, but <laughs> let's face it, can you really put a price on pleasure? The Astro Lounge is one of the safest places in all of Neon. Security is hand-picked from the finest officers in the city. Then I would say you'd be interested in the Astro Lounge VIP package. For a reasonable fee, our security can be your security. 
We do strive for setting the most reasonable rate. A loss leader. I make you pay less now in the hopes you'll pay more over time. Hmm. Well, I think we can certainly offer a discounted rate for you, if you were still interested. Excellent. Let me just apply that discount we discussed, and done. We do hope your meeting goes to your satisfaction. Excellent choice. The Sky Suite offers luxury and sophistication you won't find anywhere else in the settled systems. And since you'll be living in the same tower as the Astral Lounge, all of its pleasures and pageantry are only an elevator away. Of course, the Sky Suite features an open design with an emphasis on luxury. Whether you prefer the morning sky or a neon sunrise, the high ceilings and wall-sized windows will give you a full view of the city's splendor. How unfortunate, but I will be here should you change your mind. Hope to see you again. Hello. Take it easy. Nothing like some Aurora. You didn't hear this from me, but those ecliptic mercenaries? The factions use them sometimes. Freestar Collective and UC both. That's why they give them a wide berth. Ask me, those murdering assholes should be blasted into space dust. things can be surprising. Frank Rennick saw him a twist because his robot got vandalized. We had a good laugh about it back at the station. Now is the time to enhance your life. There it is. So go out and have your time. Your future will be the greatest and brightest of today. Hey, no funny stuff with that boost back. Hey there. Welcome to Newell's. We're fully stocked on supplies today. Welcome to Newell's. If you're looking for any specific goods, Rosa and I guarantee we'll beat Sieghart's lousy selection every time. Sieghart's Outfitters? Oh, come on. You don't have to pretend you haven't been to his poor excuse for a store off of Bayou Plaza. Oh, I don't have a problem with his place. My problem is Siegert himself. That man has absolutely no respect for the business community on Neon. He skips merchant meetings and refuses to participate in any of our group buys. Worst of all, he pays off Neon's security to keep his place safe.
by standing up for the lowlifes who come in here expecting me to just hand over all of my money. I refuse to be run out of business or be forced to pay protection. Yeah, sure, if all you care about is yourself. Every payment Seagirt makes validates Neon Security's corruption. He's setting a bad precedent that many merchants are forced to follow. Anyway, sorry. I know I can get a little intense about these things. If you'll forgive the outburst and have a look around, I'm sure you'll find something you might want to buy. I arrived in Neon almost, uh, what, 20 years ago? I had gotten a job at Xenofresh through a friend and started working on the loading docks. After a few years, they moved me up to Kazimbas Processing, and that's where I met Rosa for the first time. She was my supervisor, but we hit it off right away. It wasn't long before we decided to quit Sino Fresh, get married, and start our own business. We've been in love ever since. Oh, okay, yeah. That'd be extremely helpful. I honestly don't know what to say. Fair enough. Just be careful when you're dealing with Seagirt. He can be surprisingly unreasonable when he's cornered. Sure, have a look. Watch now, your back James, out there. I don't want you to get upset. But Administrator Bay, you came by while you were out. Oh, yeah? His Majesty decided to come down from his throne and walk amongst us peasants? What did he want? He said he wanted to personally thank us for our contributions to the city and hopes for our continued support. so out of sorts lately. Welcome to Newell's. Let me know if you need help with anything. Oh my, do I? That's awful. I should be taking better care of my customers. You'll have to excuse me. With all the ruckus my husband's been making at the Merchant Alliance meetings, it's difficult to get any rest. Poor old man has himself mixed up in a foolish crusade against Dietrich Sieghart, who he's angry at for paying off Neon Security. For protection, I assume. They apparently target certain businesses with some type of safety assurance fee scheme. We've been spared that indignity so far, but it's absolutely disgraceful this kind of thing is happening. I don't believe he is, no. I think my husband has Dietrich all wrong. He's probably doing what he has to do to survive. Just, um, please don't tell James I said that. I don't want him to think his own wife is doubting him. Well, thank you. I can't remember the last time a total stranger walked into our store and offered to help. It would be so lovely to see my James happy again. He used to smile at me all the time, you know. Now all I see is worry on his face. I suppose you can speak with him about it if you like. But perhaps you'd like to browse our store a bit before you do? Take your time.
stop by again soon. Feel like making a purchase today? Maybe I did, maybe I didn't. Information isn't usually free. Easy, friend. Not looking for trouble. Rather be paid now. Always better to stay on the right side of a neon street rat, huh? Okay. I don't know much. But I did have one of my freelancers tail the seller back to his place. Sleep crate one. Let me write down the unit for you. I had to chase more zone heads out of here today. I don't think they even knew what planet. Keep talking. I missed you too. You're still so tense. Normally, once we're alone, your shoulders relax. They're taut. We're on to something remarkable. Maybe what I've always dreamed of. I can tell. I can see your mind racing. I haven't even stopped to ask you how you're doing. I'm fine. The board complains, I assure them. There's the occasional assassination attempt. So, you don't need anything from me then? I don't. Am I just some useless stargazer? You would have been better off marrying a Hope or a Tayo, someone who could be with you at every meeting. Oh, don't go on about that again. Needing you isn't the same as wanting you. And I'd much rather want my partner than need them. Less complicated. Now I know Constellation seems to take up so much of my time. But I never stop thinking of you. Wondering what maneuvering you're doing to take over the company and drive me out. It's how I show my love. Is everything ready? The Astral Lounge and our cellar. Goodbye, my dear. See you at the next board meeting? Oh, I'll be keeping an eye on this little operation. Just in case. Good luck, all of you.
word is the Borealis. You know, the DJ? Well, she's moping around. All right, we're here. Now, I don't know what the cellar looks like, but they'll have a security briefcase with them, larger than normal, big enough to hold the artifact. We should split up. The code phrase to identify yourself as the buyer is Ramsey and Travers. Are they? <laughs> I was really hoping for a message written in invisible ink, but this will have to suffice. Remember, Ramsey and Travers. We'll meet back near the elevator. What is it? Can't you see I'm busy drinking? Oh, really? I heard you all have a meeting in a few minutes, don't you? In one of those fancy VIP lounges? Speaking of which, I gotta get going myself. Excuse me. Now, before we head in there, let me go over the ground rules. He'll ask for twice what we agreed on. That's normal. He'll probably try to walk out. That's normal, too. Don't worry about the amount we actually settle on. The Stroud Eklund Discretionary Fund is just a chip to you and me. Our goal is to get him to accept that chip in exchange for the artifact. Anything goes as long as it's in our hands and we're not dead. How does that sound? Let's just try it my way first, hmm? Remember that man is selling the artifact for a reason. He might be nefarious, but he might just be desperate. If everyone walks away with what they want, I'll call it a success. So you, Stroud, you look different in person. Our public relations always insists on doing some touch-ups for the official photos. Embarrassing, really. Your security here going to stand or sit for this little meeting, making me nervous. So polite. Almost makes me forget what planet I'm on. to assume that briefcase has our item of interest? Yeah, here it is. Well, look at that. One of a kind, and I know you want it. I have the amount we agreed on. Uh-uh. Things have changed. I want double. Now how am I supposed to do that? I don't know, but your security here seems to have some fancy gear. Why don't they chip in? Not my problem. It is if you leave empty-handed. We came here in good faith. Now honor our previous agreement. You either figure out a way to give me what I want, or I walk out of here right now. I leave now. I can get a jump start on the people after me, instead of you all wasting my time. You'd be on your way already if you just take the money I'm offering you and shut up. 
What's it going to be? Take or walk? I... Ah. Uh. All right. You win. Hand over the money. This... thing... is all yours. Well done. Some high-pressure tactics, but we got what we were after. Time to go home. Shall we? Stop right there! You're in possession of Slayton Aerospace property. Ah... Slayton must have been the original owner. We don't need to do this. All's fair on Neon, am I right? Hand over Mr. Slayton's property. Now. There a problem here? Yes. This armed thug was trying to steal our belongings. I'm going to need you to back away from our VIPs. Now. Fine, but you can't stay in the Astral Lounge forever, Stroud. Nicholas Slayton's already got your number. Slayton is a man of considerable resources. Sending armed men to the Astral Lounge. Slayton must be serious about getting the artifact back. We'd better get off the planet quickly. Let's talk. You have time. Ace. Something's gone wrong, hasn't it? Slayton has put a bounty on your heads. He's greased a few palms. Your ship's been impounded at the spaceport. There goes our way out. Agreed. Have a talk with the man himself. Slayton Aerospace has offices here in the Trade Tower. If Nicholas is moving this quickly, he must be there or close by. Let's head to their lobby, shall we? See if we can make an appointment. Hey, stranger. Let's chat sometime. Okay? Hoping to get a meeting? Welcome to Slayton Aerospace. Can I help you? It's ridiculous. I'm afraid Mr. Slayton is a very busy man. Maybe I could squeeze you in. Let me see. Yeah, I hope so. No, he isn't. I'm afraid we just can't book any more appointments today. Goodbye. Welcome to Slayton Arrows. We're only taking meetings with our preferred clients at the moment. Leave before I make you. You have a question, you can chat with the receptionist all you want. Wait, this clearly isn't the executive level. He's on to us. Walter, uh, taking what's mine, then breaking into my office. A bold move, but one easily countered. Oh, we're trapped. Hello, Walter, dear, are you there? Issa? Took longer than I'd like, but I managed to pay off one of Slayton's security consultants. They've patched me in. All right, we've got her out. Once the door's open, just follow her instructions, okay?
I'm aware of the irony of me continuing to say it'll be easy. But it'll be easy. Doors will open in three, two, one. Slayton's guards and employers are all over. Be careful. Okay. You'll want to use the vent system to slip around unnoticed. There's a cover just to the right of the elevator you came in on. Security is on full alert. No point slipping uh, through unnoticed. That was a weird noise. You'll have to fight your way to the exit. Trade tower? There's a series of catwalks that lead directly up one floor to the executive level.
one coming in just behind the executive elevators. I'll call the one on the far end, and you can walk right over the top. You know, it's moments like this that really makes Neon the best place to do business. You steal what's mine. I trap you in the city. You infiltrate my office. I lock it down. Where else can you match wits for the highest stakes but here? <laughs> You have what's mine. I, indirectly, have what's yours. We are at a stalemate. Although I do count a few more guns on my side. I do admit, having the co-CEO of Stroud Eklund in my office is quite the opportunity. How are your quarterlies looking, Nicholas? Perhaps we can add Slayton Aerospace to our supply chain. Provided this unpleasantness was behind us. Yes, I think that could be a most beneficial exchange. There is just the small matter of paying for the humiliation. Mr. Musgrove, my former employee, and the thief responsible for our serendipitous meeting, was caught prior to your arrival. I think it would cement our new partnership if you were to decide on his sentence yourselves. If that is your decision, you need only tell him yourself and then... We will handle the rest. Well, so be it. He knew the risk. My security brought Musgrove to my office. I'm sure seeing you again will be a fine conclusion to your previous business. We have an opportunity to spare a man's life. I know he probably hey, wouldn't do the um, same for us. When you're not busy, let's that chat. Shouldn't matter. I just wanted to say thanks for the daring rescue back there. I had plans for Matsura, of course, but I appreciate the backup. It's good to be part of a team, isn't it? To be part of something so much bigger than any one of us. So many things can go wrong out there. Working with people you can trust is important. And that's why I've been in Constellation so long. It's good to have people who will help out when you're in a jam. Exactly as often as I need to. Jams are just sticky successes, right? At first it seems annoying, but it eventually washes off. Uh, just wait till we get matching shirts and start having official cookie days. I'm guessing Gourmet Chunks days are out of the question, then. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm just joking. Constellation is so much more than that. Speaking of which, I'm glad you joined Constellation. Just figured I'd mention it, since we haven't had much time to chat before. You know, being a member of Constellation has given me a lot of opportunities. And a fair bit of stress, I'll admit. It's hard to imagine just who I'd be had I never joined up. I would have never done so many things, met so many people. It's mind-boggling how different I would be. And I never would have met Irvin. Or lost him, I suppose. Irvin Madani was my husband. He was also a brilliant biologist who joined Constellation a couple of years before me. Yeah, he's gone now. <laughs> I... I remember his bright smiles when I returned from my trips. <laughs> wow. More brilliant than any star. The war happened. He was caught in the crossfire between the UC and the Free Star Collective. It was right after he finished a job on Gagarin. Some terrible job, I don't remember. That's right. 
We can't know the consequences of the choices we never made, and anything beyond that is imagination alone. But for the choices we made, it feels just a bit closer, doesn't it? Urban's been gone for over 20 years. Strange how memories can pop up when you least expect it. Yeah, don't worry. Logically, I know I should be over it. But I'm not, and it's gotten worse lately. I've ignored my feelings about Irvin's death since it happened. It's time for me to confront it. I'm just fortunate that Constellation has been a supporting home for me since Irvin died. I mean, where else would I get to dodge space pirates and discover new planets? On that note, I think I'd do well to distract myself with a little adventure for a bit. Hey, um, when you're not busy, let's chat. Oh, no. You. Slayton really does have a sick sense of humor. Same old song, huh? You know how this works. Just make up your mind. I don't need to tell you this, but we don't need to kill him. We were taking advantage of his initiative, after all. And we got what we wanted. Justice for some, huh? Fine. Rather be caged than dead. It's not like you were working to make anything better for anyone other than yourself. But this would be a good thing to reflect on in your newfound, copious free time. I will make the arrangements for Neon Security to take him into custody. You're free to leave. Time to go. Let's talk more back at the ship. Security's got its eyes on Saburo Oka Digbo. That guy's trouble for the status quo. Get out of my face. You want to gawk at something? Take it to me. looks exactly as we left it, right? Right. Man, the galaxy's too big to be stuck in the same place. Are you okay, Dad? You look tired. Dad, you're so much worried. One of us is dead. Your dad's just yes. not as young as he calls back. What do you think? I agree. This life suits both of us, don't you think? Way easier than retrieving an artifact from a mine that's about to get raided by pirates. But I feel like we made more friends the other way. All in all, a great success. Thank you for allowing me to tag along with Constellation's newest star. <laughs> Yes, I used a pun. Forgive me.
now that we have a moment, I wanted to ask how you're feeling. After your experience at the temple, you've given everyone at the lodge quite a scare. That's distressing, but to be expected, I suppose. According to what I've heard, your body absorbed an almost unquantifiable amount of energy of a type we can't even begin to understand. We're dealing with something unknown to modern science. Who knows how this encounter has affected your body or your mind? Hmm. I know you're simply trying to brush this off with humor, but you really should act more concerned. That temple proves we're dealing with entities of unknown origin. The problem is that we can't even begin to guess what their intention was towards us and where they've gone. Hmm. Perhaps. It's just that... Oh, I'm afraid that we're flying almost completely blind here. All we know for certain at this point is that whoever created the artifacts are the same beings that built the temple. Anything else is just guesswork. I might as well put on a blindfold and toss darts at theories written on the wall. As far as constellations concerned, you're the first human we're aware of that's ever encountered one of these places. Now, whether you consider that lucky or not, that's another matter entirely. Oh, believe me, this is positively exhilarating. Think about the significance of this research. The questions it raises alone are mind-boggling. Who was this wondrous structure built to accommodate? How long ago did these entities inhabit our universe? Are they still out there? Somewhere. Perhaps. We'll need more data to be sure. It's funny. I used to think the artifacts were the end-all be-all of scientific discovery. The pinnacle mystery of our time. Never in my wildest dreams did I imagine it would lead to something of this magnitude. I just hope that you'll come through this. Whatever it is. Unharmed. Well, oh, yeah, yes, of course you are. I was speaking of the power you acquired. Uh, this is all scientifically speaking, of course. Look, I've already taken up too much of your time. All I can do is promise that I'm not going to make you deal with this mystery alone. Whatever might be happening, I'll be right here to help you every step of the way. Yeah, what is it? Yeah, take a look at this. I'm more than ready. Let's go. Sarah! Sarah. Good to see you again, my dear friend. I expect to hear some exciting tales when you two return. I'll try, but I doubt any of them will compare to the spectacular tales that we hear you spin.
through this. Hell of a city, isn't it? There's nowhere else like it in the galaxy. Look at this place. It's just as we left it. You know, I've often wondered who keeps the lodge so meticulously clean. How is Neon? Are you... are you okay? Okay, I'll start transferring the data over now. Let me just bring it up on here at the table. Is that... is that a prototype? No, that material isn't anything we... What the... Everyone, come take a look at this. That's no faction vessel or Crimson Fleet. Secret military tech, maybe? Hmm, no United Colonies Admiral approved that starship design. They call themselves the Starborn. Demanded we hand over the artifact. Like we were children, playing with their parents' things. What do people know? Any offshoot groups go by that name? Not in any corner of the settled systems I've seen. Maybe a distant human colony, finally popping its head up. Uh, another house for room. I very much doubt that. We ignoring the obvious here? A heretofore unknown group who just happens to know about the artifacts. I'm just gonna say it. Intelligent alien life or extra-dimensional beings. The original creators from the furthest fringes of space. Or beyond even that. Is the metaphor of avenging angels coming down to keep humanity from forbidden knowledge not apt here? So, we have a lot of theories, but nothing concrete. Except that they're after the artifacts, and they're willing to take them by force. No settled systems lab made these things. And I doubt one of them made that ship either. So, we got some weird extra-dimensional beings that coincidentally decide to build their spacefaring vessels exactly like we do. I'm not so sure about that. Some glints of shine in the dark. Ready to hand I them out as soon as you I please. To discuss with you. I'd like to talk to you about something, when you have the chance. Do you got time for a quick chat? I'd appreciate it when you're able. 
Oh, right. I was afraid you were going to bring that up again. Very well. Let's see if I embarrass myself or not. My colleagues, I venture out into the darkness of space once again. Many of you have expressed concern. At my age, you say? Surely the risks are too great. Surely Sebastian Banks has earned a rest. Nonsense, I say. To go out into the unknown, to brave the possibility of never coming back, to ignite the spark of hope that humanity will find answers out there in the stars? That is all I have ever wanted. If this last expedition is my time, then I say I have been fortunate. I have been fortunate to leave surrounded by people who could not be more different from one another, but who share a common purpose. That, dare I say, I am fortunate my soul has a home it can always come back to. And that was the last thing Sebastian Banks ever said in the Lodge before he disappeared. And Constellation has been waiting for him to come home ever since. Remember, you're representing all of us out there. We've always considered ourselves explorers. But this really Where is the territory, isn't it? That temple? The hell was that? I've been from one end of the settled systems to the other more times than I could count. But I've never, and I mean never, encountered something like that. Like, who built it? Why? So many questions. That's a good word for it. And what you can do? I am not a scientist, not in the least. But that ability, power, it's just plain scientifically impossible. Okay, just don't say that back at the lodge. Some of them will blow a gasket if you suggested that. Well, forget about me, how are you? I mean, whatever happened, it could have deep physiological effects. I hope not mental. And even if everything's perfect, there... Still, I can't imagine what's going through your head. Smart, staying focused. The other Constellation members are going to lose their minds once they hear about this. Assuming they even believe us. Yes? When you have a moment, I'd like to speak to you. Thanks for taking the time to talk. I wanted to ask you about the artifact you found on Bectera. When you pulled it from the rock, Held it in your hands for the first time. How did you Stop feel? Quick. Top three one-liner moments. Yes, Barrett. Number three. Your retort to the Crimson Fleet Raiders on Leonis Three. Yes. Class. No, no, I, I don't think you understand. I know about the visions, the light, and the music. How did you feel inside? What were your thoughts? to the demands of the eclectic captain in orbit around Tau Ceti V. Hmm, that was a good one. But I'm not sure it's the top. Raw energy? I've never heard that one before. I shouldn't be surprised. The artifacts aren't exactly what you'd call normal. I'll get back to you. <laughs> true, true. But hey, how else would you describe it? The artifacts are so different, so alien. And I'm certain one of them reached out and spoke to you. Quite the mystery. Well, 
Judging from the fact that both you and Barrett claim to have heard music, I've made the leap that the artifact was reaching out. Music composition might not consist of words and sentences, but I'll be damned if that isn't an attempt at language. Ah, oh, that's... an excellent question. You'd think after years of gathering data about the artifacts, I'd have the perfect answer to that. But I haven't the faintest idea. Not much, I'm afraid. All I have to show for my efforts are eyewitness accounts, scores of inconclusive metallurgical test results, and wild theories. Does that really surprise you? A universal mystery left unsolved for God knows how long? Oh, I've been dreaming about solving this puzzle from the beginning. I knew I picked the right person for the job. Look, I wanted to thank you for taking the time to talk, and for keeping an open mind. And I also wanted to say, well, I'm pleased we're on this journey together. <laughs> it's the best decision I've made in quite a long time. Hmm? Oh, sorry. Was doing the tally's work in my head. Inventory on the station, next supply run. You had a hell of a shake, getting bullied in the void. Starborn sure know how to make an entrance. Ready to head back out there? The Eye can help you find the artifacts, but I'm afraid she's blind to our new competitor. Double check the safety and locks wherever you go, okay? Exploration's dangerous, even without some nefarious group trying to kill you. I picked up something you might be interested in. Here. Oh, you're incorrigible. I picked it up on one of our latest planetary expeditions. I'm more than just an extra gun, you know. I'm just pleased I get to utilize some of my old field collecting skills. It's been a while. Check back with me from time to time after we return from our planetary jaunts. If I pick anything up, it's all yours. We should have a talk, when you have the time, of course. I wanted to talk to you, but honestly, I don't know where to begin. The Starborn's technology is simply astonishing. It's just... almost too much to process. Yes, I suppose I am. But you can hardly blame me, can you? You do understand the significance of this encounter, don't you? This is humankind's first contact with what I believe is an alien race. A race with technology that could be far superior to our own. Oh, we could learn so much from them. I wouldn't say I was afraid, more like approaching the situation with caution. Can't be a coincidence that these Starborn suddenly appeared after your experience at that temple. We know they're here to lay claim to the artifacts, but what's their true motivation? What aren't they telling us? They're certainly hostile, but I don't think they're here to completely annihilate us, or they would have done so already. Damn. Oh, if only we knew more about the Starborn. What their species is like, where they're from, how they're able to speak our language. I feel like a cadet on my very first day aboard a spaceship. My mind is absolutely swimming with questions. Oh, 
Obviously. But there has to be more to these beings than simply originating from another world. Their name alone, Starborn. There's some type of hidden meaning there. Something that feels very old, perhaps even ancient. Whatever the case may be, I can assure you that Constellation intends to get to the bottom of this mystery. Hmm, I'm not really sure. Scientifically speaking, we're all born from the stars. Most of the chemical components of our body, carbon, oxygen, sulfur, are exactly the same as those manufactured by internal stellar reactions. Now, ask someone like Matteo the same question, and he'd probably give a more theological answer. But hey, it's all a guessing game anyway. To a degree, yes. Every bit of exploration comes with inherent risk. If we continue to avoid life's mysteries, we'll barely make progress as a species. Thank you. I really appreciate your support right now. You know, it's funny. When I was a little girl, I'd lay on the ground and stare up at the stars. I was absolutely convinced they held a secret. I'd remain there for hours in silence, eyes closed, listening, waiting for the secret to be whispered in my ear. This encounter with the Starborn is that moment to me. The stars are finally whispering, and I need to hear what they have to say. Hmm. Although I'm flattered that you think of me that way, there's a time and a place for that sort of talk. This is definitely not one of them. Well then, I've certainly wasted enough of your valuable time. Just do be careful if you cross paths with these Starborn in the future. I wouldn't want to lose one of the most valuable members of Constellation. So, I hear you've been making yourself pretty useful around the ship, Cora. I have, Dad. I want to be as good a co-pilot for the captain as I am for you. Well, you're doing a great job, Stringbeat. I'm proud of you. What do you say we get you a new outfit next time we're planet side? It still fits, Dad. And I love it. Now, a new book? Landing site locked. Take us in.
wonder how this poor soul ended up this way. Such a shame. This might be useful for us.
you're searching them, make it quick. Hey. Until later. I'm listening. Want to see what I'm carrying? Spends a fortune to maintain the lodge, but I'd say it's worth every credit. Look at how far we've come. It's all becoming so overwhelming. The Starborn, the artifact visions, the music. Is it all worth it? Mateo, are you having a crisis of faith? You? What if the Starborn are right? What if our hunt for the artifacts is a fool's errand, doomed to failure and catastrophe? You think we're doing the wrong thing? We just want answers. Isn't that why we all joined in the first place? The noble quest of discovery? Exactly. When the universe presents us with a threat, we can't afford to run away. We need to stay in the fight. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to shame either of you. Blame the workings of a worried mind. I just hope that this journey doesn't turn us into something that we wouldn't recognize from where we are now. Hate to interrupt, but I have a favor to ask. Lot of equipment on the eye has reached the span's end. If we're going to find more artifacts further out, we need work done. Got the nods and signs from Sarah and Walter for the materials, but I need hands. won't be going alone. Need more than just the you and I. Ask around. A few constellations are already on their way up. I have things I wish to discuss with you. I'm everyone's excited by the heavy AI to at least to be as objective as possible and be aware of possible negative effects. Ever since I got here, this has felt like... See you later. It's been quieter around here ever since Vladimir went to live on the eye full time. Oh, gosh. No, I mean, that's, that's flattering. But really, we're making this up as we go. Until you arrived, we only had the two. And the vaguest sense that there was something more at work. There's still so much we don't know. And that means a lot of work ahead of us. Well, right now, nothing's off the table. Metallurgical analysis, chemical composition. I'm looking at everything. One thing I'm really trying to improve is my overall database of xenobiology. I don't know if it will help in this case, but the more we know about, well, everything, the better off we are, right? Speaking of, if you're going to be out there looking for more artifacts, you're bound to come across some interesting specimens. Anything organic, I'd be happy to take it off your hands.
there's a galaxy chock full of resources. The more data I have, the more thorough an analysis I can do. And if it sweetens the deal, I can pay. Pretty well, too. Walter's pockets may not be bottomless, but they are pretty deep. Okay, let's take a look. Stay safe, okay?
advised. You are entering United Colony space. Please maintain course and prepare to be scanned. Scan complete. You are cleared to land at New Atlantis. Setting up some software. Want to test the computer over there? Help Vladimir code up this system the first time. Now that is. Hey, you mind helping me weld up some of these panels? Ah, uh, miss coming up here. You should visit Vlad more often. Why can't I use the welder? Just pick up the welder. Nothing to it. <sighs> well, can't win them all, I guess. Duh. Still need to lift another set today. Been dragging. Shoulder stiff. You color the wrong wires. Station showing red. Nastier than I measured. Figured a few of the parts might be iffy, but this is going to take more than a span. I won't leave you hanging, Vladimir. Cora and I can stay with you until the eye is back to 100%. No need for the martyr's clothes, but I'm happy to have the help. As for you, while we're giving the eye the swords, need to tip your ear on another matter when you got the time. It's good to be out of bed. Lives get stuffy sometimes. Don't want to worry anyone, but we got more competition. Not Starborn, rival collector. Captain Petrov owns a salvager vessel called the Scow. Runs it like a palace of novelties. And he's got a new prize in his collection. Reached out through my hand-to-hands to see if we can do an honest swap. He says the rock ain't for sale for any price. Think we're gonna need a crowbar and bag for this one. He's got a reputation for seeing the gold in things, but he's no lab coat. Thinking he knows it's unique, but not why. All the more reason to clutch tightly. Left the life of a jack of ones behind myself. I know what I'm asking. But I see a clutch prize not up for the prying any other way. Not sending you lone hook on the job. I want Barrett with you on this one. You two will be foot to foot the whole way, so make sure you're ready. Catch a smile out there. I know now isn't the best time, but I need to talk with you later. I have to talk about the Starborn. Do you have a second? You do, right? I already evaluated us for hallucinations or other types of chemical filters, and I found nothing. It could be the dawn of a new era of humanity. Or it could be an elaborate prank or any number of mundane explanations. 
Well, they were definitely unusual, but aliens seem so inhuman, obviously. I just have so many questions. We just need more data. There has to be a way to draw them out and figure out where they're coming from. It's one of our few facts about them. It seemed very important to them, too. This could be a turning point for humanity, you know? Or it could be just the emergence of a powerful new faction, or some sort of elite military tech, or a gazillionaire with nothing else to do. All we know is that they wanted that artifact badly. Agreed. That is going to require more observations, more encounters with them. And who knows? Maybe we'll never see them again. I know now isn't the best time, but I need to talk with you later. Welcome. You! You don't have business with this cow. Our captain is not taking visitors. Hey! You tell Petrov his old buddy Barrett is here to see him. <laughs> He'll want to talk to us right away. Barrett! From Constellation. You're specifically on the list of people not allowed on this cow under any circumstances. Oh, right. I forgot about that. If I could just talk to Petrov myself, I'm sure he'd want to put that all behind us. Go. Away. No one uninvited boards this cow. Captain's orders. Well, you can see it from over there. Hmm. We could use the money. I don't know if you convince the captain, though. Who let you on board? Thought Petrov was done hiring mosquitoes. Or maybe you're after something from the captain's collection. What well, he calls us. Some old Earth term. Oh yes, the rock. He's not selling it. But if you want to hear him laugh in your face personally, go right ahead. Yeah, we'll check with him directly, if you don't mind. Go on, then. Yikes! Full body chills. It's absolutely freezing. Welcome to Petrov's Palace of Peculiarities, the pinnacle of perfect procurement, the penultimate panopticon of prosperity.
You hear there's alien creatures on board the ship? Excuse me. Talk to- Ah! I wasn't aware we had the visitors. Why did you didn't tell me we had visitors? <sighs> we have visitors. Excellent! Now that you've gone to all this trouble to get here, you should make yourself at home. Relax! Kick up your feet on the tables. I don't care they have scorch marks on them anyway. The artifact? Ah, you must mean my latest curio. I have never seen anything like it. Intricate pattern details, a metal that feels soft to the touch, yet bears not one hint of wear or tear. Ah, you are out of luck, my new friend. I cannot part with it. I know, it's a fickle man who falls in love so easily, but what can I say? Mi amore. Tempting. I do love showing off. But my security team will have a heart attack. It would be against all those protocols that I admittedly told them to make. Reverse psychology won't work on me. Just ask poor Vadek. Oh ho, you do have a point. Oh, perhaps you're right. What good is a collection no one else sees? Hmm. Ah, very well. What's a quick look going to hurt, huh? I know. People look at me Enjoy and say, your Petrov, your the whole scout. ship is a testament of splendor. Why do you need a special vault? Well, all I can say is that even the greatest collection needs its own private viewing area. Plus, between you and me, there are thieves everywhere. So I spared no expense. Every door between me and my treasures is painful. But that is the price of security, eh? Huh? Que sera? Just a bit further. This ship and I have been through some adventures, I'll tell you. I once collected salvage from a demo celestial class while it was exploding! The crew was scraping scorch marks and bits of metal off the hull for weeks! And of course, there was the time I accidentally steered us it. into a UC Navy vessel after a particularly uproarious celebration of my latest acquisitions of fine art. But we were wedged perfectly between their two thrusters, and were able to just kind of push them back into the star yard for repairs. who sold me this told me that it spoke to him. That holding it for the first time was like drowning in your own soul. 
Alas, I've held it several times, and my soul is still breathing, devoid of any such enlightenment. Why, yes, he did. Oh, no. No, no, no. I can't. This one is mine. And it's only fair to warn you. Hands off. I would hate to sour our new friendship by becoming the victim of piracy. Uh, we're not pirates, Petrov. We're explorers. Who might do a bit of piracy on the side as a hobby sometimes. I'm afraid not. I'm easy in all things, except my collection. Then I suppose it's just a question whether my immeasurable love for my collection and my crew of hired cutthroats is enough to stop you. Go ahead. Make a move for the artifact. Let's see what happens. Uh, would it help if I said we needed it for scientific research? Captain's word is good. Done! Stand down, everyone. Let the nice pirate pass. Hey, Captain. Need help with anything? No, no. No need for further violence. We're all friends here. Just our luck, sir. Hello, Captain. I believe this little tin can protects us from certain death constantly, without fail. So far, anyway.
Come in. Come in. The eye's gone completely dark. I, I can't reach anyone on the station. Noel, Starborn, came out of nowhere. Vladimir, get out of there! He already left, said he was going to, uh, to the lodge. Sam, uh, he's, he's still breathing, but oh god, all that blood! Hello, Constellation. Are you there? Who are you? What did you do to our friends? They call me the Hunter. And now that I'm here, your part in glimpsing the unity is over. I'm already on my way. Say goodbye to your friends. It won't be long. Forget about us! That starborn bastard is after the artifacts! You can't let him take them! Pack up the collection, move it somewhere they can't find it! Damn it! Vladimir's right. We need to get the artifacts packed up, and that means holding off the starborn. What about everyone on the eye? We can't leave them to die up there. Look, I get it. But our best chance is staying here. I don't know how long it's gonna take to pack up the artifacts. I... I'll get started. Hopefully this will only take a few minutes, if my hands can stop shaking. Take cover, everyone. Where? You really expect them to barge through the front door? That's right, Walter. He's just stopping by for a chat with a call. Could you all keep it down? I'm trying to work here. If you're going to leave, I'll be barricading the door on your you way right? out. Won't be able to let you back in for anything. Right back at you. Messed up on this one, friend. Usually the last guy to get outdrawn. I got a good look at him before he knocked me senseless. I know that stance. 
that arrogance. The hunter works alone. Back at you. Let's get going. Oh, thank the stars beyond. Thank you. Uh, I don't think I can move right away. But I'll make it. Go on. Oh, thank heavens. You're all right. I'll be okay now. Go on. Take care of the others. You're... alive. Krix's ghost can keep waiting. Saw the ship dock with the eye. We took up the arms call, but when the doors opened, there was no one there. Skulked in like a damn specter. Before I had to know, it was nothing but pain's wings and a cold sleep. Time's unknown, but I came too long enough to hear him gloat about going to the lodge and seeing our friends trying to crawl away from him on a bloody trail. Not many sights to see before I lost the lights. Can't be sure yet. Starborn could have done a lot more damage. Guessing the glitter of the prize wasn't here. No tears for the old. Got the others to worry about. Can you hear me? It's Sam. He's got one foot in the Burley Gates already. It's over. We're... We're gonna find all those artifacts. Okay, Barrett? We'll solve this mystery. I swear. He's... He's gone. Come on. Let's get going. There's no changing anything now. I appear to only be seriously damaged instead of critically damaged. Fortunate. That you are likewise relatively undamaged is also preferable to the alternative. It went <clears throat> quickly after you left. Walter was upstairs when he screamed. I went to check on them and then the hunter appeared out of nowhere. We fought him off as best we could while Noel packed up the artifacts and escaped. We held him off while Noel escaped through the basement. There's a door that leads to the well district. I didn't see much. I didn't see anything, really. That hunter attacked me, I'm sure of that. I heard the others fighting him. Noel screaming and running off with the artifacts. Noel, she might still be in danger. 
There's a secret door in the basement. Leads right to the well district. That would have been the safest route for her to run. Thank God, thank God, thank God. I do, but where do we take them? Oh, there you are. I wasn't expecting you to run to the eye. You! You're not getting the artifacts. <laughs> yes. Let's see if they can slip from my grasp this time, shall we?
You're back. Thank the Blackest Sea that you and Noel are safe. And the artifacts? The lodge. So, we slip from the Starborn's grasp, but not before taking a stab straight in the heart. We... Uh, we need to talk locks and bolts. Lodge and the Eye are not secure. Got the right of it. The hunter, he, um... He probably found us because we're somewhere obvious. High populated area, just like how the Starborn found you orbiting Neon the first time. But the fact that they're competing with us to find the artifacts means they can't get them without searching. So we put the artifacts somewhere in the fringe, or on something that can slip from their grasp if they do another strike from the curtain. Hope your walls are high, just in case the Starborn get lucky and find the spot to do the breach and storm. Here, keep the artifacts safe. I guess we'll meet back at the lodge after. Planets like these are my favorite. I'm serious. If I may, I know our encounter with the Hunter is the last thing anyone wants to talk about right now, but he said something that I can't get out of my mind. Unity. Do you remember that? Because he was stopping us, implying that we were getting closer to it. The thing is, I've heard that word before. It's an important concept in Keeper Aquilus's speeches. The priest? Is the Sanctum Universum going to bless our little crusade of discovery? It can't be a coincidence. The Sanctum has always believed that answers are out there in the stars. Look, I know it's the longest of shots and the biggest leap of faith I could ever ask us all to take, but... Why not talk to him?
I guess it couldn't hurt. I've heard the Keeper's a pretty insightful guy. Thank you. I know it's not much to go on, but something about this feels right. I'll meet you over there. Services are designed to minimize pain and maximize happiness. Hi, welcome to Enhance. Thanks so much for stopping in today. I'm sure my staff and I can accommodate your every need. If you're here to try something new or on a whim, or to replicate a look you've seen and loved elsewhere, or just want to love your reflection in the mirror a little bit more, we've got you covered. All our services and records are private and confidential, so no need to worry. Okay, what can we do for you today? Come back anytime. Enhance is my favorite place to get. What do you think I should do? This space is me. Yes. Exactly. It's like. like. When someone insults you, you want to just beat the shit out of them sometimes, uh, but you don't. <laughs> well, not quite what I was thinking, but that's actually a great example, Marcus. The man in the story was cruel. But do you know why he was cruel? You must feel what he feels, understand his pain, accept it, and deliver it not back upon him. Empathy. You mean empathy. <laughs> but you say it like it's easy. Like anyone can... just... love a terrible person who has been terrible to them. Yeah. Why even bother? I mean, isn't the cycle of humanity peace and war back and forth, like forever? Seems kind of pointless to try so hard for something that won't last. Nothing ever really changes. Well, it's not easy, no. But necessary. Because you see, everything has changed. God has given us the intelligence, the ingenuity to reach into the stars, to travel his path, to truly find him. But we can't do it alone. The only way is through unity. Ha! Huh. Yes, Andreas. Yes. Unity. Well, I'm sure you all have other things. Keeper Aquilus, can we have a moment? Ah, oh, Matteo. It's been too long. How are your parents? Your mother still struggling with that azalea garden? No, she figured that out a while ago. Had to adjust the pH levels in the soil. But, Keeper, I didn't come to catch up. Oh. Well, what's on both your minds? What? Th that's, um, what we mean is we think there's something in the Sanctum's teachings connected to what we've been investigating. Keeper, when you talk about unity, well, does it mean anything else? Something secret? Perhaps you should talk about this inside.
Oh, now that we have a little privacy, why don't you tell me exactly what it is that brought you two here? They're like nothing we've ever seen, Keeper. Gravitational distortion, sub-audio harmonic sequencing, unidentifiable energy fluctuations. Uh, I caught half of that. So, these things are unusual? Even in your experience? There have always been mysteries that seem to defy our understanding of the universe. Beyond rational thought, we enter life as an act of someone else's faith in us. There's no way of knowing who we will become, and yet the risk is made anyway. So you've pushed into the unknown, not knowing where it would take you. And it's brought you here. I think I can. If you're willing to find your way in the dark for a bit longer, I can give you a path of discovering its meaning. There's an old story, far older than the Sanctum Universum, of someone who walked the settled systems and saw every corner of it. This pilgrim claimed he found the true meaning of unity. I always thought of it as just a parable for trying to bring humanity together, but Maybe it's more. In my story, the pilgrim met the founders of the House of Enlightenment and the enigmatic cult of the Varun. And he gave them each a part of the truth. Then he goes to his final resting place to live out the rest of his days in contemplation of infinitum addendum, his addition or contribution to the infinite. But what if the story isn't a metaphor, but a code, a way of finding the pilgrim again, or at least his grave? Yes. Something must be there. I just can't put my finger on it. Maybe the answer will become clear when we have more. The House of Enlightenment and Varun have versions of this story. Oh yes, typically. But there is a lone zealot that was captured recently for attacking UC ships. I've visited her a couple of times. Hopefully, she'll be willing to talk to you as well. And if you need directions to the Enlightened, they have a branch in the well helping the poorest citizens of New Atlantis find a better life for themselves. I'll stay here with the Keeper. We need to catch up. And I wouldn't mind asking him a few more questions. There needs to be a bigger word than thanks. More than gratitude. And whatever that word is, I feel that way towards you. I'd be dead. Flat out dead if it weren't for you. You and me both. Truly. I gotta ask. Why me? It was an impossible situation. And if it's wrong to ask, sorry, but it's going to keep me up at night. Barrett's been in Constellation so much longer. He's, he's more veteran, probably smarter. It's going to be hard knowing I get to live my life, but his is over. For my girl's sake, I cannot thank you enough. How are you holding up? Are you okay? Whew. I wish I could focus like that. That hunter bastard's gotta pay. Pay big time. I don't care if he's starborn and indestructible, we need to figure out a way to take him down. Nobody messes with my family like that. Just bring me along when you do. This is personal. 
I just want you to know I'm here for you. The only way we're going to get through this is if we all lean on each other. Another crime ring investigation against the trade of those. Energy software to talk to the hardware. If it's about the financial or food assistance programs, we are backlogged. Don't worry, we're doing everything we can. Oh, we're not. Sorry. Can I help you? It's actually important, as strange as that may seem. Listen, I've talked about this with him a ton of times, and there's no record of a Unity pilgrim. But since you both insist, our early records are mostly administrative. Humanitarian projects, group counseling notes, charity expenditures. But there is a series of exchanges the founding members recorded in a lot of detail. It's the closest thing I have to what Aquilus is describing. We might actually have some, but uh, anyway. A man walks into the first house of enlightenment. The founding members just call him the Drifter. So they think he's a charity case at first, but no. The Drifter asks them a bunch of questions. If your philosophy is built on an individual's own morality, what about the second person? That second person might disagree. Isn't the problem of two what you're really looking for? And the founders respond, each individual must understand how the second person lifts them up. All of human effort is a story of cooperation pushing us forward. And it kind of goes on like that. He comes back every week for a year. Same conversation every time. Second person this, the problem of do that. Honestly, I think the founding members made it all up. There was a little more hesitation being openly atheist in the early days. I think they were experimenting with writing their own scripture. Fortunately, that got abandoned pretty quick. After the records of the Drifter end, you never see anything like it again. Sorry, I couldn't be of more help, but that's about all I've got. Hope you find what you're looking for. A visitor? I have all the company I need. He knows not the truth. He sends another to ask more incessant questions. I never can make heads or tails of these guys. The Great Serpent waits in the shadows. He will entwine the universe, and all but the faithful will be made as dust. That is the truth. No more, no less. It would be really helpful if you told us about it. If that even matters in the slightest to you. Yes, I have spoken to your keeper about this. I will tell you what I told him, and then you will leave me. Jinan Varun meets the Unbeliever. 
he gives false prophecy to Jinan. But such is Jinan's conviction in the Great Serpent, he does not hesitate. He cuts the unbeliever down. But the unbeliever returns. Jinan realizes the Great Serpent is testing him, and he will not be found wanting. Four times they fight. Over 120 rotations of the planet they are on. Remember these four battles, Jinan, the Unbeliever says. Remember these 120 rotations. But Jinan knows this is blasphemy and delivers the killing blow. That is all. I have heard of no such thing. If it exists, it is a shadow that the Great Serpent casts to deceive the Faithless. Strength and conviction show your worthiness to the Great Serpent. The kill is not as important as showing there is no doubt. I grow tired of speaking. Leave me. You're back. What did you learn? Was there something hidden in their stories, like we thought? If there really is a location the Pilgrim wanted us to find, those do sound awfully like coordinates. What else did you learn? Hmm. Planets are often named by number. That second might mean the second planet in the system. Was there anything else? Yes. What he added to infinity. Maybe that points to a name. If we're looking for his resting place, we'd need to know the name of the star system, wouldn't we? Let's see. We have something that could be coordinates. Something that could point to a planet in the system. But what's the name of the system? Infinitum addendum. What if we break down the parts? No systems named finite or add. That just leaves in and dumb. <laughs> well, that's certainly how I feel. Yes, that's it. The second planet in Indum, at 4 and 120. That's where you'll find the Pilgrim's resting place. And from there, maybe you'll find the true meaning of unity. Before you go, you've now spoken to many different perspectives in our universe. In a way, you'll be carrying their philosophies with you on this journey. I know you're looking for a specific unity, but if you had to guess what it was, what interpretation would you give it? Ah, but what makes something like that holy? Gravity is also a force that brings things together. Should that be sanctified? Yes and no. We believe God is out there waiting for us in the universe and that the grav jump will bring us closer. But is gravity itself an article of faith? What do you think? It is one of the great contradictions of belief. We feel the presence of something out there 
but we insist that it is also everywhere. So you think this word unity describes that divine unknowableness that the pilgrim searched for? This guy's really hard to follow. Can we just get a straight answer? Well, I won't keep you any longer. This has been fun, I have to admit. Go, find your truth. The court. So, this stay up late reading the books. Did you know what you last night? <laughs> Don't pretend to be mad at me. I know you aren't real. I learned that back on Earth, people used to use the stars to navigate. That's so cool. But I guess it only worked because they just lived on one planet. And that sounds boring. <laughs> Remind me one of these days to tell you the tale of a certain Solomon Co. And where his stargazing landed him.
its many colored glory. Those ruins, they look ancient. Oh, Vladimir would go nuts for this. Bear it too.
emissary, perhaps? And their ship, the Helix. I believe they ambushed you above Neon and demanded that artifact you worked so hard to gain. Thank you for the stellar introduction. Your success is unprecedented. Before you came, we were just discussing how continued use of force against you is unwise. Yes, we did. We are not a monolithic people. The Starborn are individuals. Some are united in cause. Others are in it for themselves. We are all in it for ourselves. Some of us are just more honest. The Emissary threatened your ship, demanded you hand over your artifact. How is that so different from what I did? We needed to warn you off. Every encounter with one of our kind could spell disaster. For whom, exactly? I say whoever can collect them should. And who gets to say that? You? Me? The Emissary? I have debated morality for near infinity, and all I have found are groups of people enforcing their will on others. Rules and laws spoken as principles, but backed by arms and violence. Enough. We have more to discuss. The Unity. You are on the path to it. It is a place, a gateway. It is where we were reborn. Not a relatively expendable Dusty anymore, are you? Look at where you've ended up. I'm not who you think I am. <laughs> this universe is only the first one you've been to. I've seen hundreds. Where I came from, I was the one who ran to the eye. I left you behind to protect the artifacts, and the Hunter killed you. One of me, at least. I collected the remaining artifacts, and they opened the way to the center of my universe, and the doorway to an infinite number of others. That is the Unity. When I stepped into it, I became a Starborn. That's how I've entered other worlds, including yours. They are all connected. And that's the problem. All the artifacts are needed to complete the armillary and open the way to the Unity. In every universe, the Starborn fight over them. Innocent people die. You've witnessed the power granted by the Temples. The anarchy that can be unleashed. Someone has to decide who should get them. Here it comes. The Emissary tells you only the worthy should enter heaven. You're twisting what I mean. They're hypocrites. They use the chaos caused by the hunt for the artifacts to establish an order where they decide who's worthy. I attacked your lodge because I wanted the artifacts and you held me off. You got away. That wasn't some morality play. You didn't survive because of righteousness. You won because of persistence, luck, and skill. As I have done countless times. I was also human once. But what does it matter who or what I was when eternity is within your grasp? You're learning. My other self wants you to walk the path he walks. To give up. To appreciate the universe you have. Easy for a person who has seen everything, done everything. I think you should see it for yourself. 
You've never come this far. Not in all the universes I've seen. The path to the unity is opening to you. You're going to tip the scales one way or another. Better your hand be on one of our sides. Don't you understand what we're talking about? There's an infinite number of your friend out there in the multiverse. One is right over there. Besides, why fight me again when you don't have to? I want a truce between all three of us. Give you some time to think over which approach to the unity is the one you want. Mine or the Hunter's? Yes. Let's see how willing you are to live under someone else's rules. Just remember, one of us isn't trying to judge you. I'm sure you have more questions. I know we're not the same people we met in our universes. Still, it's good to see you again, old friend. When all the artifacts are assembled, the device they create is called the Armillary. In many ways, it's a model of the multiverse itself. Through it, you can reach the Unity. And from there, you can become Starborn. You've seen the terror the Hunter causes. Every time a Starborn goes through the Unity, they get more artifacts, find more temples, gain more power. We can't let more like him abuse these gifts to destroy whatever's in their way. Different? I never know who you are when I meet a new version. But so much of you stays the same. It's hard. But each universe is precious in its own way. Mine will never have its original you in it again. As yours won't have its real me. It's not an easy experience to describe, but the Unity will speak to you, offer you the chance to become Starborn. You will be leaving this universe behind to be reborn. Everything you were before will be gone. Maybe that's why it offers the choice. Compassion? Or is it testing us? The Emissary and their kind only want to control you. They enter the Unity, take artifacts from others, employ force. All the things I do. I am many things, but I would never tell anyone what to do with their gifts. That is your decision, not someone else's. The Emissary wants to become the judge of who gets to enter. But the unity itself doesn't judge. I've simply found that it's the quickest way. Talking, forming alliances, waiting for the right moment to commit theft. It's all so tiresome. I'll admit you getting away has been the most interesting thing to happen in quite some time. As soon as I realized what had happened, I knew I needed to wait until this meeting with the Emissary to decide what to do about you. <laughs> no, we always end up having this meeting at this time. But it's the usual affair. Can we make peace? No. Oh, how tragic. Honestly, I was beginning to wonder why I kept tending. That it's bad habit I started a long time ago. Perhaps I just like meeting the Emissary to gloat. <laughs> but you have provided something quite new to talk about. Maybe you're a random die roll. Or maybe the Unity is finally responding to all my hard work. To see what would happen, of course. You might not understand just how many times I've done this. 
Usually, you're the one who ends up dead, and whoever cries over your body goes on to become the emissary. Sometimes I manage to get you all bunched up and take care of the problem in one go. Sometimes the emissary has gotten to me first, and I never arrive. Hundreds and hundreds of variations of me, packing through Constellation. And it's almost never you. You making it to your ship on your own. That's... new. I took it as a sign. I don't get many of those anymore. Whoever created the artifacts and built those temples is playing a game with us. One whose prize is access to the center of all creation. There are no rules. Whoever gets all the pieces wins. And I've won. Over and over. I don't kill for the unity. I find the easiest pathway to it. I barely ever visited here before I joined Constellation. This here's the closest thing Cora has to home. Not bad, right? Hey, I've been talking with the others, and I'd like to get everyone together. To say goodbye. You know. To bear it. Thank you. It wouldn't be the same without you there. I'll have everything set up in a few days. Mateo told us about your pilgrim's voyage. You found it, didn't you? The meaning of unity. What? It can't be. Our colleague is alive in some alternate dimension? A am I hearing this right? Let's take a step back. This is everything we've been building towards. And the implications are... 
a lot to take in. Could you explain the part about multiple universes one more time for everyone? Yes, I wouldn't mind a little more detail. And that's why the Starborn want the artifacts so desperately. They're the keys to unlocking the infinite. I don't even want to think about the physiological changes you'd need to travel between universes. Plus what it would do to the mind? Enlightenment? Or oblivion? Like the hunter? You have the opportunity to reach the closest thing to your god that might exist. And you're second guessing it? One doesn't approach the afterlife without some trepidation. You're right. We have to see the unity for ourselves. I know this has been a lot for everyone to take in, but we finally have answers. Let's make the best of them. Uh, not to make a sharp turn in a grand tale, but I got the eye fixed up. Bruised, but still blinking. Let me know when you're ready to follow up on what it's seen. If you are free soon, could we talk? Huh? I wanted to thank you. Sorry. For giving me the chance to work with you. I know we met under, um... Unusual circumstances. You seem to be acclimating well to Constellation. Are you enjoying working with them? I think none of us were expecting what we have found. Well, perhaps, Matteo. You have certainly become a vital part of the organization. That is a credit to your abilities. If I may, from what you have seen, do you think I fit in well with the rest of Constellation? I cannot tell if that is a compliment or an attempt to avoid the question. I will assume the former. I have a very different background from the rest of Constellation. I carry myself differently. I worry that some of the others are unable to see past this. I have not shared much, but everyone knows I worked with smugglers for years. I am no stranger to violence and death. Yes, exactly. I survived. That was the only goal. For those that have not lived it, it can be difficult to imagine or accept. Others here have seen conflict, but for more noble causes. Vladimir is the only one here who can begin to understand. He was the one who pressed the group to include me. I lack his charm. He puts others at ease. I fear my presence does the opposite. That is kind of you. You also have a lot going. I, I am... I, I find expressing affection difficult, but... Um, but truly. Thank you. I know this seems trivial. Uh, perhaps childish. I have just always relied only on myself. I have never been surrounded by people like this. By a group I... I wish to be a part of. Does that make sense? Thank you. That is reassuring. Discussing these things is challenging for me. I hope now you can better understand why I wanted to keep the circumstances of our meeting quiet. I wanted to thank you for not saying anything to Vladimir. I know that you said you wouldn't, but it is still a relief. 
I would like my contributions to Constellation to amount to more than violence. It would have been, to some. Thank you for talking this over with me. It is good to know that at least one member of Constellation understands me. These last glimpses from the eye are from the farthest fringes of known space. Could be the only remaining pieces outside the hands of the Starborn. Catch a smile out there. Genuine NASA attack. Whew, goosebumps.
has to be an elevator that gets to the good stuff. Man, oh man, please tell me it still works. Flight check. Remember, no agricultural products pass here. And hit up the duty free first. Station log. Dr. Judith Tatien. The recent delivery from Mars is unsettling. I was expecting rock samples or maybe fossils of microbial life. Instead, Dr. Victor Eiser comes with two members of the military. Everything they've brought back is under wraps. What could a theoretical physicist need with a sample from Mars? Station log. Dr. Judith Tatien. I've been trying to cozy up to Dr. Eiser, Victor, to see what is going on. His team has completely commandeered one of the labs with those two military hand refs, checking who comes in and out. I joked that maybe he found a little gray man who was doing an autopsy, and he grew very pale. Two days later, he sends me a request asking for more information on my background in material science, metallurgical engineering. Oh, we have a meeting tomorrow. I, I think I'm being invited into the lab. Station log. Dr. Judith Satien. I have never been so nervous since I defended my dissertation. Four hours talking to Victor and his team about theoretical metals, atomic bonding, even a half hour divergence into magnetism that I'm pretty sure was to throw me off the trail of what we were actually talking about. Then I got to see the lab. I. I don't know how much I should say. The periodic table just got thrown out the window. Just how big is this place? This is so cool. Man, I could spend hours down here.
don't understand where these calculations came from. There's something wrong with the math? I think it's quite straightforward. That's not what I'm asking. We've had no success extracting even a sample of material from the object. No explanation for the gravitational effects, no motion graph to explain its harmonic frequencies. I can't even establish a melting point. Judith. But you've had me building these prototype colliders for months. And now you want me to bump helium-3 into it based on this equation you've written on a goddamn napkin? I just need you to trust me. I have been trusting you. We keep slamming our heads against a brick wall, getting nothing. And you keep coming up with something new to try. Like, you know what's going to happen. Where are you getting your information, Victor? I'm sorry, Judith. I... Look, not here, okay? Somewhere off base. I'll tell you everything. But I'm not lying, okay? We're going to discover something important here. I promise. This is history. This is where they figured it out. The hard science the settled systems was built on.
Doesn't it? I was hoping the Starborn were somehow so advanced that their concerns were... cosmic? Significant? Instead, they're fighting over goddamn toys like we've been doing since caveman times. It's just a stupid game to them. And all their deaths and suffering, not relevant. And they seem to be just as messed up as the rest of us. So the Unity is a gateway. A gateway to countless possibilities. And you have a chance to go through it. Imagine. I'd be lying if it doesn't sound like the adventure of a lifetime. I don't know if you're taking anyone with you. But if you take me, I got no idea if I'd go through or not. If it went for Cora, I'd jump on it in a heartbeat. Cora would probably shove both of us out of the way and dive in first. Born explorer, that girl. That's good. I know it's your decision who to work with, but you gotta remember that the Hunter murdered our friend. Sure, the Emissary may be a version of Barrett, but he's not our Barrett. But that doesn't make what the Hunter did right. Not by a long shot. If the Starborn are party crashers from different universes, I'd side with the one that's not willing to murder innocents to win. Still spinning. Maybe after a few nights sleep it'll be clear. Take care.
actually got to visit your labs back when we were working on the grav drive projects. Seems like ancient history now. Only thing we're doing these days is launching weather satellites. Guess this is as good a retirement as any. Now, Project Demeter, you want our help manufacturing scanners to better track these new meteorological patterns we've seen. Our guess is that the poles might be naturally shifting, causing some gravitational fluctuations that are throwing off our old models. Why do you need the scanning tolerances to be so small? What are you trying to find? I just want to be sure. It's, it's not like we're doing much these days anyway. The glory days are over. Why not give ourselves a challenge before they write us off in the history books? I know what I'm seeing, Victor. The data coming back from these satellites is very clear. It's the graph drives. All those jumps from the moon. At this rate, Earth's atmosphere is going to start sputtering out into space. Can the drives be fixed? I'm working on some designs that should discreetly solve the problem. Under the guise of an emergency update to the fueling pumps. We're talking about the end of Earth, and you're trying to be subtle about it. Judith, the last thing we need is people losing faith in grab drive technology. That might be our only option. To what? Are you seriously saying we should abandon Earth? The timeline is under 50 years. A blink of an eye for a planet. But more than enough time for a human exodus. And what do we tell people? We say it's an act of God. One that science has found a solution for. Time for humanity to take its place in the stars. You know, didn't you? You lied to me. I... All this time. I dedicated my life to this discovery, Victor. And you knew we were going to kill off our planet? You haven't seen the future I've seen. There's an infinite expanse of promise out there. A meteor could have hit Earth. A plague, another world war. Colonizing other galaxies secures humanity's future for all coming generations, across all time. At the expense of our home! Stop it, both of you! All that matters is building enough ships to get everyone off this planet. And we need to start now. I'll draft up a statement. We'll need to address the entire international community. I'm sorry, Judith. There isn't a planet in this universe that will be far enough away from you, Victor. We are never speaking again after this is over. My name is Dr. Victor Isa, and if you're listening to this, then you probably already know the truth. I was young when I first headed the retrieval team of an odd gravitational anomaly on Mars, but I kept what really happened that day hidden from everyone except one other person. Even she didn't believe me at first, but I have no reason to lie to anyone now, so I... I hope you'll accept this confession, whoever you are. When I touched the anomaly, I experienced 12 days of lost time. I met myself. He told me everything that has since come true. The grav drive equations, the tests on the moon, Earth's atmosphere sputtering away because of what we had done. But he also told me about a city thriving on a planet orbiting a distant star. Human culture, art, music, lifestyles evolving and shining brightly across all of space. What price would I be willing to pay for that future? Maybe you don't believe me. Maybe Judith was right and I'm just a coward who wants to believe his mistakes were justified. But everyone has forgotten about the real origins of the grav drive, this artifact from Mars. I hope you make better use of it than I did.
town. And it looks like other Starborn got here before us. So, you might have company.
understand now why I asked you to come here? The artifacts unlock the secret of interstellar travel. At the cost of Earth. An easy trade, honestly. Why have one world when you can have all the settled systems? Every grab drive in the settled systems was built on technology that came from an artifact that was discovered on Mars. But these early drives shook the gravity field surrounding Earth. Eventually, the atmosphere started to slowly sputter away into space. That's why Earth is uninhabitable. The artifact gave the scientists a greater understanding of time and space, but not the wisdom to see where that would lead. The settled systems wouldn't exist without the artifacts, in other words. We owe what happened here in NASA a great debt. Assuming we weren't going to lose it anyway. War, disease, famine, all the classics. Don't you see? The power of the artifacts forced humanity to the stars. They didn't get to make a choice. How many would have chosen Earth? And what gave Victor Isa the right to choose for them? You see the hypocrisy in what the Emissary is saying, right? They don't want to rob people of their free will, but then they steal the artifacts for themselves. In the wrong hands, the power of the artifacts can make anyone a tyrant. That's why we watch over them. The only thing you're watching out for is yourself. Be a fool. The emissary and I may have our differences, but you do not want to give us a common enemy. For once he's right. Don't do this. We can collect the final pieces together. Well, look at that. The emissary just became my new best friend. You've made your choice. When you're ready, the Hunter and I will be at the Buried Temple. That's where we'll settle things. Meaning, we'll kill you. But hey, at least we'll wait. The final round doesn't start until there's only one artifact left to gather. And if I'm not mistaken, Constellation has one or two to go. I would bottle that up if I could. Musty old books, a bit of motor oil, and into the lodge. history. Immeasurably reduced. Constellation is no stranger to loss. Our own founder left on an expedition and never returned. It is easy to talk about the glory and excitement of breaching into the unknown, of lighting the darkness. But it is harder to stare into the face of the cost. That all of our progress is built on top of the lives of those who dared. And that we owe them the courage to continue our work in their memory. Thank you, Sarah. If anyone else would like to say a few words.
Thank you. If anyone else wants to say something. Hey. How are you holding up? It's... It's not really going to hit me until later. Right now, I just I need everyone I else to be okay. Something to say, but I've got nothing. Just don't so forget to instead, take time for yourself, I okay? I quote Plenty of rooms free. if you need to sit down and a be alone time. for a while. Is we'll God get through real? this. It might feel like no everything's like falling apart, but that's why we need to stick together. Are. Existence itself is a mystery which yearns to be uncovered. Any time. What is goodness but a comparison to the good? What when is existence moment, but like a participation in being? For where the diversity of the universe inspires awe and wonder, it exists only in contrast. Everyone is in mourning. So pure, I understand, but I cannot quite share in their emotion. Our essence is what was imagined. After the shock of what happened faded, I have felt nothing else. What we Just a uh, numbness. Or in fact, so far beyond our understanding. I have seen death. I have lost people I considered close. But this is... There's more, but... It is not the same. Those are the parts that I cannot explain why. I am not sure I am making sense. Thank you. I was really thoughtful. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone else I want to have say anything? Things I wish to discuss with you when you have time. I don't often speak about what I believe in. It seems so redundant with how I live. But death is one of those occasions where it's hard not to look inward. Our friend is gone. There's no afterlife or second meetings. No God in heaven that is curating a perfect ending for him. So it's up to us. We are what lives on. The pain of loss inspires us to greater action than that is the good that comes from it. Always. Humanity is what truly creates our world. We are the ones that judge things to be good or evil, joyful. Us take responsibility for it. Let us remember what we have lost. Walter, are you part of the House of Enlightenment? I never knew that. Yes, well, I like to keep some things private. However, I know Barrett would have appreciated the sentiment. chat for a bit? Normally, I hate talking to people at funerals, but, well. You don't believe in the afterlife, do you? I mean, this might be the worst time to bring it up, but... Yes. Won't we all? Well, I've taken up enough of your time. I don't believe we met. Ajay Mamasa, former chair of Constellation. I wish the circumstances of my visit were better. Unfortunately, this isn't the first Constellation funeral I've been to. After 35 years, you say goodbye to a lot of friends. I hope you don't mind me saying, but I feel numb just thinking about it. I was the one who invited Barrett to join. Oh, he was so brilliant. 
even if the rest of us couldn't always keep up. <laughs> oh yes, I was Sebastian Bench's protege, if that gives you any idea of how long I was part of our little club. Exactly the same as when you met him, I bet. All smiles. Saying just the wrong thing at just the right time. You don't mentor someone like Barrett as much as you let him go and try to contain the damage later, eh? <laughs> ah, yes. I officiated his wedding. Ah, young Irvin. I told him he was signing up for a lot with Barrett, but he didn't care. I bet relationships in Constellation are still messy, aren't they? We're more of a family than an organization. All the formal lines bleed together. It makes the losses sting harder. But I hope it means the time you had together was all the more important. That's how I like to think of it, anyway. He never mentioned that. I suppose he didn't want to talk about it after what happened. The colony board took so much from us all. I hope this is all okay. Between fixing things up and sending out messengers and getting all the paperwork done. It's not much. I haven't really been sleeping much. I am. Um, I'm not having the best dreams right now. Good. I... Good. Sorry, if I talk any longer, I'm gonna start crying. Um, could you excuse me? I am told these types of gatherings are a sad occasion. That assumption appears to be correct. No, I don't. I'm programmed to analyze sensory and biometric data so I can cross-reference. But I do not feel as you seem to imply. I appreciate you verifying my analysis, although I am certain my thanks will do little to improve your current psychological trauma. If you would like, though, I can add some consoling language to my programming. It will take some time to adapt, but it will be okay. How was that? I will note that feedback for later. It almost feels wrong to be grieving, selfish. No amount of tears will bring the dead back. It's just easier to feel guilty, if you'll excuse me. Don't keep asking. I'm not gonna be, all right? Everything's worse now. So many people here. So many people saying goodbye. Uh, is this 
supposed to make everything okay? Make everyone feel better? It's just... It doesn't change anything, does it? I just feel like I want to be a million light years away from everyone. I... want to be alone for a while, okay? Is it quieter in the lodge, or is it just me? Death is a bastard. Comes for us all. You know, there's an old Aquila story about two pioneers who got lost trying to find a new frontier to settle. One of them takes ill. Clear he's not gonna make it, he turns to his partner and says, Don't bury me. Let the ground take what it's due. I'd rather be a ghost chasing after you than walk through the pearly gates knowing an eternity of loneliness until you get there. Sad story, huh? You look after yourself. Drink? Pour one out to the blackest sea? Two old friends. May their ghosts go past the edges of space, to the great beyond. I... I'll be fine. Don't worry about me.
By the way, Captain, Sergeant, you mean... Have you seen these orders? A Vanguard captain. You... Yes, sir. I'll make sure they get what they require. That must make you my Vanguard captain. Welcome to Interstellar Affairs. I'm Deputy Chief Diplomat McIntyre, Chief Yassine's second-in-command. I heard you were instrumental in protecting the city from the attack. You have my gratitude. I was also informed that you gave quite the presentation to the Cabinet. Chief Yassine wants you to know the Interstellar Affairs Office is fully committed to this endeavor, accessing the Terramorph data and beyond. We're going to do everything in our power to make sure you have the tools you need. And that means first getting you into the Archives. You do know what the Archives are, correct? Hmm. Someone paid attention in current events. So, then you also know that it was originally managed by the three major galactic players. Access to the Archives is only granted in cases of dire emergency and requires a one-time use code from each of the three Armistice signatories. UC, Freestar Collective, and House Varun. Now, the UC is already on board, so that means we'll need to convince two people, the ambassadors of the Freestar Collective and House Varun, to hand over their codes. Get them both and you'll have your data, but that's a lot easier said than done. I couldn't agree more. However, both ambassadors have reasons they won't, or can't, work with us. Now, I'll provide guidance on how we believe you can acquire each code, but ultimately, it'll be up to you to get them both to cooperate. And I do mean cooperate. Threats and violence are off the table here. Though that doesn't mean we can't get creative. But it does mean we need to get you up to speed on who you're dealing with. Who do you want to start with? Ambassador Radcliffe of Freestar, or Ambassador Balmore of House Varun? Ambassador Balmore's... a challenge. When the rest of House Varun retreated into seclusion shortly after the signing of the Armistice, Balmore stayed here. He's since lent his support to a small number of archival requests. So there's real hope he might again. Though claiming to know how a member of House Varun thinks is a quick way to earn yourself a psych eval. Well, these days, they're primarily considered a security threat. House Varun Zealots, a fundamentalist outshoot of the group that stayed behind when the rest retreated into seclusion, want nothing more than to send everyone not dedicated to their cause to the Great Serpent in the Sky. But that hasn't always been the case. After they ended the Serpent's Crusade about 70 years back, House Faroon did take a real run at trying to normalize relations with the rest of the galaxy. It's why they have an embassy here in the first place, why they were included in the armistice negotiations. But then, without warning, they left. Leaving behind, to our knowledge, just the Ambassador and his duty under the Armistice. It does, but there's a concern. We're not 100% sure Balmor is actually still alive. His public appearances were always rare, but it's been several years now since he last poked his head out. Scans of the facility show life signs, but not the kind we were expecting. Your task is to find him and kindly but firmly remind him of his duties under the armistice. Then you search the embassy for his biometric key, collect your code piece, and we'll go about notifying his next of kin, if we can ever find them. But let's hope it doesn't come to that. I have no doubt. Now, the embassy front door isn't an option, but our spies have stated there's a side entrance that should allow you access. Here, this device should get you all the way down to the embassy interior. Once you're inside, though, finding the ambassador is going to be up to you. And fair warning, 
We received a report that alarms might have been tripped inside the embassy during the attacks. Watch out for automated security in there. Ah, <sighs> the good Ambassador Ratcliffe. She's a veteran of the Colony War, and her only goal in life is to make ours miserable. Now, officially, our office is suggesting you try and negotiate with her. Use your experiences as a member of the military and with the threat we're facing to convince her to lend her support. And who knows? Maybe that'll work. Stranger things have happened. But my suspicion is we're going to have to rely on other tools to get her code. Certainly. See, good diplomacy is all about the careful application of pressure. We just need to find the squeeze. UC Intelligence has a recording device planted in the Ambassador's living quarters, which we suspect you can use to your advantage. But getting caught trespassing is a quick way to land yourself in an embassy holding cell. So, if you are going to try and access the device, you're going to need to find a way in there without being seen. Now, we recovered some intel we believe should be able to help with that. But there's also a disgruntled staff member you might be able to pump for information. Maybe even convinced to work with you. All right. Here, your diplomatic ID. I'll give them a heads up, you're on your way. Not likely to let you through the door otherwise. And take these. Chief Yassine wanted you to have some options on how to proceed in there. Now... If you have additional questions, or require clearance for a new approach we haven't already discussed, don't hesitate to ask. I'd suggest you start with Ambassador Radcliffe. Approach her while the attack is still fresh in her and her staff's mind. Be smart out there, Captain. Yes? Visitor, you'll find the ambassador in her office. Go on through. Visitors are only allowed in the lobby, offices, or conference rooms. Terramorphs, as in more than one? All that security, and they still can't protect their own spaceport. The UC never fails to disappoint. I just wish I hadn't received the news from an SSNN broadcast. We have a strategic advantage to maintain, Mr. Long. Of course, ma'am. Uh, I'll make sure it doesn't happen again. Uh, excuse me. Are you supposed to be in here? Sorry. Everyone's a little on edge after the attack. I'm sorry. Do you have an appointment? Ah, you're the one McIntyre called about. The eyewitness. She said you were at the spaceport. You have my thanks for what you did down there, truly. Saved many lives. Now, she also mentioned that, and maybe it was just a bad connection, that now the UC wants Terramorph data from the Armistice Archives, some of the most highly guarded information in the galaxy, in order to protect us all. I can only presume you're here to tell me I misheard her and that they didn't send you, local hero, to futilely beg on their behalf. Tell me I've got that right. Hmm. I was afraid of that. Let me be frank, Captain. The answer is no. 
That information is there because it is dangerous. I will not be the one responsible for its release. Now, why don't you quit wasting my time and yours and go? You're really gonna push this? All right, I will give you one chance, one, to convince me. Understood. I'm listening. The cost of being wrong is a high one. I... I suppose I have seen some promising actions by this current administration. Well, Captain, you... you make some good points. But if I'm really granting you access, I'm gonna need the following concessions. Your access will be limited. You can only take out the items related to stopping these terramorphs. The monitors will make sure of it. You go in once. You get everything you need on your trip, and never again. And all research done with the data will be monitored. If this data is being used to save the galaxy, the galaxy needs to be involved in the oversight. Freestar scientists will watch your people like hawks. So, do we have an agreement? Excellent. Follow me. They tell me it should only take a moment. And there. Here, I'll reach out to Deputy McIntyre. We'll coordinate the necessary oversights. To unlikely allies, I guess.
So, what seems punishment becomes providence. <laughs> A reminder we can never truly know the Great Serpent's designs for us. You have my thanks, and my apologies for the ordeal you just endured. Come, let us discuss. Not the ideal introduction, I suppose, giving you a grand tour of the embassy via barely functioning intercoms. <laughs> I do greatly appreciate your persistence. I suspect the Venom Tree upstairs has worked itself into more systems than I'd realized. But then again, who could cage such a beauty? <laughs> Tell me, though, what is it like outside? I heard the broadcast mentioning an attack, then the embassy was struck with a power surge, and then... Silence. Has the rest of the city suffered quite so badly? Harmless spores, you have my word, but uh, hard to navigate. Hence why I was guiding you through the intercoms to restore the environmental controls. <laughs> and release me. It is the sap of the tree that gives it its... Well, <laughs> perhaps not a topic for this exact moment. But I must know of the rest of the city. Does it still stand? <sighs> is that right, huh? I shall need to have these repairs seen to sooner rather than later. Now, it cannot solely be the Serpent's Grace that brought you here at such an opportune moment. You were sent by the UC. That much is obvious. Who else could just waltz through my door, hmm? And the broadcast spoke of terror morphs at the spaceport. A worrying occurrence, certainly, but coming here of all places, when all I could provide is some enthused cheerleading and... Ah, an archive code. So the UC requires information, then. On terror morphs, presumably, hmm? Do I see this all clearly? Yeah, the preservation of life stands as the very purpose of the Archives. Using its data to prevent more attacks... There is logic there. But, if I am to grant you access, I have a requirement. For years, House Varun has been known only as an agent of slaughter. We founded this embassy with hopes of shedding that legacy. With little success. In exchange for my code, I require this. You must be the one who ensures it is used for good. Ensure House Varun's legacy is more than just carnage. The knowledge you ask for isn't evil. No knowledge is. It is we who bend it to evil ends. Oh, you must assure me this will be used to save lives, not endanger them. Well then, I shall not fear. Please, follow me. <sighs> Let's hope it still works. And there. Let it be used for good. Thank you. 
Captain, you're back sooner than... Oh, oh, wait. Did... Did you actually succeed? With Radcliffe? And Balmore? We're all in agreement. So the old man was still lurking around in there. Fine work, Captain. And now, I've already arranged everything with the archival monitors. When you get down there, the UC monitor will give you instructions on how to deploy the codes. Follow them to the letter. Here, the UC code piece and an archival access card. The entrance is just on the other side of the plaza across from Mast. Absolute best behavior down there, all right? Howdy. Yes? You needed something? The ancient teachers of this science, said he. Tell me what went down. Impressive work. Captain, if you'd be willing to transfer the documents to the Major, she and I have been discussing what comes next. Time for us to start getting some real answers, and figure out if we've been asking the right questions. So whenever you're ready. I... Yes. It will be. Percival and I have done our damage. This... This is us starting to put some things right. So with the data out of the way, we've been discussing where exactly this work's getting done. The Red Devil's headquarters on Mars, back where you found Percival, seemed the natural spot. Already has the equipment, the safety measures. Though it sounded like the deputy had a few more things she needed to discuss with you first. Indeed. The most important of which is getting you your citizenship. Then I guess we'll see you on Mars. Captain, if you'll follow me. This, follow me.
All right, Captain. Are you ready to become a citizen of the United Colonies? It doesn't. We don't really care where else you might have been or might become a citizen. Once you earn your place in the United Colonies, it's yours. Good. This isn't the only item we need to discuss, so I'll give you the short version. Please raise your hand. Captain, through your actions today and in days past, you have earned your place among the United Colonies. Through service, bravery, strength, and upholding of the mutual good, Will you carry and cultivate these values for as long as you remain a citizen? And then, Captain, I'm pleased to welcome you into the United Colonies as a full citizen. Here, your official ID and your citizenship dispensation. We've also let the Aphelion Realty Office out in the plaza know you're approved to purchase property. Now, the other item we needed to discuss. There's a member of the UC who's asked to speak to you, but this person is in a sensitive position. Normally, we wouldn't even consider something like this, but we think this person has information that could prove useful in dealing with the Terramorphs, and they've stated they'll only share it with you. They asked for you by name. So I need your agreement that everything you're about to see is kept in the strictest confidence. You can tell no one. Can you agree to these terms? Let's hope it never comes to that. Head to the elevator. You're going to subsection 7. I'll make sure you're cleared for access by the time you get there. People joke. Say those Varun zealots worship us. Wish to keep me on as an advisor, 
and considering the other option, I was in no place to refuse. So I elected to trade my freedom for my continued existence. But such is the life of a soldier. Very astute. That's my daughter. My... progeny. You've been working alongside. Has she shared with you the nature of our... little family? Make the mistake. 
mistake of confusing me for a simple cutthroat. You can certainly try, but the man's been out there 20 years. He's likely gone feral by now. Easier for all if you simply blow up his ship and be done with it. If that's what you require to sleep at night, so be it. According to my information, he's been hiding around the world of Etheria, Wolf System. There is a star station in the vicinity, the Den. The head of the local vanguard, one Captain Marquez, should be able to help you find our man. Captain, did your, uh, meeting go well? I hope it's clear now why we needed you to agree to all the secrecy. Captain, please, keep your voice down. The situation with the prisoner is a complex one. A holdover from a different era. But it's a situation we've been managing as discreetly and humanely as we can for some time now. And the most critical part of that management is making sure no one else learns of it. Do I make myself clear? The Major doesn't have clearance for this sort of information. And she certainly doesn't need a distraction from her current very important work. Which is why I need you to keep this to yourself. No. They really shouldn't. And bringing up what you've learned outside this building will make you, Captain, look like a crazy person. I don't want that, and you certainly don't want that. So you need to keep this to yourself. Now, was there something in particular you wanted to discuss about your meeting? Dr. Reginald Orlais? He's finally found him. Of course, killing Orlais is completely out of the question, but bringing him to justice... He's been on the lam for years. That'd be a huge win for the UC. What's being offered in return? Really? He found the members of the research team. We'd already initiated a search for them, but it'd save a lot of time and manpower if he just gave us that information. Captain, if that's the deal, you have my endorsement. Just so long as you make every effort to bring the man in alive. Now, was there anything else you wanted to discuss? Trusting the man downstairs would be a mistake. But I don't think you need to be too concerned. This is far from the first name he's handed over, and all previous missions went off largely without a hitch. So while I'd certainly warrant caution, I think you can proceed. The Den? It's a star station. Orbiting Wolf, the second star station actually to bear that title. The first one was blown to smithereens by House Varun during the Serpent's Crusade. The place has always acted as a remote strategic hub, primarily for repairing and refueling UC military vessels. But because of its distance from the rest of the UC, things there have always been a little more lax. Patrols included. I can think of worse places in the galaxy for a criminal to hide out. Oh. Then I'll bid you good day, Captain. And remind you of the importance of discretion. This is UC Space. You are cleared. 
start to dock with the den. Looking to lodge a complaint? Then you want UC security, not the Vanguard. Oh, apologies, Captain. Didn't recognize you without the uniform. So, what can I do for you? Or Lace. Doesn't ring a bell. Anything you can tell me about him? Suit yourself. Well, I can tell you there's no one on the den by that name. But... There has been a rumor about a ship floating out around Etheria. Never docks. Doesn't respond to hails. They call it the Warlock. Maybe this Orlace of yours is the one piloting it. I can give you the coordinates to its last sighted location if you want. Just... well... You'll need to be careful. A part of Etheria's sky is an old debris field. Plenty dangerous. More than a few scrappers heading out never came back. Well, the original Den Star Station was destroyed decades ago during the Serpent's Crusade by marauding House Varun Zealots. Big part of the remains from those battles ended up gathering around Etheria, forming a nasty debris field. Every now and then, some headstrong scrapper comes limping back because they hit an 80-year-old mine. Or sometimes they don't come back at all. Sure thing. Here. This should get you pointed in the right direction. Go get your man. Offload? Trader, you should inspect your ship for heat leeches every couple landings. Oh, I'm sure you can find something.
doors and prepare to be scanned. Be advised, you have been identified as a known criminal. Respond immediately or we will be forced to open fire. You're on the wanted list. Halt and prepare to be boarded or we will be forced to open fire. Copy that. Stay on course while we escort you in. Greetings, citizen. Welcome to the UC. sure the remaining team members find their way to the Red Devil's headquarters. Except for one. That one you'll need to collect yourself. His name is Kaiser. You can find him on the Freestar world of Nera, wandering the battlefield there. The area was ground zero for Xenoweapon deployments during the war, so I would arm yourself appropriately. And I think you'll want to check in with Hadrian and Dr. Walker before paying it a visit. Kaiser will likely have security protocols you'll need their help to overcome. You're saving the galaxy, Captain. What tool wouldn't you use to protect it? Welcome back. I was afraid you might have gotten reassigned. You've been gone so long. So how's it feel to be a citizen? It should. You risked life and limb to earn it. But it is real good to have you here again. We've been going through the Terramorph data and, well, we're gonna need all the help we can get. These logs, they're even more thorough than I remembered. Genetic workups, population statistics, hell, even their food chain. I'd completely forgotten, for example, that there was a creature that actually ate Terramorphs. <laughs> At this point, the data's given us more options to explore than we have people to work on them. <laughs> That'd be something, wouldn't it? I'm sorry, are you? You're serious. You found our research team? That's incredible. That accelerates everything. With them back, it'll let us... Wait, Kaiser. Did you find Kaiser?
That... That's right. You would need that. Whoever gave you these leads sure knew their stuff. Well, how? How exactly did you manage to find them? That's not funny. Seriously, how'd you find them? No. That's... that's insane. He died. They executed him. They... They faked his death? My entire unit, they threw us all to the wolves, but kept him? And now he's what? An advisor? Commanding the fleet in secret? What was so important that they had to keep him alive? Well, they certainly picked an expert, didn't they? I guess it makes sense, though, doesn't it? The UC of that era only created me because they were afraid of a world without Ve Victus in command. Why would they get rid of him? As long as I live, I'll never understand the loyalty that old bastard elicited. You've got nothing to apologize for. Because the UC, they did a lot of terrible things for that man. But even knowing they did, knowing that they kept him alive all this time, you know what I feel right now? It's hope. I had no one when I was outside the UC. No red devils, no family. But that old world, where I was no one and my father mattered, that's gone. Thanks to what you and I have done, I have a place again. A purpose. But it's finally one I can be proud of. You and I, we're getting to change what the UC stands for. So I don't care if Evictus is alive or dead. He can rot for all I care. We're the ones who are making the settled systems and the UC better. I refuse to let that man define my entire life. Not anymore. Because there's nothing we can do about past choices. What we can do is try and make the right ones now. So, let's get back to the business at hand. Now, my father just handing over the information on the research team and Kaiser out of the clear blue, I can't say I trust it. But, if he has something to gain from helping us prevent Terramorph attacks, I'm not seeing it. So while you'll absolutely want to be cautious, what would you think about trying to bring back Kaiser? I'm honestly not sure what his endgame might be. Involving himself in preventing Terramorph attacks after all the damage he's done? Something doesn't add up. But he clearly understands how valuable it'd be to have Kaiser involved in this endeavor. So, I still think it'd be worth looking into. If you're willing. I think it's the right call. But if Kaiser has been out wandering on his own for all this time, you're gonna need a couple things. Here somewhere. Uh -huh. Here, Kaiser schematics. Actuators, weapons, batteries. That old robot's been MIA for a while, so chances are he's gonna need some repairs. He's also got a lock on his voice controls. You can give yourself authorization with the phrase nos belli machinis. Now, where exactly is the old machine? 
A battlefield? On Nera? Ugh, sheesh. No wonder no one's found him. That sector of Nera was destination number one for Xeno weapons during the war. Add to that general environmental devastation and the kind of lawlessness that comes with any Freestar world, and that planet's got more than enough ways to make a visit your last. But I think there's a place where you can start your search. Hmm. Yep. One of a kind salvage. Licensed to an Angelo Alonso. Goes by gel. As good a place to start as any. Mm-hmm. Military Model A. Customized him myself for when the Xeno Weapons team needed to make field runs. Part combat bot, part lab facility. Getting him back from wherever he may be will make our outside work a whole hell of a lot easier. And I'll make sure we're ready to put him to use as soon as you've got him. New model on the floor. Welcome to the one of a kind. Refuge and rest home for the hardest scrappers anywhere. Name's Jill, proprietor. Not here to make your fortune out in the fields then, huh? Suit yourself, but there's no bot named Kaiser around Oh, unless you mean Captain Ahab? At least, that's what we've all been calling him. No clue what his actual designation is, since he's got some sort of security protocol that prevents inquiries and general chit-chat. But he's a combat bot, right? Yeah, that machine's been out there a while now, hunting this one siren. His white whale. But it's been a while since anyone's laid eyes on Captain Ahab, though. Maybe he finally got the thing. Or it got him. Well, all right. So, sounds like you've got two options. You can wander around out there, hunting your bot. Little old white whale of your very own. Maybe you find him. Maybe you get yourself killed. But knowing this rock is part of what we do here, so if you want to find him a whole lot faster, I'll sell you what I know about this. Kaiser's location. Going rate's a little steep, but I'm willing to negotiate. I'm listening. Maybe so. Okay, okay, okay. You made your point. I'll give you a discount. Pleasure doing business with you. So. Last anyone heard of him, he was out near the Syracuse, shipwreck about a quarter click down the main strip. One of my roughnecks said he heard some kind of beacon. Just keep your ears open. You should find your machine. 
eyes open too. Sirens and ecliptic out there, and neither takes prisoners. Oh, and corpse retrieval is not included in this transaction, so now you know. Give Ahab a Kaiser, our best.
yours. Get you something? Ah, so that's where your machine's been. Ran out of juice. Heat leeches, wasn't it? Those little stowaways are everywhere on this rock. Suck the power out of a pen light if you let them. But a micro cell. That's military grade tech. I think we might have one, but I can promise you it's not going to be cheap. You could probably Frankenstein one together using our fabrication system here, but only if you had some quality schematics. So, I just brace for a little sticker shock. Lots of money to be made on mech scrap if you know where to look. And I just happen to sell a guide that'll show you the best spots to get started. Couple of words of warning, though. As you may have put together, near us more dangerous than a cellophane airlock. And it's not just the environment that'll kill you. You see brought Xeno weapons here during the Colony War, and more than a few decided to put down roots. Sirens are the ones you really need to watch out for. You've also got the unauthorized scrappers. Ecliptic being the worst of the bunch. Kill you for looking at them wrong. Luckily, we sell a wide array of problem solvers in various colors and calibers. Any near a scrapping expedition starts by checking my stock. Wouldn't have lasted real long here, doing what we do without a top-notch fabrication system. So long as you've got the specs, it should be able to handle making you a microcell. But finding materials up to the task, you're likely going to be sifting through quite a few mech hulks out there to find what you need. Though, if you think you can actually manage something like that, I'm willing to make you a deal. I'll point you towards the juiciest harvest sites. Spots where you should be able to find quality parts. But in return, any excess materials you collect, you sell to me, all right? Save us from risking our necks on another run out there. What do you say? Then let me just mark those collection points. Watch yourself out there. Don't forget, what? no better select.
Major Sanon. We'll have to wait. I cannot leave my mission. Although, previous attempts to disarm the weapon have been unsuccessful. Additional support may allow me to complete my active mission more quickly, allowing me to leave this place. Excellent. We must disarm Unit XW-99. Designation, Siren. Nearer's final Xeno weapon. Are you ready to proceed to the mission site? Follow me.
99 surface is now complete. Mine, however, continues. Combat procedures activated. Shape than I expected, Geyser. Shouldn't take as long to get you back up to full fighting capacity. This is good to hear. I was told there was a new threat on the horizon. I wish to learn more. Percival will give you the full story. Plus, get you dressed for the occasion. Occasion? Where are we going? Londinian. That's the plan. Come on. Captain, you're with me. Time to walk you through what we came up with. So the problem we're up against is vast. Terramorphs, they can be anywhere. Meaning us finding and disposing of them ourselves isn't an option. But what if we could let something else do the work for us? Come on. I'll walk you through what we're thinking. Hey. You remember that creature we talked about before you went to Nera? The thing that eats terramorphs, the Asilis? Apparently, they were bloodhounds for terramorphs. But when the UC ran low on synthetic foods during the Colony War, the Asilis were chosen to fill in the gaps. We thought they were harvested to extinction. But in the data, the research team found the location of a few remaining specimens. As you can see, what we're proposing is bringing them back. We'd breed populations of them, distribute them to human worlds, and then let nature take its course, using a method that thousands of years of adaptation have already perfected. We could speed up their breeding process using, well, using some of the same technologies that were used to create me. We even think that with some time and investigation, we could use the Asili's hunting skills to track down the Terramorph transmission method at long last. Find out how humanity spread them and put an end to the Terramorph problem definitively. If you pick a fight with one, or you're a Terramorph, sure. But Asilis were already spread across the galaxy once before during the Colony War. As livestock, they're far less of a danger than the one we're proposing to clean up. I... I suppose that's a fair comparison. Except that this time, 
we'd be protecting human lives, not ending them. Now, there is another option for removing the Terramorphs from our worlds. It's faster, maybe even more efficient, but riskier. A microbe, something we could aerosolize, let spread, and have it clean up anything with Terramorph DNA for us, which would include morphs, and we expect their transmission method. It'd still take time to build, test, and distribute, but no other method could hold a candle to it when it comes to sheer efficiency. Not even the Asilis. Inclined that way myself. With either path, though, we're looking at a long-term commitment. Years of work. Even just getting these plans off the ground is going to take time. And all routes are going to require some highly specific materials to make things work. Terramorph cell lines we can breed quickly and consistently to test on. A Seelie's gene samples we can use to rebuild their bloodlines. Or sharpen our microbes' tracking skills. Not the sort of things any labs just got lying around. But we think we found a lead. One place in the known galaxy where we know we should be able to find all the materials we need. All paths lead to Londinian. <laughs> it's certainly not encouraged, but the UC's given their sign-off for this excursion. This trip is all above board. Exactly what I was hoping to hear. Now, the UC has a small operating base on Londinian's outskirts. We're cleared for access, but we'll need to check in with the base commander, Sarah Hatoum, when we touch down. I'm gonna help Percival and Kaiser prep, but once that's done, we'll rendezvous with you there. But you need to know, Londinian? It belongs to the Terramorphs. They'll have anti-Xeno gear for us at the base, but I'd make sure you've got your favorite arms on hand. Okay. Hello. Yes, what? Oh, this goddamn planet. You romanticize a place when you're away from it for long enough, but I forgot what a dust-crusted pit Mars can be. Now you, oh, what do you need? You project personnel? Supplies are for project personnel only. Oh, that's you then. I was informed we might be working together. Don't much care for Vanguard. But sounds like you two really got into the thick of it back in New Atlantis. My sister's kids live in the city. So, um, thank you for what you did there. Yeah, they both came through okay. One science division, others an artist. Effectively useless human beings that would have had no reason to be anywhere near the fighting. Still, I would hate to see anything happen to them. Now, what was it you needed? No more reliable hardware in the galaxy.
myself on knowing everyone on this world and I don't know you you're with the collection team then I presume either that or you're one deeply unlucky trespasser Vanguard eh brief said you were an eclectic group you must have really shined out on the fringe to get assigned a task like this ah then this must be the rest of your outfit commander Hatoum I'm no need for introductions major Simon Dr. Walker, your reputations precede you, as does the urgency of your mission, so I'll get to it. Now, Londinian is one of the most dangerous places in the Milky Way. It's with good reason my soldiers and I do everything we can to avoid entering the city. Terramorphs are omnipresent, and the structural damage left behind when... when Major Sanon's father bombed its spaceport has turned large swathes of the metropolis into a decaying labyrinth. As such, we'll be providing you all with gear, information, and uploading municipal unlock codes to your robot. Every tool you could need to succeed out there. Except one. Once you're on the other side of those barriers, you will be on your own. If you get into trouble, my people will not be coming. Do we understand each other? Precisely. I'll leave you to your preparations, then. You can find your equipment in our armory base of the tower just outside. And I do believe there's someone waiting for you there, Captain. Now, once you're outside the base, it's my personal suggestion you make a beeline to the nearby Asili's plant. It contains one of our field caches. Though, I can't guarantee it won't contain anything else. I hope you all find what you're looking for out there. Robot, you're coming with me. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Commander. Percival, you all set to hook into their comms tower? Should only take a few minutes. Let's get this done and get the hell out of here. Percival will be scanning the city for our samples from here. When he finds one, he'll transmit the coordinates to us out in the field. All right. Head over to the armory and gear up. Once you're done, we'll meet by the entrance to the city. while you're out there. Don't trust what the voices tell you. Yes. What? Don't go into the city much. Never for long. Too risky.
Hello. You match our description. The Vanguard captain? The cabinet wanted you to have something. Make sure you had the best tools for the task at hand. Now, if you'll excuse me. on your gear you are you ready to do this then let's get this show on the road Kaiser Percival everything green on your ends I am ready personal comm should be routed through Kaiser now you copy that Roger, loud and clear perhaps too loud oh you're a riot robot Kaiser kick it off Thank you. 
gonna save you! Kaiser, this flora, this is Lazarus' plant, isn't it? Confirmed. You know, no one even realized it was a living thing until someone got it under a microscope and saw it had cells. Can't be cultivated anywhere but Londinian. A real marvel. All these leeches. What's keeping you things warm? in bloom. You know, we might be some of the only... What's... What's happening? Captain, have you seen this? Oh my god. The heat leeches are terramorphs. You just saw that, right? You would tell me if I was losing my mind. That heat leech, 
became a terramorph. The pests that have snuck onto every planet are baby terramorphs. Heat leeches hide out in ships, sneak away after landing, and then, with time, they transform. We, we just found out how terramorphs move between planets. What are heat leeches? They're one of the most successful pests in the known universe. Tough as titanium, they sneak onto planets by hiding in ship engines, build nests on anything that puts out warmth, animate or otherwise, and make more leeches. But I guess what they're actually doing with all that energy they've been siphoning is fueling one hell of a transformation. Which explains how something as big as a terramorph has been spreading between worlds with no one noticing. Until now. Pretty Major is right. But if what we just saw, if that's possible, the Lazarus plant, it's clearly an accelerant for the terramorph, a heat leech transformation process. Make one into the other in an instant. But that means if anyone knew about this, they could trigger a terramorph spawning. You could sneak a leech into a city or even multiple leeches into a place like New Atlantis. Good God. The attack on New Atlantis, does this... Could someone have set that up? But first, you'd have to know the truth about all this. Well, we're never gonna know if you don't catch that thing. Get after it! We may proceed. Go! shows up here, New Atlantis, and Tau Ceti. The transformations on those worlds, they must have been triggered by human hands. Captain, do you understand what it is we just stumbled on here? Exactly. Someone saw the Lazarus plant in action and used it to trigger the attacks. Makes some sense, actually. Tau Ceti was likely their first test. Someplace remote where no one would question a few settlers going missing. Ensure the big show, the attack on New Atlantis, would be a success. And the timing of that one. It couldn't have been just luck that it happened right when we were asking the Cabinet to do something about the Terramorphs. These attacks. I think someone planned them to set all this in motion. They certainly were. But having this answer, well, it raises a couple big questions. Who could pull something like this off? And why? That's a good point. An accusation this consequential needs evidence to back it up, not just conjecture. 
Let's save the discussion for when you all aren't standing in the universe's closest equivalent to hell frozen over. If we're gonna do anything to prevent more Terramorph attacks, human cause or otherwise, we need that final sample. Roger that. Kaiser? Get us into the spaceport? The entrance is this way. Keep 
What he knew about the Lazarus plan and the terror morphs and all this a secret. Didn't he? You heard that recording. He saw the potential of the plant as a weapon and hid it away. He killed those people to keep them from sharing what they might have seen. Condemned this whole city to death. He's a... He's... Yes. Exactly what we all thought he was. But if the plant was used to trigger the attacks, could Faye Vitsis have been involved in the massacre on New Atlantis? Good point. Deal with one monster at a time. Let's go get that final sample. frantic on the comms towards the end there, but it sounded like this was a success. Got everything we need to put this plan in motion. Ah, best place for them. Now, my connection might have gotten a bit fuzzy there, but do I have it right that Vey Victus knew about this damn plant? That's what it sounded like. <laughs> Guess the old Admiral must have told someone what he learned. Even he's not clever enough to pull off an attack like that from the great beyond. It's a bit more complicated than that. K-9, 
Captain, he needs to know. Vey Victus is alive. Which means he could have been involved in the attacks. Alive? He's... Vey Victus? That can't be true, right? Unfortunately for us all, yes, it's true. So that means we have a suspect. I believe that's exactly what that means. Look, Captain, Percival and I, we need to get these samples back to the lab. Ensure we'll be able to handle cleaning up the leeches as well as the terramorphs. But Vey Victus is the only solid lead we've got on the attacks. Since you're the only one who knows where he is, can you speak to him? See if you can get him to cough up anything he might know. Good. We'll all meet back at Mast, outside the Cabinet Chambers. They're gonna want to know everything we've uncovered here. Best of luck, Captain. And thank you for dealing with him. that can't be addressed here. Welcome to our Reliant. So, you're an empath. Very few people have this gift, or curse, depending on how you look at it. There have been uh, some clinical trials of a regimen that can suppress this talent permanently. It's perfectly safe, assuming you're interested. Check all the time. Welcome to a relay. All right, what can I... My goodness, you're in quite a state. You definitely need some assistance. All right, we'll clean things up and get you back out into the world. We'll get you feeling better in no time. There you are, right is great. Well, you've certainly got... Remain in good. Welcome to Arilla. Take care of yourself. Tau City, New Atlantis, 
my doing. Years of coordination between my associate and I. Figuring out how to deploy the Lazarus plant's pollen outside of Londinian. Learning to synthesize it. Use it as a weapon. Now, being as clever as you are, I'm sure you have thoughts on why I might do such a thing. Oh, my revenge was far from petty, Captain. The attacks were a correction. When I discovered the plant, I did consider handing over what I'd found, but we were at war. And I couldn't risk information that dangerous falling into the wrong hands. So I ordered the bombing of the Londinian spaceport. Fixing two problems at once. Halting the spread of the city's terramorph outbreak. And sealing away knowledge of the plant's potential.
hunting down criminals and other threats to the United Colonies. I expect they'll give me a bit more free range once this is all over. You would help me, like you did with Orlais. Track them down, and keep them from doing harm to the United Colonies. Impossible, though, if the Cabinet learns I'm the one responsible for the attacks. And how many have you killed to get where you are now? There are no great works that don't cost lives, Captain. Whether it's winning a war, or digging a tram tunnel. So we sacrificed a few dozen in the attacks to possibly protect millions. That seems like a fair exchange to me. I only hope you'll see the same and leave my name out of the discussions to come. Hmm. Well, I do hope you'll keep the larger perspective in mind, Captain. We've done something great here. Let's not squander the opportunity to do more. Perfect timing. We just got in. So on our end, good news. The Microbe and the Aceles are both as effective against heat leeches as they are against Terramorphs. Means either plan should work for clearing those critters off our worlds. Considering what the Lazarus plant is capable of, I don't think we can deal with those things fast enough. I already sent along info to the Cabinet to get them up to speed. So what about your end? Did you find anything? Did my father tell you what he knew about the Lazarus plant? I knew it. The second I heard that recording, I knew. <sighs> why? Did he say why he did it? Killed all those people because of a chip on his shoulder and an obsession with his own status. That sounds like Vevictus. Well, once we inform the cabinet, they can ensure he won't be able to do anything like this ever again. I'm sure he did, but he killed dozens of people, and I'm not about to let him get away with something like that. So I guess that gives us our final answer. Nothing left to do but head in and see what the Cabinet thinks of it all. Unless there was more to discuss, this might be our last opportunity to talk things through before the Cabinet weighs in on a decision regarding the Terramorphs. It's hard to know. Unlike my father, the Cabinet aren't butchers. But killing UC citizens, along with everything else he's done, is unforgivable. But if you're really that concerned, you could request they be lenient. They might be willing to spare him. Asilis aren't hostile to humans, but they are mega fauna. If someone decides to pick a fight with one, it could get ugly. But they've already been spread far and wide once before when the UC was raising them as livestock, so the risk of introducing them to new worlds is minimal. Using them to clean up the terramorphs and leeches, though, it's not going to be nearly as expedient as the microbe would be. Given what we know now about the Lazarus plant, the speed of the job does matter. But going with the Aceles, we're at least dealing with known risks. Microbe is going to make the cleanup a whole lot quicker. If we're concerned about this Lazarus plant getting deployed again, that's the way to go. The cabinet can secure the Lazarus plant, and then we're not risking any surprises when it comes to dealing with a microbe. You're being paranoid. You know the science. You know we can make this safe. I do know the science. I also know math. And a one in a million chance of a mutation isn't zero. So, I guess we're still in discussion. Probably best at this point to let the Cabinet weigh in, see if they have a preference. And here we go. Welcome back, all of you. 
I wish we were meeting under better circumstances. But according to Hadrian's report and the second one I just received, it seems the Terramorph attack on New Atlantis was no random occurrence, but a planned strike. Is what I'm reading here true? My God. An attack? Using Terramorphs? How is that possible? You will all receive a full briefing once we're done here. So then, is what the second report claims correct? Did Reginald Orlais commit these attacks, Captain? Orlais? Well, ma'am, it seems your report is incorrect. Francois Sanon was responsible for the attacks. He did what? That... that... that's impossible. He doesn't have the kind of access to... Clearly, he made his own access, Chief Sarkin. Madam President, I have been saying for years that not dealing with that man was gonna end in tragedy. Enough! I hope everyone here understands that what has just been shared is a state secret of the highest order. This information does not leave this room. Now that's quite the accusation your group is leveling. Seeing as Francois Sanon has not left containment for the better part of two decades. You have evidence to back this up? It just transformed a terramorph out of thin air. An invisible weapon. No plan I would be safe. Let's help us. I, is that actually him? I'd know that voice anywhere. That's Francois. He knew they could do this. And said nothing. He's a sociopath. Plain and simple, ma'am. Officer, please collect that recording. Yes, ma'am. Begging your pardon, Captain? We'll, of course, be launching a full investigation into how this could have happened. Though I have little doubt the Admiral will be quick to share all he knows on the subject once confronted with that recording. Chief Yassine, can you send one of your interrogators to have a little chat with the Admiral? I'll issue the order immediately. Good. Combined with everything else you all have uncovered. Well, I don't think the United Colonies can thank you enough. We... Failed the people of the colonies by not dealing with Vavicta sooner. I intend to rectify that mistake immediately. I'm not sure I see why someone with UC blood on their hands would merit leniency. But I will note your request when the decision is made. Now, with our villain unmasked, we can attend to the other matters at hand. With the threads you've brought together here, the Lazarus plant, the attacks, the heat leeches, the three of you have likely spared thousands of lives, but it now falls to the cabinet to ensure this can never happen again. As such, the cabinet will be securing the Lazarus plant on Londinian. All materials related to the plant will be classified to ensure no one else learns its true nature. A sound decision, Madam President. Tell the Freestar Collective? Why? So they have another tool to utilize against us? I'm in agreement. I fail to see the value here. That is an interesting idea. A grand gesture to further display this cabinet doesn't think like those of the past. The observers on Mars have proven such a gesture can bear fruit. So, you want us to make nice with the Collective by sharing our state secrets? No, I want us to display plainly the UC's actual intentions, that the plant will never be used as a weapon again. Huh. That does sound worthwhile, Chief Kalkarni. Very well. We'll get the Collective involved in the management. 
Thank you for the suggestion, Captain. So then, to our final topic. The Cabinet has agreed to implement a plan that will deal with the Terramorph, and now also Heat Leech presence on human worlds. In fact, we've already begun enacting measures to check all UC ports and settlements for undiscovered nests. But we all understand this is only a partial solution. The project we're embarking on will be a long and difficult one. So our first step must be deciding how exactly this all will be handled. Madam President, this microbe is clearly too much of a risk. The Asilis are the safer approach. To someone with limited knowledge of biology, perhaps? The technology behind the microbe is solved science, Madam President. It isn't dangerous. Using it to wipe out the Terramorphs would be the quickest path to protecting humanity. And fast results always lead to the best outcomes, don't they? As you can see, there remains debate among the Cabinet. We were hoping your group might issue a recommendation. Major? We've been having similar debates ourselves, but the Captain has yet to weigh in. I see. Captain, I know this may not be your area of expertise, but we'd like to know your take on the matter. I'm in full agreement. No need be delving into unpredictable sciences. And Major Sinan? Dr. Walker, you'd find this acceptable? We trust the Captain's judgment. Then the matter is settled. We'll begin the process immediately. Today marks day one for the United Colonies Terramorph Management Division, making you three the founding members of the TMD. As befits such a group, the Cabinet wanted to display its gratitude. Today, we will be adding three new Class I citizens to our ranks. Class I? For the three of us? Are you joking? What he means to say is, thank you, ma'am. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thank you, ma'am. You all have earned it. Now, there's much to be done. Major Sinan, Dr. Walker, I hope you two are willing to continue your efforts spearheading the TMD's research on Mars. We'd be honored, ma'am. As for you, Captain, the Vanguard will be providing much of the on-the-ground support for the TMD. As a member of both the Vanguard and the TMD, I believe you'll have your pick of duties. Speak to your commander. Tuala, if I recall correctly. He should be able to provide you with assignments going forward, plus help you collect the benefits that come with being named Class One. On behalf of the whole of the United Colonies, you have our sincerest gratitude. This meeting is adjourned. Please tell me you're here to help, not to try and steal my ship.
Welcome aboard, Deputy. Sorry if I can't give you the Grand Tour just yet. I was tracking a crew of outlaws that's been preying on merchant ships. Bastards got the drop on me. I ran them off, but they got a few good hits in. As you can see, I ain't in much shape to make repairs. Just patch her up enough to get to Hopetown. The rest can get fixed up there. Thanks. I owe you one. Thanks. That should get me home. You're right. They were pretty beat up, so I don't think they got real far. But if they make it back to their hideout, I might never find them again. We can't let that happen. They look to be heading for Polvo's Moon Miatha. Good hunting.
You made it. Those outlaws didn't give you too much trouble, I trust? Good. I'm sure it didn't hurt that I softened them up for you. You've got good timing. A courier just came in from Aquila. The Marshal sends his regards along with a briefing on your case. I was surprised as hell to learn about the starship theft. Nobody said a word to me about it. Anyway, Mr. Hope can see us whenever you're ready. If you need to take a little time first, feel free. His office is upstairs. He's in a meeting, but it should be wrapping up. Come on. I'm guessing the Marshal already told you this, but I'll say it anyway. Ron Hope isn't just the founder and president of Hope Tech. He's on the Council of Governors. The Council oversees the Free Star Rangers, so don't rile him up. I've spent a long time trying to build a good relationship with Hope. <laughs> he comes on a little strong, but there's a lot to admire about the man. Everything you see around you, he built. Pretty much everyone in this town owes him for their livelihood. Can't begin to imagine the kind of pressure that must put on someone. All I'm saying is, Try to show a little respect. All the way up. Enjoy your visit to Hope Tech. Uh, I guess being above everyone makes them feel like they're, well, <laughs> above everyone. As for parts, we could try outsourcing. Do a contract with scavengers, maybe, but that's a decision that's got to be made upstairs. Hmm. Well, talk to Elaine about the scavengers. It's not a bad idea, provided we get a good deal. And I don't mean a fair deal. I mean a good deal. Remember, it's not just our bottom line that matters. We're also responsible for the welfare everyone in the factory we look out for our people here Bridget that's a point of great personal pride um, excuse me uh, mr. hope well now the free star Rangers. at last <laughs> uh, Dan, good to see you. I think we're done here Bridget yes sir this is the deputy I told you about Splendid. Splendid! It's a noble calling, being a Free Star Ranger. We certainly could use more of you. I'm sure I don't have to tell you what an outrage it is to have a ship stolen right out of the factory. Justice must be done, and the sooner the better. That's good news. I'll send my people over to bring it home. Of course, that doesn't mean your work is done. I want the thief found and prosecuted to the full extent of the law. I'm sure I don't need to remind you of my position on the Council of Governors.
Then, I trust that you know what I expect of you. Now, tell me that you've at least got a lead of some kind. Hmm? Though what happened after the ship was taken doesn't concern me, what does concern me is making sure that this doesn't happen again. Well, I'm not sure I can be much help, but I'll answer whatever questions I can. Because I told them not to. If word got out, it would do irreparable harm to our image. I'm in fierce competition with other Starship manufacturers. Any sign of weakness could be fatal. Uh, what's more, every Starship thief in the settled systems would, would likely flock to Hopetown and start planning the next heist. Very well. I need you to understand something, Deputy. This town is home to men, women, and children who depend on Hope Tech for a living. I provide jobs that put food on their tables and a roof over their heads. It's a responsibility that I take very seriously. If word gets out about the stolen ship, my investors will lose trust and my workers will pay the price. I can't allow that. I hope so. I'm sorry to interrupt, Mr. Hope, but there's been a development. Not now, Cosette. I'm in the middle of something. But, sir, we have new information. I've just received a report that the stolen ship was seen landing at Neon just after the theft. A breakthrough at last. Well, Deputy, it sounds like you'll be heading to Neon, which means I can get back to work. Remember what we discussed. My people are depending on you. Hey, can I get a word? That wasn't as helpful as it could have been. Still, at least you know where to pick up the trail. Let's hope. So, guess you're headed for Neon. There's a ranger station there. Name's Jalen Price. He's a little different than the rest of us. But a Neon's a different kind of place. Good. That should help you avoid any unnecessary complications. Well, we've both got work to do. It was good to meet you, Deputy. Thanks again for helping me out up there. No problem. Good luck on Neon, Deputy. Want to challenge your instincts and hone those corporate skills? Ryujin is hiring. Hey, I don't care who you work for, you can't just... Oh, you're the rookie, aren't you? The one and only. Well, the Marshal's message said you were following a lead about a stolen ship. Truth is, a lot of stolen goods flow through here. But this city is real good at keeping its secrets, even from us. Yeah, about that. This isn't Aquila City. The badge doesn't carry the same weight here. The people who run this place aren't overly concerned about the law. Our job is to keep the peace and make sure the violence doesn't get out of hand. The last thing anyone around here wants is some hotshot deputy looking in every dark corner. Ah, rookies. 
Your stolen ship would have had to land at the spaceport. If it was right off the factory floor, it would have stood out. There's a guy I know, Billy Clayton, does maintenance work around the city and keeps an eye on ship traffic for me. I'll introduce you, but don't expect a favor. Even if it doesn't cause credits, nothing in Neon is free. This is Neon. There are no guarantees, and who I find trustworthy changes on a daily basis. Talk to him or don't, it's your call. Come on. Impressive how you volunteered to help out with the bank heist in Aquila City. Yeah, I read all the reports. You learn quickly that a neon staying informed and staying alive are closely linked. What stood out to me was that you didn't lose a single hostage. No wonder the Marshal tried to recruit you right away. If he hadn't, it would have made him look like a fool having some random stranger step in and do the job he couldn't. Now, if someone tried to hold up a bank here, they'd be gunned down. Because the fact that you think justice is absolute concerns me, Deputy. It's never that simple. Justice can mean different things to different people, and laws can be interpreted and debated. A ranger relies on judgment and Clover intuition. Clover over at Kelcor? To best She's too for good people. for Neon. Sounds like she's trying to help someone or something. Honestly, I kind of tuned her out. Got a second? What? Oh, it's you. Give me a good scare. I thought you were one of Goodman's people. Check. <laughs> Far from it. Our new deputy here is working a case, and I thought you might be able to help. Take it away, rookie. What do you need? Hmm. A stolen Hope Tech ship, huh? Well, here's the thing. Neon's got no end of shipjackers. I see them come and go every day. It's tough for a guy to remember one from the other. Know what I mean? Yeah, well, I'm one of them. I can help you. But right now my life is in danger and I haven't even done anything wrong. Freestar Rangers are supposed to protect the innocent, right? All right. I admit, I've got a bad habit or two. Look, I know your time is valuable. Here's a few credits for your trouble. Now, if you'll just hear me out for a second. I really need your help. It's about my brother. He died while still in debt to a syndicate loan shark by the name of Emmett Goodman. Now, Goodman's coming after me to collect. He says if I don't pay up, I'm a dead man. From where I'm standing, seems like our problems are intertwined like a couple of fuel lines in a thruster assembly. Sorry, but... Look, I'd like to help, but... Okay, okay. Try, right? The woman you're looking for is named Grace Early. Stealing ships is her line of work. She usually comes here to sell the goods. Rumor has it she just finished a job for some mercenary outfit, and she's been throwing money around, so must have paid well. 
I know her. When she isn't out on a job, she's a regular at Madame Sauvage's. That's on the upper platform. I'll back you up. Well, what about me? You just gonna leave me twisting in the wind here? If I were you, I'd get the hell out of Neon and start over somewhere else. Star Ranger and his what are you a sidekick or something well I'm sure your mom is real proud so how come I'm talking to the sidekick instead of the Ranger this is the deputy's case is that so and you had to bring back up just for little old me <laughs> I'm flattered anyway this ain't my first interrogation so let's just get on with it Oh, I'm listening with rapt attention, Deputy. I'm guessing this is the part where you tell me that you've got questions and that you expect me to answer them. That sound about right? All right. So I jacked a ship. It was just a little fun. I didn't even keep it. It was a job. I turned it over to some men and they took off for who knows where. End of story. Nothing I did put anyone in danger, okay? That's unfortunate, but I don't know anything about it. Can't say I'm surprised, though. You know how it is out here. The strong take what they want from the weak. You're real cold-blooded, aren't you? If that woman had been killed, you'd be an accessory to murder. Did you think about that? I... No, I... I guess I didn't. It... It's not that simple. No, I can't. Sorry. I'd like to tell you. I really would. Calm down. I'm still thinking about it. I guess if I can't trust a free star ranger, then I can't trust anyone, right? I was approached by a woman named Maya Cruz. Said she was a senior member of the first and that she had a job for me. She was working with someone inside Hope Tech and pitched me on the idea of jacking a ship right out of the factory. We were deep into planning the job when she had some kind of medical emergency. She said she needed surgery and would be in recovery for a long time. That was a few weeks ago. Haven't heard from her since. You serious? Take your pick. Money, reputation, the thrill of it. All good reasons. No, but it sounded serious. She was upset. Seemed kind of shaken, you know? Didn't seem right I should pry, so I didn't. Not long after that, I got a message from a guy named Marco. He said he was the money man for the first, and he offered half up front. Never met him directly, though. It was always through intermediaries and using encrypted slates. Got the feeling he was paranoid as hell. Do you have one of those encrypted slates on you right now? Yeah. Here. Take it. I'm done with all this. Anything else you want to know? Yeah. Sure. Next time you're at The Rock, you should give that encrypted slate to Ranger Alex Shadid. He's got a gift for cryptography. If anyone can crack that slate, it'll be him. I'm gonna head back. Good luck, Deputy. Then I'm free to go. Suits me. I'm getting too old for this line of work. Besides, I'm going out on a high note. 
Ain't many can say they grabbed a ship right out of Hope Deck. Should make a good story for the kids one day. hard work, but it sure be- Hey, I wondered when you might come by. I'm Alex. Nia's report said you were heading for Neon? I've always wanted to go there. What did you think? Okay, okay. The new deputy is all business. You angling to make Ranger tomorrow or something? <laughs> Just a little joke there. Anyway, moving right along. So how'd it go? Turn up anything useful? Oh, come to daddy, my sweet little mystery slate. I see lots of coffee and late nights ahead. Now, if you get any more of these, bring them to me. It helps if I can compare different instances of the encryption they're using. Just look for me up here. I have no life, so I'm not usually hard to find. You're counting on me. You know I outrank you, right? Please and thank you go a long way when addressing your betters, rookie. I need a word. Welcome back. Any luck finding out who stole that ship from Hope Tech? Glad you got a chance to meet him. Sounds like you're making real progress. You're off to a good start, but that's all it is. A start. What did you learn from this starship thief? Now we're getting somewhere. Sounds like you've got a couple of new leads to follow up on. I have a guess who Marco might be. I served with Maya Cruz. She's a technical genius and an expert hacker. I can give you some background if you want it, or we can go straight to planning your next move. All right, how can I help? Most likely place would be the clinic. It's in Freestar Collective Space and provides the best medical services credits can buy. They also guarantee privacy, so it's an ideal place for someone trying to keep a low profile. Ranger Ben Armistead has posted there. I'll send him an update on the situation. Guess we're done here. Welcome back. Glad you got a chance. Sounds like you're... You're off to a good... What did you learn? Now we're getting. Sounds like you. I served with Maya. I can give you some back. All right. Around the time he got out of jail, we started hearing Marco's name in circulation. Word is he's heading up a smuggling racket. Based on what you've learned, I'd presume he's funneling his ill gotten gains to the first. Ranger Autumn McMillan is out at Red Mile right now looking into the smuggling operation. I suggest you pool your resources. Uh, just remember, that's outside Freestar Collective Space, 
So we've got no jurisdiction there. Your priority is to gather more intel about the first. What are they planning? Who are they working for? Where are they headquartered? Just remember that your targets were locked up because they were loyal to their unit. They think the Freestar Collective betrayed them. In other words, you ain't gonna get a warm welcome, so be careful. Good hunting, Deputy. How long have you been here? Uh, about a year now, Doctor. And in that Another year, time. how many times have you had this conversation about late must be nice. Yes, that sounds right. Yeah? Got some trouble? Oh, now hold on a minute. You're the new deputy, ain't you? Yeah, the marshal's been sending out reports, keeping us all in the loop in your investigation. Yes, sir. Understood. Thank you, Dr. Salvato. You may return to your duties. Yep. I'm pretty well caught up on things. Ben Armistead, pleased to meet you. Well, I guess that's the long and short of it. You're the newest member of the Rangers, and I'm the oldest. So, is one of them first mercenaries here at the clinic? You know, every ranger knows it's important to trust your instincts. No better place in the settled systems to get medical treatment. <laughs> you can bet it beats anything them UC piglets got. Ironic, given they're the ones who built it. I know just the man who can help you. Right this way, deputy. Just between you and me, I ain't entirely sure why someone felt the need to station a ranger out here. I'm not much more than a glorified bodyguard for Dr. Darvish. She's the one in charge around here. She's also a council of governors. Most of the staff of don't seem fond of the idea of me being... I remember my first. I fond of this life back. Ben hadn't been assigned Good to assignment. Stuffy eggheads, if you ask me. Except Ari, that is. Need to make sure He's those about the only get one I can have a conversation with. Now, hey there, Ari. Working hard or hardly working? <laughs> hey, Chief. A little more of the former than the latter. What brings you by? Well, the deputy here could use some help. Came looking for someone who might be a patient. I'll see what I can do. Well, I'll leave you and Mr. Miller's capable hands. You need anything else? I'll be in my office. Excuse me, Nurse Armistead. I'm looking for that. Always happy to help the Free Star Rangers. I'll try to help you, but our computer systems have been having some issues. I just updated things a little while ago. Huh. Oh, that's great. Well, we don't give the patients free access to our computer systems, so. Uh, I doubt that's related. And still, it's worth keeping in mind. You let me know. So who's the suspect you're after? Just take a moment. Collect yourself. Former soldier, huh? Get back to it. Yeah, they say war changes people forever. Makes me sad, the thought of soldiers who come home and don't fit in anymore. Hmm. The name's not ringing any bells, but maybe we can approach this another way. Do you know what was wrong with her? That should be more than enough. 
I can access the patient records from my terminal. Assuming the database cooperates, come on. You catch my Ben nodding off. Give him a good smack for me. The man means well, but he's just so tired these days. Okay, give me just a minute here. Maya Cruz. Maya Cruz. Come on, Maya. I need you to be in here. Okay, finally. Here we go. Oh. No matches found for a Maya Cruz. If Maya's here, then she's got to be using an alias. Which actually makes a lot of sense if she's a wanted woman. Yeah, let me think for a second. All right, hang on. I know that we do have a few female patients staying with us. There's Candace, what's her last name? Doolin, Candace Doolin. And then there's the Nakamori woman, I think her name's Jane. I don't recall offhand what they're here for, but it's a start. You're welcome to use the Ranger Station Terminal. I'll enable admin access for you. I'm sure there's someone else that can help you. Yes, what do you want? I'm sorry, but we don't permit unscheduled visitors to that area. You'll need to ask whoever it is that you wish to visit to make arrangements with me. Who exactly are you? And I require you to respect my authority as a senior doctor here at the clinic. The answer is no. The rules are the rules, no exceptions. I'm a busy man, so make it quick. Interesting proposition. Unfortunately for you, deputy, my integrity is not for sale. Hmm. That could be useful. All right, that's enough. I can see there's no dissuading you. I suppose I could make an exception just this once. This will get you in. Conduct your investigation quickly and without disruption. I do hope you won't make me regret this.
hope someone comes to take a look at me.
Well, what are you waiting for? Finish it. You might not think so now, but it's likely to end up that way. How about I make this real simple for us both? I've got maybe a few weeks to live, and I ain't spending them behind bars. You want to put an end to me here and now? Then fine. Get it over with. Life's kicked me around enough as it is. But if you want to let me die on my own terms, then leave me in peace. Well, how about a test? Rangers are known to be handy with a gun. <laughs> but here's a problem you'll have to solve with your brain instead. I've encrypted this slate. If you can crack it, you'll learn something useful. Now get out of here and leave me in peace. A lot of famous people will visit Aquila. Popping back a beer, you never know. New deputy, huh? Honor to have you. Hey there, deputy. Helga says I spent too much time at my terminal. She's probably right. Hey there, deputy. Way I hear it, you've been keeping busy jumping from one side of the Freestar Collective to the other. How do you like the job so far? That's good to hear. So, what brings you by? Well, well, what do we have here? Well, this is new. Hmm. Very interesting indeed. I'll see what I can do. If you can get me another one of these, it'll give me more context for the encryption and should speed things up. In the meantime, you be careful out there, deputy. From what I've heard, these mercs mean business.
hell are you looking at? You trying to piss me off? without paying your check. I was just going out for some fresh air. I, I even told the bartender. You can ask her yourself. Fresh air, huh? On a planet with no atmosphere. That's enough, stalker. Lower your weapon. We don't shoot guests over a misunderstanding. Sir, please return to your table. It's bad practice to leave our establishment without paying your bill first. If you need some fresh air. Hey up, go outside and come back in and start a new check when you're ready. I'm sorry, but I didn't think it would be a problem. You were wrong. Dead wrong. That's enough. I think the gentleman understands. Now let's all go back inside, shall we? And Stalker, you and I are going to talk about this later. I can't wait. Whether you're here to gamble, Wait a minute. Judging by the wide-eyed and clueless look on your face, I'm guessing you're the new deputy. We'll find out, won't we? Well, your timing couldn't be worse. I've spent weeks trying to crack this smuggling ring, and I'm about to take a very important meeting. Yeah, well, you're here now, so we'll just have to make it work. I don't have time to catch you up, so you're gonna have to follow my lead. I'm about to meet with a contact who might be able to give me vital information about the smuggling ring. If you play your cards right and don't do anything stupid, she might be able to help you find Marco. If you're ready, my contact is here and waiting. Follow me. you'd be alone. Yeah, well, things changed. Take a seat. So you're working with Autumn, huh? Who are you? Is that so? The deputy here is interested in meeting Marco to talk about that mercenary company he's been funding. Since part of that money is coming from his smuggling operation, we're working together. So you're investigating the first? Why? Hmm, seems like a strange thing for a mercenary company to be doing. I guess an introduction is in order. Like Marco, Jade here is the head of a small smuggling cartel. Difference is her crew stays out of Freestar Collective space, while Marco's group operates exclusively within it. Except now he's looking to expand his operation, and he started moving in on my territory. <laughs> now you're talking. Look, the bad news is, Marco's incredibly paranoid. He never stays in one place for long. The good news is, I know how to find him. But you're not gonna tell us yet, because you want something. I want the same thing you do. I want Marco out of the picture. But like I said, getting a meeting with him can be damn near impossible. One of the few people who can arrange such a meeting is right here at Red Mile. May Divine. We've suspected for some time that Red Mile was a meeting place for smugglers. If she's in business with Marco, she won't give him up easily. Yeah, well, so can she. I can tell you right now what she's gonna want, because it's the same thing she always wants. She wants runners. It's how she makes most of her money. 
Of course, people that hard-blooded aren't easy to find. Yeah, well, I'm not going out on the mile. That's a death sentence. There has to be another way. You've been a ranger long enough that too many people know your face and your name. Runners attract a lot of attention. If someone recognizes you and tips off May, this whole thing is shot. You, on the other hand, are just a deputy. It's pretty unlikely that a lot of people know you. You don't have to do this. We'll find another way to get to Marco. All right. It's your call to make. If it's really as simple as asking May Divine for a meeting with Marco, then I guess that's all you need to do. We'll wait here for you. Try not to die. Will you? Lena's really trying to turn this person. Ah, a new face. I wonder, is this the face of a brave runner here to challenge the Red Mile? Or simply one seeking a respite from the burdens of life? My name is May, and I'm the proprietor of this establishment, home of the famous Red Mile. I assume you're familiar. Well, of course you are. How could you miss hearing about the Settled System's most exciting sporting event? Why even people from the most backwoods systems like Seoul have heard of the Red Mile? <clears throat> I'm happy to answer any other questions you might have. In the meantime, please enjoy our world's famous hospitality. That is true. But Mr. Graziani values his privacy. What is your business with him, exactly? It's no small favor that you're asking. But yes, I can arrange such a meeting. It's been too long since we've had proper entertainment. If you're willing to provide it, I'll give you an mark. Are you prepared to run the Red Mile? But all of this is beside the point. We're not getting a free drink. Good. Once you've begun, I'll collect bets from my patrons who will place wagers on your survival. Right. That's what every runner says. Now that we're clear on what's expected of you, are you ready to begin? Good. Come with me and I'll introduce you.
Congratulations, runner. You have succeeded where most have failed. In fact, you seem none the worse for wear. Indeed you have, and in most impressive fashion. As promised, I'll set up your meeting with Marco. I'll dispatch a courier to let him know you're coming. Please take a moment to relax and enjoy our hospitality. I'll return shortly. Here to bask in my glory, I... You're back. Are you okay? Really? Either the Red Mile's reputation is exaggerated, or you're just that good. Anyway, I'm relieved you made it through okay. Why? Afraid you'd lose all that work you put into your smuggling investigation? I wouldn't expect you to understand. All you see in people is what you can get from them. I'm glad, because that was an incredibly brave thing you did. And we need rangers with that kind of courage. Also, I... I owe you an apology. I was pretty awful to you at first. I'm sorry about that. How could you possibly... Maybe someday I can... Uh, but no. No. Now isn't the time. We need to focus on the task at hand. Once you're on your way, I'll return to the rock and let the marshal know what's going on. Come home safe, deputy. That's an order. You always were the soft one, little sister. Oh, go to hell. Or at least make yourself useful and get us some drinks. Don't know if it was brave or stupid. Time for me to keep my promise, runner? You can find Marco on Kodos aboard his ship. I'd advise you not to keep him waiting. He is not exactly patient. Good. Travel safely, runner. Should you ever crave the challenge of the mile again, it will be here, waiting for you. Beginning landing. Sleep. Ah, the dulcet tones of classical piano. Welcome. May's message didn't exactly make it clear why you wanted to meet with me. If you're looking for work, my organization is always in need of pilots and security personnel. Willing to take risks. Ah. I see. You did well to find me. I'm not an easy man to locate. Though I suppose we haven't exactly been keeping a low profile lately. Given the nature of the contract, a degree of exposure was always a risk, but a calculated one. To be honest, I think the Major is all but spoiling for a confrontation with the Rangers. Still, I confess, I'm a little disappointed that the Marshal sent the Deputy instead of a full-fledged Ranger. <laughs> I'm not sure you are grasping the situation here, Deputy. 
You were on my ship, outnumbered by my guards, who killed you without hesitation. I'm a businessman. If you expect me to cooperate, I'm going to want something in return. I won't tell you everything. I do. However... Good. Then we are agreed. It'd be a shame if an encrypted slate like this one somehow got into the wrong hands. Wouldn't it? Now, before you complain, remember that all I promised was to point you in the right direction. You're free to stay as long as you like. It's not often I get to entertain such a distinguished guest. I specialize in cryptography. A lot of smugglers use coded slates, so it comes in handy. Hey there, deputy. How goes the hunt for the first? Good, good. If you ask me, I don't think they stand a chance. You're like an Ashta creeping silently through the high grass, waiting for your chance to pounce, and then boom! Down they'll go. So, did you get any more of those encrypted slates? Because let me tell you, I am so close. Oh, come to daddy, you sweet little piece of technology. You go stalk your prey and leave the rest to me, deputy. Sit down. While you've been in the field, we've had more reports about farmers being threatened and attacked. Unfortunately, some didn't survive. It's worse. It's tragic. How's your investigation proceeding? That's assuming he finds something useful. Otherwise, you'll be no better off than when you started. Let's move on. I asked the other rangers to share their opinions of you, and there are some things I want to go over. We'll start with Ranger Callow in Hopetown. She was grateful for your timely arrival, and impressed you had the guts to take on those pirates. Nia says you were respectful with Ron Hope and didn't push too hard. That shows me you were listening when I said to go easy on him. Exactly. Dealing with a council can be tough, but it comes with a badge. No need to make it harder than it already is. Let's continue. We've got a detailed report from Ranger Price about your recent visit to Neon. He said you met an informant who asked for your help, but you talked him out of it. Use you? <laughs> The way I hear it, he was fearing for his life and looking for help. You don't get to ignore your duty when it's inconvenient. Of course, I can understand that. Even so, you deserve some recognition for your compassion and generosity. Thank you. You got results, and that's what matters most. Price was impressed by that. Said you really took the initiative. Ranger McMillan praised what she called your uncommon bravery and dedication. She said you took on the Red Mile so you could get a meeting with Marco Graziani. Sounds like you're starting to understand what it means to be a Free Star Ranger. So what happened with Marco? I doubt he gave you that slate out of the kindness of his heart. Makes sense. I reckon he figures he's spent enough time there already. What about Maya Cruz? Her loyalty to Hull and the 1st Cavalry was stronger than most. Huh. 
I guess I'd want the same thing if I were in her place. Excuse me, Marshal? Not now, Alex. We're in a meeting here. I know, but this is important. I've done it. I've cracked the encryption on the slates. Now, I don't know exactly where the first are headquartered, but there are references to a place called the Factory. The Factory? That was our nickname for the main facility where the mechs were manufactured. Under the terms of the peace treaty, they shut all the mech factories down right after the war. But they didn't destroy them. At least not all of them. The facility was on Arcturus too. It could be a dead end, but if it's not, then you'd better be ready for a fight. If I seem strict, it's because I'm protecting the integrity of the Freestar Rangers.
a man of action. I've got no use for lies. So when I tell you that you're being manipulated, huh? don't tell the truth. You think the council of governors really cares about anything but themselves? They're greedy and corrupt. You're a tool in the hands of the unworthy, just like I once was. I was loyal. I followed orders, and I led good men and women to their deaths. I'll carry the stain of that dishonor to my grave.
justice? Well, what about justice for my soldiers? Minutes away, minutes from winning the battle and the war. in the Freestar Collective and cut right through them. <clears throat> if we'd have had more like you in the war, we could have planted our flag in New Atlantis. What the hell would you know about glory? <clears throat> that badge gives you power under the law, but it doesn't give you the right to question what I sacrificed for the glory of the Freestar Collective. You don't know what it's like to look around and see the faces of warriors who trusted you to lead them as they die screaming. I watch brave men and women torn limb from limb by monsters. I saw mech pilots cooked alive in their cockpits as their machines burned. <clears throat> Those deaths didn't have to be meaningless, but spineless leaders gave up on us even when victory was within our grasp. You really want to know? Because you might not like the answer. Last chance, deputy. You can walk away right now and remain blissfully ignorant, thinking you fight for a noble cause. But if you still want the truth, <laughs> I'll shatter that illusion for you. Right now. <laughs> we'll see about that. Not long after I started the first, 
I was contacted by a man who said he represented someone wealthy and influential. I refused to work for a shadow client, so we agreed to set up a meeting. Imagine my surprise when Ron Hope showed up. He offered me a lucrative contract to take possession of certain farms throughout Freestar Space. The credits were good, but yeah, getting some payback was the real reward. Don't bother. I'm gonna make this easy for you, deputy. I'm gonna die the way I lived. Weapon in hand, no compromise, no fear. But first, here, take this. Use it to cut out the weakness rotting at the heart of the Freestar Collective. When the next war comes, <laughs> and it will come, the Collective needs to be strong. Now my unit's waiting for me, and I'm gonna report for duty one last time. Goodbye, Deputy. Some ambitious quotas. And you met everyone. Well, good to see you again. Well, I've just received a report from the Marshal about your progress. He said you had a promising lead on the mercenaries who stole my ship. I trust you're here with good news. Did you now? Don't keep me in suspense. The disgraced war hero who went to prison and you actually believed him? I see. <laughs> I'm impressed, deputy. It's clear you have a bright future ahead of you. What's going on? What is this about, Mr. Hope? Nothing that concerns you, Birgit. In fact, why don't you make yourself scarce? I think I'd like to hear what the deputy has to say. Well, I can see you're upset. Allow me to explain. And you'll see that there were very good reasons for what I had to do. The truth is, we've been falling behind the competition. <laughs> Significantly so. We needed solutions. A few years ago, I began to diversify. We started to research chemicals, fuel, those sort of things. We developed an experimental fertilizer. <sighs> And it failed utterly. It wiped out entire crops. I was prepared to write the whole thing off. When we made a discovery that changed everything, turns out our fertilizer was transforming the soil, bolstering its mineral content tenfold. We donated the fertilizer to select homesteads. 
and let the farmers do the work. And when the time was right, we cleared the farm and brought in machinery to harvest the mineral-rich soil. The reduction in labor and materials costs sent my profits soaring. Look around you. Everyone in this building, in this town, is depending on me. I provide the jobs that put food on their tables, clothes on their backs, and roofs over their heads. The fact is, the business hasn't been doing well lately. Without drastic action, cuts would become unavoidable. These people work hard for me, and they trust me to do the same in return. I cannot, I will not let them down. I never intended for anyone to be hurt. I told Hull to buy the land, not take it by force. Unfortunately, farmers can be stubborn folk, and I couldn't risk any witnesses. I can't believe what I'm hearing. How could you do something so... so awful to innocent people? To families? Not another word out of you, Birgit! I can take your job. And more. We'll discuss this later. In any case, I suppose the gig is up. I give you my word that I'll call off the operation and... Return the land to its rightful owners. You're right. Yeah. Those families deserve to be compensated for the uh, inconvenience. Hmm, well, uh, perhaps a discount on their next purchase from Hope Tech. With that resolved, let's talk about you. As a member of the Council of Governors, I'm authorized to award you a substantial bonus. And of course, we'll both agree to forget about my little cost-cutting endeavor. Well, let's not be too hasty, deputy. There's something else you need to consider. I'll do what's necessary to protect my company and my employees. If you tell anyone about this, you're risking their livelihoods. Do you really want to put all these people out of work and make their families suffer? Well, I'm afraid there's no avoiding it. The past can't be changed. But the future is very much in your hands, Deputy. You put me away, and this company will fall apart. You have destroyed far more lives than I did. I'll make myself very plain. I won't let you jeopardize my reputation. This company, or the people who work for me. If that means you suffer an unfortunate incident at the hands of my security personnel, so be it. I'm important. You're nothing. You're not actually threatening to attack a Freestar Ranger, are you? Such a shame to see a promising career cut so tragically short.
tried to have you killed. I don't understand. Mr. Hope always seemed like such a good person. But everything he said about the farmers and hiring those mercenaries? It was so awful. No, you're wrong. That's not all he was. He always looked out for us, for his employees. No, of course not. But there was more to him than that. He had a genuinely good side, a caring side. And now he's... You. You killed him. Nobody should ever want that. Especially when it means killing someone who meant so much to so many people. <sighs> what happens to us now? That's... That would be Elana. Elana Nwankwo. She seems pretty capable. Maybe... Maybe we'll be okay after all. I guess we'll have to figure things out. Find a path forward. Hey, deputy. Late one night, Annie Wilcox tried to arrest me for public... Good to see you back safe, deputy. What's the word on the mech factory? Were the mercenaries hiding out there? Damn, you've got guts of steel. Did you find out why the first was taking over farms? What? Ron Hope? That's one hell of an accusation, Deputy. Are you really that surprised? Hope's always had a reputation as a man who'd do anything to succeed. He's on the damn council, Emma. So he can make laws favorable to his business interests. Sure, he's known to look after his people, but do you really think he gives a damn about some farmers on Montara Luna? Did Hope explain his motives at all? That has a familiar ring to it. I recall hearing about some Hope Tech initiative to help farmers. At the time, I just figured it was a PR stunt. Seems a little more sinister now. Please, tell me you've got some evidence to back up these extraordinary claims. All right, let's see what you've got. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, this is pretty damning. Especially this last bit about destroying the slate. And you confronted Hope about this? Sounds like his pride got the best of him. Damn. This is going to send shockwaves throughout the Free Star Collective. If the people can't trust their leaders, anarchy could follow. Have a little faith, Daniel. We're not the United Colonies. One bad apple won't spoil the whole damn barrel. Easy for you to say. You ain't the Marshal. Not yet, but you ain't gonna live forever, old man. While we've got you here, there's one last piece of business to take care of. Emma, would you please? With pleasure, Marshal. When you first joined us, I told you that you'd undergo an evaluation process. There's one thing left to do. A simple question. Do you feel ready to wear the badge of a full-fledged Freestar Ranger? In that case, I won't hold you back any longer. Marshal, I approve the deputy for advancement to the rank of Ranger. Thank you, Ranger Wilcox. In your time serving as a deputy, you've shown exceptional courage, fearless tenacity, and a high regard for the safety of our citizens. By the authority granted to me by the Council of Governors, I hereby promote you to the rank of Ranger. Here's your badge. Wear it with 
pride. But don't forget the solemn responsibility it represents. I know you will, Ranger. Let's hear it for our new Ranger. Woo! Uh, Way to go! Congratulations! Welcome to the rock, I guess. Welcome to Ryujin Industries. Can I help you? You must be one of the candidates that Imogene Salzo is interviewing today. Her office is down the hallway to my left. Take another left at the conference room, follow it around to the right and up a small flight of stairs. Then take a left and keep heading that way until you see her office. Sounds like a maze, right? So if you want me to walk you back there or have any questions, just let me know. And hopefully I have some answers. Oh wow, you're serious? Well, Ryujin is the tech industry leader in the settled systems, mostly known for neuroamps which exploded on the scene about 15 years ago. Other than that, our products include operating systems, security, various quality of life improvements for the home. We're like a full package. If you really want more info, I'd recommend reading up at one of the kiosks. They've got this company's entire history listed. At least the history they want you to know. Good. Best not keep Imogene waiting too long. And the offer still stands if you need someone to show you the way. Great. Well, good luck then. I'm sure I'll see you on your way out. I better do this right. I don't want Yuko breathing down my neck about it. Can I help you? I hope you're more prepared than the last one. Have a seat. Just waiting on you. All right, just to get a few things straight here, I'm Imogen Salzo, Senior Operations Specialist here at Ryujin Industries. 
I don't normally do this, but my counterpart Yuko is indisposed at the moment, so here I am. We're looking for someone to fill an entry-level administrative position. Apparently, our algorithm has failed us and believes you to be a decent match. Which I'll take up with our technicians later. So, let's get this over with. Why do you want to work for Ryujin Industries? It's always nice to see the local residents take an interest in us. Why do you consider yourself qualified for a job like this? I can't help but wonder if that's why you're here today and not behind bars, considering your track record. And yes, of course we know you have one. Yuko's algorithm at least hasn't failed us there. Your past is not a concern, for now. Just know that we have ways of keeping an eye on you around here. How motivated are you to succeed? All in, huh? At least that's an attitude we can work with here. And finally, my last question. If you worked here for five years, what role would you see yourself in? Full disclosure? It's all about making deals with the right people around here. You put those skills of yours to good use and choose the right sides, you probably won't be running the place, but you'll be right next to the one who does. So look, since there's a million other things I'd rather be doing than this, not to mention that this isn't even my job, you're hired. On a probationary period? Of course. First order. There's a meeting starting soon, and I need you to pick up the coffee order at Terra Brew. Fairly easy, so you shouldn't be able to screw it up. If there's a line, skip it. Tell them you're here for Imogene Salzo, and you should get served right away. I'd hate to be on Miss Salzo's back. Maybe if I move to the Raleigh Hotel, that will cost more. Hi! Hello. Thanks for Hello. choosing Terra Oh, the Ryujin Order. You must be new. What happened to Tomo? Did he finally get that- I got fired is what happened. And this... is the soulless suit they got to replace me. Tomo, I'm sorry. I know how hard you were working for that promotion. Four years behind a desk. Getting coffee, kissing up to that high and mighty Ularu Chen just to get replaced by this nobody? <sighs> Hearing that ad should have been the first sign they were going to get rid of me. I bet Ularu was just waiting for the moment to hire you. And now that I've been terminated, it's only a matter of time before they send you after me. So I'm taking matters into my own hands! Believe me, it's either you or me! You wanna talk? <laughs> I'll tell you what! You get one chance to prove you deserve this job! Change my mind, and I'll walk away! Fail? <laughs> and I think you know where this is headed. No, no, I, I have to do this. You don't understand. You, you can't be that good. Not yet. Look, at some point, Ular really will send you after me. Just, just promise me you'll remember this. That, that uh, when I came after you, I gave you the chance to talk me down. Let's just say, Ryujin doesn't like loose ends. Chen fired me, and now she's gonna see me as a liability. And that's why it's just a matter of time before our paths cross again, okay? And when they do, 
I'm just hoping you'll listen to me. Like I listen to you. You're either one of the few good people in Neon, or you already know a thing or two about leverage. Just don't make me regret this. Hey, no worries on anyone calling security here. Take it from me, Ryujin will handle any drama that may come from this. You'll want to be sure to report it to them. Yes, of course. Here it is. Oh, and please let Mr. Cho know that we did have the recommended maintenance done. I triple-checked the grind myself, and a mistake like that will never happen again. that coffee is still hot considering the time it took you to get it. You either need to learn this city or how to deal with distractions. So, what was the holdup? Personal. Huh. I suppose that's one way to put it. I know that Tomohigashi, an ex-employee of ours, accosted you at the Terra Brew, and before you get any ideas, no, the barista didn't sell you out. Ryujin has enough connections in Neon that an incident like this would never slip by. Deception aside, some of us are impressed by how you handled the situation and would like to try you out in a different role at the company. And since Yuko isn't here to object, your new position starts right now. So, congratulations, you've been promoted. Not bad for your first day, right? Well, they do say it's healthy to have goals. So who am I to crush that with reality? I'm promoting you to Junior Operative. The position is a bit more complicated and completely confidential. Your main duty is to add influence when necessary to ensure success of the business. Any questions so far? In any case where a threat to success is established, one of us is sent out to create a more desired outcome. This may be through a conversation or presenting some new information. It's all very situational, as you'll soon see. Really? Well, this transition may be easier than I thought. Now, let's get that coffee delivered. I'll gladly take mine. And since Yuko's still a no-show, feel free to keep hers. The other recipients are eagerly waiting for you in the conference room. Ah, coffee. You'd think we'd want to support our own subsidiary and get tranquility more often, but Terrabrew it is. Terrabrew would be a substantial purchase, but we fully intend to develop the Tranquility brand. Current projections are set to surpass Terrabrew within the next five years. Tea talk aside, allow me to introduce myself. I'm Lyndon Calderi, Chief Financial Officer. I'll be the one deducting expenses from your pay every time you manage to screw up. Which, hopefully, won't be often. We'll see. We've yet to have an operative with a perfect record. This introduction was... not annoying. I hope our future encounters are as productive. <sighs> Just what I needed. Imogene said she hired someone new. I'm Genevieve, Head of Marketing and Public Relations. Uh, me and an entire department at my back. Anyway, it's good to put a face to the new operative. The only question now is how much work are you going to be? <laughs> yeah, <sighs> that's what they all say. Just know that one screw up for you means a lot of overtime and sleepless nights for me and my team. So any precautions you can take will be greatly appreciated.
So, fetching coffee one minute, and junior operative the next. Camden Cho, supply chain manager for Ryujin. We won't work together much, but as part of the same department, hopefully I'll be seeing you around. Yeah, it's always nice to fit names to faces. And we rarely see most of the operatives around here. Anyway, welcome to the team. Oh, and just a heads up, people in your position don't typically see the brighter side of Ryujin Industries. But rest assured, this is a great company, and the work we do goes toward benefiting millions. Well, NeuroAMPs for one. They aid in mental illness, confidence boosting, and focus. Drone robots for maintenance and security, tranquility for relaxation, Arboron for protection. Your work only helps us improve and expand upon these products that so many people love and benefit from. Please do. It's easy to get wrapped up in the bad if that's all you see. Of course, you'll be forming your own opinions as you go. Just keep an open mind. Oh, and thanks for the coffee. Coffee, finally. Well, let's have a look at you. If only pleasure was the word for it. I'm Alexis Price, head of the legal department here, and I'll be direct. Any legal troubles you cause as an operative, witnesses, getting arrested, are my troubles. So steer clear of law enforcement. We may have connections with Administrator Bayou and the Free Star Rangers, but they aren't the ones I prefer to abuse. For one, our connections with Bayou automatically grant us a slight connection with the Rangers. He has some amount of influence with his seat on the Council of Governors. But our strongest connection is local, with Ranger Price. Yes, you have quite the history with the Free Star Rangers yourself. Which is why I hope you won't be an issue. Let's hope your best is good enough. I hope you enjoyed your little meet and greet. I thought you'd like to know the execs who you'll be impacting while on the job. I can only imagine. Now that you've met a few of the execs, let's get you started. We've reason to believe that our friends at Keltcorp are trying to hack into our R&D server, since we're both competing for a contract right now. I suppose an outsider might think that. But we'd prefer to handle incursions like this in-house. We can't allow them to win the contract, nor can we allow the action to go unpunished. I'll be giving you a data slate with a file that you'll need to upload through one of their computers. Remember, this is confidential. We can't have anyone at Keltcorp getting suspicious. When all is said and done, it should be as if you were never there. Here's the data slate. Good luck. Anastas has run into some trouble. Word to the wise, you don't want a piece of that. We also sell a
What? I'm working here. What do you want to do for the brake litter? I don't know, but I gotta get out of here. It's been non-stop interruptions since this morning, and I'm not spending another break at my desk listening to Cody eat with his mouth open. I'm going to Terrabrew right now. Yeah? I'll go with you. We can pick up an extra for Chloe if she asks. You're coming with us. We'll be taking any contraband and stolen property you have on you. But you're going to need more supporting evidence. Imogene's a stickler for details. Well, look who survived their first assignment. How'd it go? Anything to report? I, I heard you made quite the scene in the Trade Tower. Something I explicitly told you we wanted to avoid. If you recall, setbacks mean a lot of things for a lot of people. Payoffs, cover stories, cleanup crews. You get my drift. The cleaner your work, the more intact your payments stay. I'm sure you understand. Lucky for you, there'll be no docks in pay today. Just try to be more careful in the future. Exactly. In the meantime, I'll make sure that slate is properly disposed of. So, now that we know you're capable of handling some light cyber mischief, let's try your hand at a little uh, framing. And I'd argue that arts and crafts is exactly what we do here, just on a much higher level. One of our subsidiaries, Arboron, is currently competing for a contract against Laredo. Now, the buyer likes to keep their associations clean, and will be sending a representative to Laredo in Aquila City for an evaluation. We just need you to visit their office first, and accidentally leave behind some incriminating evidence against their company. Good. This one should be easy to pull off. Laredo has their own building, unlike Keltcorp, so at least there's only a single layer of security to deal with. Here's the slate we need you to plant. It holds confidential files that'll cast the perfect negative light on our friends at Laredo. Now, get going. Understood. Everyone to take care of any leeches on their ships. Sure, have it. Is something amiss? Yeah, what is it? Forgive me for pulling you aside again, but, well. There's so much to process right now. The Emissary, the Hunter, the Unity, an entire multiverse. I can't even begin to wrap my head around it all. I don't know where to begin. The fact that we are the origin of the Starborn. Humans literally reborn by entering the Unity. The same, yet different. <laughs> it's unbelievable. I feel like most of the knowledge we've amassed in the last few centuries about the universe has just been made obsolete. Yes, that's exactly right. Humans are clearly a victim of their own success. 
We've been pushing further and further outwards from our home, when we should have spent more time being prepared for the consequences. Our current problem relates closely to the nature of humans as a species. This rushed curiosity has led us to enter the Unity and become Starborn. Well, look what's happening right now. Here we are, caught in the middle of some sort of needlessly violent crusade between the Hunter and the Emissary. You'd think that a technologically advanced society would have evolved past petty squabbling over something like the artifacts. It almost makes me wonder if entering the Unity has done them more harm than good. No, no, that's not it at all. When you pass into whatever lies beyond, we don't know what will become of you. Will you remember your life as you knew it? Will the hunger to collect the artifacts consume your life like it's clearly consumed the Starborn? Of course not. I am, and always will be, an explorer at heart. My concern is how fundamental the change will be to ourselves as people. We don't even know if you'll remember anything about this conversation. I'm worried what that will mean between us. This goes well beyond the boundaries of simple exploration. As the Chair of Constellation, I want all of us to have this opportunity to explore the Unity. It would be the pinnacle exploration of our lives. However, after we enter the Unity, we'll likely evolve. You and I, as we stand here right now, will essentially cease to exist. You're a respected colleague and I wouldn't want to lose you. I'm not sure. I'm guessing based on what we've learned. Even if I accompany you into the Unity, the question still remains. Would we know each other anymore? Even if we did, would we care? Part of what I do as Chair of Constellation is weigh the costs of our expeditions. And this one... Oh, the cost is extremely high. I know. Damn it. I know. Listen. I realize nothing that I say is ever going to change your mind or diminish the enticement of this incredible opportunity. All I ask is that you research the facts before you blindly stumble off into the unknown. I... I don't know if I'm ready to make that leap, but knowing we'd be doing it hand in hand would certainly make it more comforting. Well, I suppose I've ruined the moment again, haven't I? <laughs> I'm getting quite good at that lately. I'll let you get back to whatever you were doing. Just think what we discussed. I know I will. When you have a few moments, there's something I'd like to discuss. Ron Hope was a real piece of work, wasn't he? Despicable is too kind a word. He held innocent people with little regard, treating their lives like numbers on a balance sheet. It's an absolute disgrace. Ah, <sighs> I'm relieved to hear you say that. Letting him off the hook would have been a terrible injustice.
Had you taken the money, this would have been a very different conversation. I'm proud of you. It took a lot of integrity to say no to that offer. Some of them will, and some of them won't. What happens to them isn't your fault. It's Ron Hope's. Well, I think I've lectured you enough. Thanks for taking the time to listen to me. Do you need me for something? Sorry to pull you aside like this, but I wanted to take a moment to congratulate you. Taking those steps to eradicate the Terramorph threat is essential to the safety of every living thing in the settled systems. You should be proud. Yes, exactly. I'm glad you treated the situation with the urgency it deserved. I only wish that the United Colonies chose to exterminate the Terramorphs with the experimental microbe, instead of choosing this ridiculous Asili solution. Apparently, their decision was based on your recommendation. <sighs> that was a risky choice you've made. Then you were mistaken. I'm sorry, but I believe that your logic is flawed. The Asili solution will take far too long. Years, perhaps even decades. By then, humankind could be in serious danger. Well, I'm disappointed that you didn't trust the science. Unfortunately, locking away the Lazarus plant instead of eliminating it adds to the risk. Anything that accelerates the Terramorph life cycle should have been completely removed from the equation. Why take the chance? You haven't let me down. You've simply given me cause for concern. I'll tell you what. Let's put this past us, shall we? I'm sure everything will work out in the end. I'm sorry if I've said anything that jeopardizes our working relationship. Can I help? No, it's fine. Go ahead. Very well. Next. Yes, yes, absolutely. Something you need? I thought you'd never ask. Here. Maybe another time. can't be that bad, can it? So we had to clean up the graffiti on the range again. Why don't we just close it down? It's not like it gets much use. I need some place to put the prototypes through their paces. It stays. But you know, stretch trash will come back. Lord, worse. Let them. A few beer bottles and graffiti is the least Yes, hey, if you're looking to browse, you're in the wrong spot.
let's uh, stay away from Epside. The locals there don't exactly appreciate the tourists. Oh, I can't imagine being forced to spend my days doing menial work in an office like this instead of exploring the stars on the bridge of a spacecraft. I was hoping you'd show up soon. Is it done? Don't get too comfortable. Those who do usually don't last long in this field. Now, I think it's time to examine a different set of skills. It's a decent start, but we'll see. Your next assignment is to find the security chief and use some creative thinking to obtain their security keycard. And when I say creative, I don't mean with a weapon. Either look the part and be persuasive, or be quick with your hands. Good luck. I'm sure you'll be able to get that keycard without incident. Just remember, if anything does happen, it's up to you to bail yourself out. Welcome to the Ryujin. Newer amps mostly. Same as always. Have a good one. I don't want to hear any complaints. I can't believe Ron Hope's dead. Keep I remember meeting Ron Hope once. Idealistic and perhaps a bit of a dreamer. <laughs> but you have to admire what he's accomplished. Take him down! Loitering. Now move it. Can I help you? Sure, sure. Let me get right on that. If it's an emergency, sounds like you need to make time for those details. I think you're under the wrong impression here. I'm not handing over this card. Easy. We're just talking, right? Here's the card. Just make sure you give it back when you're done. I heard you'd exercise that creative license, only not the way I'd hoped. Got that key card for me? Now we're talking. Not bad for a novice. Well, except for your little incident, that'll cost you. Incidents aside, I think you're ready to kick things up a notch, and your timing couldn't be better. We'll soon find out, won't we? This next assignment requires a bit more discretion for two reasons. First, you'll be dealing with high-level executives, and second, you'll be in the Astra Lounge here in Neon. Discretion and the Trade Tower in Neon don't exactly go hand in hand. The assignment is pretty easy. 
Our techs failed to uncover a potential deal between Infinity LTD and Quantum Synergies. Your job is to make sure that deal fails. Infinity LTD is one of our aspiring competitors. They have products in several similar fields, ships and neuroamps being the exception. Quantum Synergies specializes in ship operating software. We don't consider them a major competitor since their product line is so narrow. If the two are meeting to work out a contract, that tells us Infinity must be looking to get into the ship business. And we'd like to delay that, if we can. That's what we're hoping for. You'll be speaking with Quantum Synergy's executive director, Zola Adisa, and their financial manager, Arthur Cruz. I'll be giving you a dossier on both. I strongly suggest you read them for talking points. I suppose I can give you a brief rundown. We'll start with Zola. Zola is a born and bred executive, it runs in the family, so she's highly accustomed to an upper-class lifestyle. She's a narcissist who's also obsessed with public perception, both of her and quantum synergies. She wants to be associated with the latest and greatest, so she's drawn to innovation and quality. She's considered it, but she's next in line to be CEO over at Quantum. If she came here, she'd have to deal with stiff competition. As for her talking points, the key things to remember are, Infinity is the cheap version of Ryujin. They're a follower, not a leader, and they lack any sense of clear vision. Infinity LTD's strategy to make money is to cut cost on quality. You can compare any one of our products to theirs and see it almost instantly. Low-grade synthetics, flimsy thin materials, high energy usage, they issue at least one or two recalls a year. Just remember, you can refer to the dossier at any time as a refresher. Now, on to Arthur Cruz. Arthur is a self-made man, and he prides himself on that. He's a full package, having both an extremely good knack for numbers and knowing how to talk to people. As Quantum Synergy's financial manager, he's all about driving profit with as little risk as possible. He makes decisions based on facts and heavily researched trends. It sounds like the two of you could really hit it off. Arthur's a great talker, but even the best can lose an audience when finance is the topic. Talking points for Arthur are aimed at steering him toward Ryujin over Infinity LTD. Ryujin's profits are 25.7% higher than Infinity's, even with a superior quality product. Infinity's profits are fabricated. They're one audit away from ruin. We have a history of being financially secure that's never wavered. And we have the legal and marketing teams to handle anything that might threaten that. Sounds like you're ready then. I'd still highly recommend reading the dossiers, though. Sometimes bullet-pointed statements can stick out in minds easier than conversation. Exactly. Those lines are most likely to sway Zola and Arthur away from Infinity, not to mention give them a gentle nudge in our direction. The Infinity LTD rep is Nina Hart. I'll also be giving you an altered version of her presentation to swap out with the original. We've changed several figures, just enough to cause sufficient confusion throughout their meeting. Whenever executives are faced with numbers that don't properly match up, any faith they may have had will falter. Finally, I recommend dressing appropriately, so I've taken the liberty of having a suit made for you. We need absolute discretion on this one. I don't want any SSNN broadcasts about murder in the Astral Lounge. Got it? I bet you are. Just remember to keep a low profile. Don't let the Astral Lounge distract you too much.
As technicians, we handle prep and post -op. and Bayou hasn't let this place slip a single notch. The man knows how to run a business. Well, I take that as a compliment. Coming from someone as well-dressed as yourself, you either got great taste or great connections. Maybe even both. Tell me, you don't happen to work for Infinity LTD, do you? Got something against Infinity, I take it. I'd love to hear your reasons why. That's an awfully big claim to make. You'd have to have some inside details on their operation. However, it does match some of my own research that I've been conducting into their finances. Aren't you the resourceful one? That number tracks with the insider details I've been getting. Hmm, interesting. Look. It was nice meeting you, and I quite enjoyed our little talk. But it sounds like I need to take another look at some data before I head into this presentation of theirs. See you around, and maybe next time I'll be doing business with you. to impress here on business or just out to escape ah same here nothing like a business trip paid in full especially when there is good downtime Ryujin Industries a good guess since we are here in Neon but no Infinity LTD Risky, you say. By all means, enlighten me. Cheap is a word quantum synergy should never be associated with. I believed our team had thoroughly researched infinity. But your comment gives me pause. Their instability was cited as a pain point but one we could deal with as long as we maintained control of all joint projects. However, upheaval always comes with its own series of issues, delays, morale, public perception, and Drexler has yet to prove he can provide the consistency that I would prefer. Perhaps it really is more than I'm willing to undertake. A surprising conversation, and one I would never expect from someone such as yourself. I suppose the old saying, Never judge a book by its cover is appropriate here. It seems I have quite a bit to reconsider now. So it looks like the pleasure aspect of my trip needs to be postponed. Thank you for the insight.
nicely done. Just the person I wanted to see. Well, that wasn't too bad, was it? You're a natural. I'm not just saying that because I hired you. The Astral Lounge can be overwhelming for some, with all its bells and whistles. Tie that in with manipulating people who are the equivalent of their boss's boss, most junior level ops would start to show their cracks. Overall, not bad for your first high profile assignment. You even earned yourself a bonus, which Linden was more than happy to give. That's exceptionally kind of you, Imogene. Don't tell me you forgot already. Our financial guru? They're brilliant with numbers. Also, if you ever want an honest opinion about anything, just ask them. They're honest to a fault, and often give their opinion on something whether you want it or not. It's well deserved. Just keep making me look good and there'll be more where that came from. But no rest for the weary at Ryujin. We've got a decent backlog of assignments and they just keep coming, so I hope you're still good to go. At least this next one will be a break from all the chatter. Your next assignment is to remind the competitor of their place in the corporate food chain. Some call it retaliation. But we like to think of it as tough love. Most corporations live and die by public perception. Trusted products lead to a good reputation, which leads to profits. And like it or not, we're all here for the profits. Your assignment is to plant an arc device. The arc will allow us to frame our competitor for gross negligence and tank the public's perception. You're not wrong. Believe me, we don't take these assignments lightly. They're also one of few that Masako herself needs to sign off on, and only our most trusted operatives receive them. You just need to plant the Ark and avoid detection. Our technicians will handle the rest, and they're instructed to avoid as much harm as possible. I'm not going to say this twice. Get the hell away from me. Hey there. Got an update for me? Good work. Now I can let Masako know how much she'll enjoy watching the news tonight. Now, on to the next, right? Oh, but before I forget, 
The results of your Astral Lounge escapades are in. I'm happy to say that the deal was officially called off. Masako was very pleased with the outcome, so she arranged the bonus through Linden. Apparently you said all the right things when it came to Arthur. Quantum Synergies actually reached out to us to negotiate the potential deal. Why did I have a feeling you'd bring that up? You've still got quite a ways to go, so let's keep it real and get back to basics. You can think of this next assignment as a stepping stone on your way to greatness. In order to stay on top of the market, we have to know what our competition is doing. The next assignment requires a more brute force approach, since the chances of them sharing that information is unlikely. Call it what you want, but it's your job nonetheless. Your target is a prototype schematic for a new engine that Trident Luxury Lines is working on. According to the rumors, it's projected to be 17% more efficient than any engine on the market. The current schematic was sent to their star yard to begin prototyping, so they could be in the office area or the factory floor. You'll find the Trident Luxury Line star yard orbiting Aquila in the Cheyenne system. Remember, same rules apply. Don't get caught and don't make a mess. we're visiting this star yard. It's doubtful any of us have the credits to afford these overpriced vessels. You got some business here? Just the person I wanted to see. You got that schematic? Good work. R&D's been looking forward to this one. I need to deliver this to Vina so she can start the reverse engineering process, but first, Ulara wants to see you. I've upgraded your security level so you can access the executive floor, where her office is. Tell her assistant Maeve you have an appointment. I won't be far behind in case you get lost. A gala at the new Atlantis Free Star. Just step. 
virtue. The craftsmanship, it's unparalleled. Can I help you? Don't cause any trouble. Name an appointment. Confirmed. Ularu is wrapping up a meeting with Genevieve. You can wait here or in the lobby area. I'll let you know when she's ready to see you. I see Imogene Salso is supposed to be with you. I'm right here, Maeve. Good. It should just be a moment. Well, sooner than I thought. Looks like Ularu's ready now. Oh, you know, if they aren't willing, keep out of my way, that leaves us with only one yours. option. God, Ularu. Is that always your response? I don't want another PR mess on my hands. Yes, Viv, because you're too good at your job. There's something I need to talk to no. you about. We can talk details later. My next appointment's here. Fine, but you can break this news to Alexis at our next meeting. Good, you're finally here. The one I've been hearing so much about. I'm Ularu Chen, head of operations here at Ryujin. So tell me, what do you think of your new job so far? In that case, it sounds like our initial impression of you is turning out to be quite accurate. Now, my dear genie here says you've been through the basics of what we do, and pulled off success every time. Five successful standard assignments, and one specialized. Oh, a few incidents here and there, but nothing we can't handle. Right? I happen to have a personal assignment that I'd like to send you on. One that involves meeting up with an outside contact. Genie seems to think you're more than capable of handling it. He's the best operative I've ever hired. <laughs> Let's not forget the only operative you've ever hired. Meeting with outside contacts isn't always as straightforward as your past assignments. Some can be fickle or demanding, so you'll need to decide how to handle them and what decisions to make on the fly. That's exactly the type of operative I want. Someone who doesn't take no for an answer. Your contact is Simon Rychek. He claims to have information on a new project that Infinity LTD is working on. He said it's a game-changer that Ryujin would be especially interested in. So, his asking price is the big thing to consider. Finance will reimburse up to a thousand credits. So, if you have negotiation skills, use them. Simon's been working with us for years, so he'll pose no threat to you. He's paranoid. Which is why I assume he's never been caught. But his information is typically worth it. Now in order to confirm your identity, Simon prefers code phrases. I'll let Genie give you the details on this one because the concept is just beneath me. Simon is into sports, so he enjoys any opportunity to talk about them. At some point he'll casually say, Looks like the Galactic Raiders are the number one pick for the Universal Championship this year. You get to respond with, Razor Derby is the only real sport. Got it? Oh my god, you corporate types never cease to amuse me. Now I feel like I'm trapped in some kind of spy thriller B-movie. You'll find him in Sidonia, so I hope your ship's fueled. Just look for him above the Lux condos in the plaza. You spoke very highly of this one, Genie. Let's hope he doesn't make a liar out of you. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have some things to take care of. Thanks for the vote of confidence. Now you can see. I have something I need to discuss with you. Remember our last conversation, when you told me the artifacts made you feel like raw energy was coursing through your veins? Well, it got me thinking, so I dove into our archives and started looking through Constellation's older journal entries. Just because I wasn't familiar with the experience you described doesn't mean the same might have been true for my predecessor. Really? 
I'm surprised that I haven't. After reading those journals, all of the pleasant memories of my time spent with Aja just started flooding back. Oh yes, absolutely. I, I didn't mean to compare. Those were just... Oh, I don't know. Different times. Aja was the one that taught me the ropes at Constellation and took me under her wing as her protégé. <laughs> now that you mention it, you're probably right. Either way, we logged quite a few interesting discoveries together. Honestly, it wasn't so much what Aja and I discovered in our travels. It was the journey that was memorable. Exactly. For me, it was all about the quieter moments. There was nothing quite like sitting back and watching space bend while listening to Aja spin vivid stories to fill the time. Oh, I find that sort of cozy isolation the best way to really get to know someone. At this point, I'd say you've graduated from protege and moved up the ladder. A bit. You know, all this talk about Aja reminds me that my time with her was a gift. I miss her dearly. No, she retired. Living on Porima 2 now, I think. Come to think of it, if we're ever out that far, perhaps we could pay her a visit and I could make proper introductions. Well, I don't expect you to be a carbon copy of Aja. Just be yourself. You see, it's clear that we share the same hunger to discover what's out there. And that, well, that's what intrigues me about you. I... I don't know if I deserve to be that close to anyone right now. If you knew about the things that I've done, the way my life's unfolded, I think your opinion of me might change. Please, give me some time. I, 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 I have to go. Building Sidonia completely underground was a clever way of... Martian landscape. <laughs> Imagine being cramped down here, choking on the fumes and the dust. No trees, no grass. <sighs> it's depressing. Can't wait to get out of this place. You lost? Or just come to ask an out-of-work miner how his day's going? Ugh. Only good thing worth talking about these days is sports. Speaking of... Looks like the Galactic Raiders are the number one pick for the Universal Championship this year. You're damn right it is. <laughs> I heard they were sending someone new. Nice to see you made it. I have information on a deal being proposed between Infinity LTD and Deimos Stockyards. It's my belief that your employers would be highly interested in the details. So I'm upping my price. It's steep, yes. But that is why I'm also offering a little side job if you can't pay up. Oh, that's a bit of a steep price for the information. 
I think you're overreaching. For this little tidbit? <laughs> Believe me, I know exactly what this is worth. This is what you call negotiating? All right, I'll lower the price. But that's my final offer. Unless you may prefer the side job now? I knew you'd see reason. The information I have is on a deal for something called Project Dominion. I'm giving you two slates. They contain surveillance and interaction data for Stanley McMillan, the Infinity Rep, that I obtained myself. I'm also giving you a third slate because you're going to need to download the files on Project Dominion off his computer yourself. Best guess is it has something to do with <laughs> Infinity getting into the neuro end business. Stanley McMillan seemed to think Ryujin would be the one company threatened by this news. So their entry must involve something big. Getting information is what you people do. I'm just a lowly, yet very well paid informant. Here to point you in the right direction. Nice doing business with you. What the hell are you doing in this dump of a city anyway? You draw the short stick at work or what? Infinity sent me to get Deimos to bite on a deal. He's even got a catchy code name. Project Dominion. Sounds like world domination to me, buddy. I'd buy into that in a heartbeat. Right? I'm telling you, this Project Dominion is the real deal. We ought to be selling this to Inception or Quantum. Hell. You should be in the Astral Lounge making Ryujin Industries beg for that tech. Ha! <laughs> That'd be the greatest irony of them all, but not this baby. Dominion is finally gonna put Infinity first. We'll beat Ryujin at their own game. Deimos makes the majority of the ships for the UC Navy. If you ask me, that's a hell of a lucrative contract. The same. I could really use some help with my computer. You know I'm not your assistant, right? Wait, you're not? I could have sworn... No, sir. I am the company psychologist. Same as last time you asked. Ah, right. I knew that. Uh, keep up the good work. I'm a little busy. Can I help you with something? Oh, in that case, go right ahead. I wouldn't want to be causing any sort of security breach. Uh, how long is this going to take? Great. Use the break. I'll be back in a little bit.
never could get the hang of hacking. I prefer a more direct approach myself. I've been waiting. That took longer than expected. I hope whatever information Simon had was worth it. <laughs> Project Dominion? That can't be right. Give me a moment to run a decryption. Let's see... Got the key, deciphering, and... done. Well, well, well. <laughs> Looks like our friend Simon wasn't joking. Project Dominion isn't an Infinity LTD prototype. It's one of ours. <laughs> they didn't even bother to scrub the name. Meaning someone never thought they'd get caught. Come with me. Masako needs to hear about this. into any restricted areas. What is this about? Who is this? This is our latest junior operative. I sent him on an assignment to rendezvous with an informant. But here's the real news. Infinity LTD has gotten their hands on Project Dominion. Impossible. Not only that, they're trying to sell it under their own name. Of course they are. We need fines to investigate this immediately. Since you found this information, I am trusting you to help investigate. You see, Project Dominion is confidential. It requires a high security clearance to even know it exists. If Infinity LTD has obtained any information on it, that means we have a very well-connected mole within our corporation. Exactly. I want you to go see Dalton Fines, our chief security officer. I'll send him the details. You've brought an enormous security violation to our attention, so I trust your help in any way possible. And thank you. Some operatives may have seized this as an opportunity for extortion. It's good to know your loyalty lies with us. Good, you're here. So, thanks to your work in Sidonia, I'm told someone here has leaked information on Project Dominion to our adversaries at Infinity LTD. A mole within the company means a failing in my department. We're initiating Security Directive Theta, which means a full sweep of every employee in this building, Masako and myself included. We certainly are. Directive Theta has one unique case, and that's Ularu Chen. The Directive calls for a specialized programmer known as Nix to investigate her, but he'll need your assistance for an unusual assignment. 
We don't deal in trust here. Think more in terms of mutual benefit and leverage. And in this case, it's mutual benefit. Nix will be giving you a program to run on Ularu's computer that will pull any data needed to prove her guilty or innocent. Your job is to infiltrate Ryujin Tower as an anonymous outsider in order to run this program. Completely off the books. This means your keycard will be turned off, and the security guards in the building will consider you to be trespassing. At least one of us is. In the meantime, I'll ensure all non-essential employees, Ularu included, have left the building, claiming routine security maintenance. During that time, I'll be unlocking access to the tower's ventilation system, which you can utilize to help avoid detection. I'm also issuing you a disruptor, which should help in avoiding casualties should a worst-case scenario turn up. Ularu doesn't know about Directive Theta, but she'll fully expect a building closure while we investigate. As far as she knows, it's standard procedure, one that she no doubt has already made accommodations for. This is why we're bringing in a third party. She won't be expecting to go up against Neon's best. And it's also why secrecy is of utmost importance. Not even our own security detail can know, in case the information leaks. It concerns me that you don't know. A disruptor is a non-lethal weapon. Our subsidiary, Arboron, makes an excellent one that I'll be issuing you. It will stun your target, giving you a chance to get away. But you'll only have so much time before the effects wear off. Good. No one can know about this, not even our own guards. So stealth will be of utmost importance. You'll meet Nix at Madame Sauvage's place. He knows Directive Theta has been enacted. Don't cause any trouble. The cast... The audience just finished Paul. Pushing everything. Keep your hands to yourself. Because if not, consider this area reserved. Oh yeah, Dalton's little errand runner. I've written up a program just for the occasion, but as Ryujin knows, it's yours for either a price or a favor. Oh, I'm pretty sure it's not. Uh, you know, part of me could find some wiggle room. Uh, Ryujin is my second best long-term client. All right, you win. No wonder Ryujin hired you.
A pleasure, as always. Your job is simple. Just run this little beauty on Ilaro Chen's computer, and the program will take care of the rest. Once you're done, bring the slate back to me at my place. Whatever encryption Ilaro has is bound to take some real work. More than my little setup here can handle. It's nice to see you know more than just sneaking around and talking a good game. Here's the slate. I'll be waiting. Making things harder for yourself. You're not authorized to be here. I'm holding you for trespassing. Nice try, but the building is off limits. You sure didn't get in by any authorized means. Well, if you say so. Look, I'll trust you. But if any of us catch you on another floor, we'll shoot first and ask questions later.
It's messed up when a guy like me is better off than those people carving chasm or working a desk job. So, you made it. Guess Ryujin's security really is slipping. <laughs> Just brimming with confidence, aren't you? But I've seen your work in the Trade Tower, so I'll at least give you some credit. Now, I'll take that program back that I gave you, and let's give the data a look. All of that money at their disposal and a cutting-edge megacorp like Reusion can't prevent a hacker from leeching their data. <laughs> Unbelievable. The program I gave you to run on Ularu's computer basically opens an all-access back door for me. I can see everything and anything, so let's take a look. Ularu has some impressive encryption on her files. Not that I can't crack it, of course. Circumventing protections, running decryption... This should just take a moment now. Damn, I'm good. That went faster than I thought. I'm saving several files to a slate for Dalton, including access history and anything related to Project Dominion. Adding in new encryption for him as well, so he's the only one that can view these. And done. You're all set. I've got the new encrypted slate. Let me tell you, it looks like fun times ahead for Ryujin. Technically, I'm not supposed to look, but it's kind of hard to not see what's going on while running all my software. Since you came through on your end, let's just say that slate isn't going to paint the best picture for Ms. Imogene Sauzo. But bear in mind, you're dealing with some pretty talented people when it comes to falsifying information. I can be sure because I know my business. But like anything, evidence alone can't tell the full story. The rest is up to you and Dalton to piece together. And don't be too sure about that. Imogene was practically raised in the corporate underworld. I'd almost guarantee there's intent behind everything she does. Here's the slate. As usual, always a pleasure doing business with Ryujin. Is it done? I hope you realize what your negligence has cost this company. Your orders were to incapacitate or evade security, not go on a killing spree. Touche. At least we've established we're both failures. Now, let's see what sort of data was worth the lives you took. Yeah. was possible, but someone's been accessing Ularu's files remotely. It's quite a complicated trace, too. I'm impressed Nix was able to track all of this. Damn. And there's our culprit. Imogene Salzo, senior operations specialist, and one of the few I had in mind who could pull this off. Well, she has the means and access. 
But things are rarely so cut and dry. Imogene? Hmm, she doesn't seem the type. But maybe that's her tactic. If she had me thinking that way, perhaps it proves that she's a master manipulator. Well, before we make any harsh decisions, I'll need to question her myself. I want you to head to her office and escort her here. We have to make sure she doesn't try anything before I have a chance to speak with her. I just want to avoid a scene. Sending you keeps the rumor mill at bay. Good. When you're dealing with corporate workers, discerning the truth from the lies is the hardest part. I've got my eye on you. This could be the most important thing. Can I help you? I'm sure you can tell by now. She isn't here. Which is a shame, since I have several documents I need her to sign off on. She's always been the master of avoiding desk work. I'm not even sure that's any business of yours. But I do enjoy keeping close tabs on my counterpart. Dare I ask why you need to know? Yeah, no thanks. Getting information out of Dalton is like talking to a wall. Besides, speculation is far more fun. I have Imogene's last location at Frankie's Grab and Go, which we all know is a front for the Sioka Syndicate. You'll want to get executive sign-off if you plan on chasing after her. I'd say Dalton is your best bet. Perhaps we need to get Dalton's permission to relieve ourselves as well. Good lord, this corporation keeps you on a short leash? I forgot you're familiar with Neon and Bayou's intricate web of connections. I suppose if you want to be efficient, you could bypass Dalton and go straight to Bayou. You're just cutting out the middleman, right? Word of advice. If you're planning on forgoing authorization and just tiptoeing your way to Imogene, park your friend at the door. Two's a crowd if you're trying to lay low. Good luck finding Imogene. Oh, and if you do catch up with her, be sure to let her know I had everything to do with it. I don't recall sending for anyone. What do you want? And just why would I grant that kind of permission to you? As long as it doesn't involve the Syndicate members themselves... I'll tell you what. I'll make sure the Syndicate lets you in hassle-free. Provided you do a little something for me. And what mutual benefit would that be? Hmm. I could always use a little more leverage when it comes to Ryujin. All right. You talk a good game. And I suppose if we're looking at a mutually beneficial situation, there's no reason for me not to allow such a small favor. Check in with Ms. Moore at Frankie's. I'll send word along that you're to be expected, so she shouldn't give you any trouble. Fair warning, the Syndicate should let you search any common areas, but if anyone catches you snooping around private quarters, I'll just say, 
be prepared for some hostilities. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Bad part of town, buddy. I'm gonna do you a favor. Head back to Bayou Plaza before the Disciples get you. A gang. Worst gang there is. They'll stab you for kicks, taking bets on how long you squeal before you bleed out. And that's not a hyper whatchamacallit. They seriously did that. <laughs> Poor Ted. Hey, it's your ass not mine on the line. Whole area's gone to hell. Us crate rats used to think the Ebside strikers were awful, with all the muggings and shakedowns, but now that they're on the ropes, kinda wish they weren't just holed up in Madame Sauvages. Streets are getting bad. Real bad. Well, you'll find them at Madame Sauvages. They're always holding auditions, as they call it. Looking for new blood. So, for being so helpful, a chance for a donation. Come on, might be saving my life. What with the disciples and all? I have a heart. I can't blame a fellow for trying, right? I'm a little busy right now. Bet I have credits to spend. You lost, kiddo? Oh, so you're the one getting special treatment. Don't look like much to me. I've got one rule for you in there, so it shouldn't be hard to remember. Third floor is off limits. They catch you snooping around, and it's open season. Don't worry. She wouldn't be allowed up there either. For the record, I'm only granting you access because I have to. You'll find that young lady you're looking for holed up in a room almost straight ahead. Just remember to keep your eyes on the prize. The less you consider this an open house, the better. I'm watching you. You try anything, you're dead. No funny business. Well, this amount of firepower is a bit of overkill, wouldn't you say? I figured our paths would cross sooner or later. Not that I thought I was safe, but... I never expected anyone to just slip by all the Syndicate here. I had a feeling you'd be the one to come after me. I know this doesn't look good, but I had no choice. Ularu set me up. Yes, I've been acting as a double agent, but because she ordered me to. The assignment was meant to deceive, not benefit. And Project Dominion is way above my pay grade. It'd be impossible for me to deliver it. At least, intentionally. You're trusting me on this one. 
huh, not to cast doubt on myself, but I fully expected to push my persuasion skills to the limit. I can see Genevieve and Alexis cringing over those words. If you live in Neon long enough, it's not a surprise you'd start to see the darker side. This slate holds the evidence to prove my innocence. I just need you to make sure Dalton sees it. I was hoping you would. I'm still going to lay low until I hear the coast is clear. As long as Ularu still thinks I'm on the run, she'll remain confident that her plan is working. And I know you don't hear it much around the office, but thanks. So Ularu is the actual culprit. That complicates things. We're going to have to proceed very carefully, or else Dalton might send someone after us. Well, look who's back. Dalton's gonna lose it when he finds out you went to the Syndicate without talking to him. True. Dalton couldn't argue with that. At least he had the good sense to speak to Bayou. So tell me, what did you find out? Inside the Syndicate? That area's off limits, and I think we both know why. Imogene knew exactly what she was doing when she went there. Fine. Fine? I won't push. Enjoy your time with Dalton. It'll all trickle back to me sooner or later. out of my way and I'll keep out of Is there something I can help you with? All right. This sounds like a closed door conversation. Just a moment. Shutting the door and engaging locks. <sighs> there. Now, is this some sort of joke? I thought Dalton was conducting a real investigation. And just where is this absurd notion coming from? Is this a game? I wasn't aware. That would only be the case if your accusation held any merit. Oh, sure. And I just take your word for it. I don't think so. It is a horrible thing when such well-made plans can't be shared. Looks like someone's been brushing up on their corporate skills. Fine. Since it's just you and me here, I'll come clean. I leaked Project Dominion to Infinity LTD, but I'm no mole. <laughs> the only traitor to speak of here is Masako. You see, I'm not a mole. I'm an opportunist. And no one is more loyal to Ryujin than I am. Masako, on the other hand, is losing her touch. Ryujin needs strong leadership for what lies ahead. A CEO who can make the hard decisions. Back then, hard decisions were all about screwing people over and white-collar crime. Today, they're more about ensuring success by any means necessary. So, now that you know, it's time to see how good you are at making hard decisions. With your help, I can take down Masako and make the credits worth your while. So whose side are you on? Masako's 
or Ryujin's. I'm disappointed in you, Op. And here I thought you had a good eye for opportunity. Go ahead. I guarantee any evidence you have is circumstantial at best. I've created the perfect scapegoat in Imogene. It'd be your word against mine, and I'm pretty sure the odds are in my favor. We'll see about that. They know I'm Remember, don't let her out of your sight once you find her. So, you're finally back. With no sign of Imogene. And here I thought sending you after her would be a simple task. I suppose you suddenly have all the facts now. This explanation better be good. I have a mind to fire you just for that comment. I find it hard to believe Ularu would take the chance to incriminate herself. But if this slate provides indisputable evidence to corroborate your story, well, that's enough proof for me. It will be a relief to reinstate Imogene as well. Now, I need to undertake the laborious task of writing up a report to summarize all of this. In the meantime, Masako has requested your presence in R&D. She wants you to meet her in Vinakara's office. Just take the elevator down to research and development. You'll find Dr. Kara's office to your left as you enter the floor. Once I've examined this evidence, I may need your help in moving forward. And not a word about this to anyone. I'll present what I have to the board once I've completed a full report. any trouble. This deal could be huge for my company. Don't wander into any restricted areas. I need that rothesite if we want to complete the Neuroam. I'm just concerned. Good. You're here. Station was wiped out it's time to put a plan in something. motion to take full control of this situation with Infinity LTD. In due time, we don't know to what extent Infinity has taken the current NeuroAmp schematics, so our top priority is completing our own. Let me introduce you to Vina Kalra, Head of Research and Development. She'll give you the initial details. Yes, details. You see, the internal NeuroAmp is supposed to consist of two parts. The first part, the part Infinity stole, handles the manipulative effects. The second part is a shielding modification, designed to protect the user against other Neuroamp... users. Oh yeah, marketing and finance wouldn't have it any other way. No one wants their greatest asset used against them. Once Vina can complete the internal Neuroamp and shielding mod, the plan is to outfit you with both and have you infiltrate Infinity LTD. We can't risk the assignment until we know your mind has the necessary protection. I think implanting that device into your head is a mistake. But it's your choice, not mine. We expect our employees to do whatever it takes to ensure Ryujin's success. Consider this an opportunity, not a risk. Besides, you're in good hands with Vina. As long as you work for us, you don't have a choice. I'm sure I don't have to remind you where the door is if you're not capable of handling this task. You really don't have anything to worry about. The procedure is simple and safe, it's just a matter of getting the right materials. 
The final kink in both designs was finding compatible materials to use for conductivity that the human body wouldn't reject. I finally created the perfect alloy, but it requires a newly discovered refined element called rothesite. Which is where I come in. We have a confidential contract with Consolidated Mining to gather, refine, and ship the rothesite straight to us. Their last shipment is late, and neither we nor Consolidated Mining have had any communication with the Karenay Station. Correct. The updates have been regular up until now. Last we heard, the shipment was ahead of schedule. We need you to head out there, secure the shipment, and bring it back here so Vina can complete her prototype. And I want to know what happened. We need to take any safety measures to make sure this doesn't happen again. Good. Feel free to deal with any resistance however you see fit. The mining station is CM Station RC-1. It's on a moon called Karen A-3A in the Karen A system. The shipment should be in the research and control tower, but the outside doors are kept locked down. This keycard will let you enter the mines so you can access the tower from the inside. Good luck. We can't lose that shipment. Don't worry, we'll figure it out and get that shipment back.
discuss with you. Hey there. This area's off limits, authorized personnel only. Yeah, I bet you do. Yeah, yeah, okay, I get it. Fine, I'll issue you an access card. Infinity better get it together. Sean, I don't want to go over this again. I'm tired, all right? Just not today. Hey, who let you in here? This is a restricted area. In that case, you'll want to speak to Dr. Lane. We better get that approval soon. Excuse me, but this is a restricted area. You need to leave. Uh, your timing could be better. A little warning next time? I'll just take a moment to check up on my patient. to catch you in the office. Is that my beautiful shipment? You were right about this one, Masako. Looks like it. This should be more than enough. Now, I shall excuse myself and get to work on finalizing this prototype. So, what did you learn about CM Station RC-1? Hm. Lucas must be desperate if he hired them to collect the Rothesite. Were there any survivors? Good. I may not condone murder, but I refuse to have sympathy for indiscriminate killers like Ecliptic. Especially after massacring innocents working for us. Now, I also had a report that you were spotted at the clinic. I take it you traced the shipment there? I figured it was related. And were you able to determine the purpose of this secure wing? Human trials? Without even completing his product? Ugh, Lucas must be insane. To hell with corporations and CEOs and profit margins. People have died. And you aren't showing the least bit of remorse. Ugh. I'll make sure Yuko's team extracts every bit of information they can from the clinic's database on this. Between hiring Ecliptic and unauthorized human trials, we have enough to take Lucas down for good. And with the Rothesite secure, it's almost time for us to make our move. It certainly is. 
And it's also time to inform the rest of the board on the current situation. Head up to the executive floor and speak to Dalton. He has an update for you on the Mole's identity. I've called a meeting and I expect you to attend. It's time to put the final plan in motion. Thanks for taking time to chat. I... I really need a friendly ear right about now. I received a message from Constellation and it's given me a lot to think about. No, no, it's nothing like that. It's just a list of requests. Things I would normally handle if I was there. <sighs> but I'm not. I'm out here instead with you. You're not keeping me out here. I am. Just... Here. Let me explain. Before I joined Constellation, I served for eight years as the head of the Navigator Corps. Until the UC decided to axe the department. Yeah, sure. <laughs> some more than others. You see, the top brass demanded pressworthy discoveries to justify the spending, and money was tight after the war. Shutdown was inevitable. At the end of the day, I was in charge, so the blame obviously fell on my shoulders. <sighs> yeah? You once told me that you favored the journey over the destination. So I'm hoping you'll understand what I'm trying to say. I failed because I was more concerned about exploring the stars than pushing a pencil. Ah, because of my lack of foresight, all I ended up with was a shattered division and a bunch of excuses. That's just it, though. Did I push too hard? Did they shut us down because I wasn't quietly sitting at my desk approving meaningless memos? We'll never know. Well, that brings us to this message now, doesn't it? Call it whatever you want. My drive, my initiative, my optimism. <laughs> it's been my greatest strength and my worst nightmare. It elevates me to these positions of authority. But all I want to do is explore, not sit and make sure all the accounts are balanced. Yes, exactly. If it's obvious to you, imagine how obvious it is to someone like Barrett or Matteo. Oh, they must be itching to replace me by now. God damn it. Oh my god. I'm so sorry. Oh, here you are trying to help me, and I'm yelling at you. <sighs> you have to understand. Once Aja retired, I lost the only person that gave a damn. Look, it's clear that you have... feelings for me. It's just... I've never had time for this sort of thing in my life. Please, it's not you. It's me. I'm just... Not ready to get that close. I can't. Not now. But thank you for being there and listening. It helped. It really did. I re-evaluated all the evidence. It took every resource I had, but the final answer is clear. Ularu is the mole. I had a feeling Imogene wasn't responsible. <sighs> that poor woman. Indeed. I've briefed Masako and discussed her plans on handling this. 
While we both agree Ularu is guilty, we need irrefutable evidence before presenting this to the board. For now, we lead everyone to believe that Imogene was the mole. And the situation was dealt with. Must that poor woman's name be continuously dragged through the mud? These nonsensical decisions need to stop. I agree. But others may see the decision as irrational without adequate proof. Masako has tasked Ularu with writing the program to bring down Infinity LTD. We believe she'll take the chance to incriminate Masako within the program. So this could provide the evidence we're looking for. You will be tasked with the assignment to infiltrate Infinity. So before you go, I want you to bring that program to me. I can't imagine a more satisfying ending. Now, let's attend a meeting. all together to discuss a recent security breach. We discovered a mole within the company who leaked vital information about Project Dominion to Infinity LTD. You've got to be kidding me. Just don't tell me it's Vina. I think we've all noticed she's not here. Before you speculate any further, no, it's not Vina. The guilty party is Imogene Salzo, much to my disappointment. Our operative here obtained the evidence to confirm it. Dalton, how does something like this happen? Imogene is highly trained. Ularu can even speak to that. We demand the best. So that's the threat we deal with. I may have well-trained operatives. But security is your responsibility, Dalton. This is a huge failing on your part. I accept the responsibility, but let's not forget. The mole has already been exposed and dealt with. Of course, thanks to another of my operatives. I'd even go beyond symptom and call it a treat. Imogene's been dealt with, so bickering is pointless. All I care about is reacquiring our property and what this might be costing us financially. Vina is completing the internal NeuroAmp prototype as we speak. Our operative will receive the implant, infiltrate Infinity LTD, and obtain any and all research. I have it on good authority, the experimentations they've done to replicate the missing pieces of our work have resulted in fatalities. I can't imagine the mess their legal department has on their hands. If I may make a suggestion, we should give this evidence to David at SSNN. It's the best neutral method of releasing this information to the general public. That'd make my job easier. David it is, then. Masako, the internal neuroamp is ready if you want to send down the candidate. I hope you're ready for this. And that's precisely why I know we can count on you. Vina will be waiting for you in the NeuroAmp division in R&D. Once you're done, meet me in my office. Be ready to discuss the details of your next assignment. If only there were more... I have to admit, 
I'm a bit jealous of Ryujin's gorgeous. The fact that the Neuroamp can control and manipulate people against their will is disgusting. The device shouldn't be allowed to exist. Double check those measurements are right. Dehydrated. I suggest. Ah, here's my lucky candidate. I hope you're ready to embark on one amazing journey. Oh, don't worry. That's not on the agenda. Now, just a few details before we begin. Obviously, we'll be putting you under. I'll be making a small incision in the back of your skull where the internal neuroamp will be fitted. The whole procedure should only take three to four hours with little to no downtime afterwards. Provided DeMarcus got everything entered correctly. Did I not just say I quadruple check the numbers? You know I'm just giving you a hard time. Besides, I've got to make sure my patient is reassured. Eh, you're gonna be fine. All I'm saying is that you're in good hands. Now, just lie down on the table once you're ready, and we should be good to go. Alright, let's get this party started. Who's finally up? The operation was a success, obviously. Once you're able to refocus, let me know how you're doing. So, how are you feeling? You look good? Yep, that's me every morning. But the whole point of this is no visual indication and no adverse side effects. So, sounds like we're on track. Just a couple quick notes before using the internal neuroamp. First, you can only influence one person at a time. And second, the effect is temporary. So be prepared if you use it in a combat situation. Well, my tech is only a prototype. This is just the beginning. Now let's test this sucker out. Demarcus has graciously volunteered for science, he says. That's the spirit. Demarcus loves being hands-on and experiencing things on his own. It's probably why he's the second most published scientist here, after me. Just head up the stairs nearby to the observation deck. by the incredible technology. On the other, I'm terrified what could happen should this fall into the wrong hands. I've never been so divided about something in all my life. Oh my god, that was incredible. What was it like? Wow. How to describe it? One minute I was excited about seeing how the experiment would go. The next, I had a brief moment of disorientation and figured I must have lost my train of thought. It felt eerily natural. And yes, I admit it, just as you predicted. I knew it, I knew it, I knew it! I can hardly wait to finish writing up my latest dissertation. And you owe me a hundred creds. 
I'll be keeping so myself under constant surveillance now. Here anyway. I'm curious wondered. if any other side effects Name may manifest. Name a Ryujin product and someone up here is probably working on it. The Crown Jewel's the Neuroamp division though, obviously. So, tell me all about it. How did it feel? Any side effects? Yeah. Management's gotten pretty... I'll take that as a no on the side effects. And that toy you love so much is very powerful. So use it wisely. Yeah, toy is hardly the word I'd use to describe it. It really was fascinating how all I experienced was a moment of disorientation. It's truly remarkable tech. When it comes to your job, you bet it does. Uh, besides, the neuro amp is in total control. If a subject's morals or beliefs in something are strong enough, we still see points of failure. That being said, it's been interesting to discover the actions our subjects sanction in their own minds. Okay, okay. As much as I'd love to go over the details and potential of this amazing piece of technology I created, Masako wants to see you. It sounds like you have an assignment to complete. And Demarcus and I have a lot of notes to record. I'm on my 12th iteration of this design. Pardon. Excuse me. know how to make a keep out of my way and I'll keep out of yours my company's future you can see good now that you've been outfitted with the internal neuro amp it's time to put that tech to work we're sending you into infinity LTD Lucas Drexler is about to learn exactly why you don't steal from Ryujin industries and wish he shall every day while he rots away in prison. All right, Yuko has provided a layout of Infinity LTD. You have two options for this assignment. We'll be providing you with the means for both. Option A, you gain entry through their maintenance access on the roof. Option B, we give you an assigned identity and arrange a meeting for you. Just hope those acting skills don't get you caught or killed. Now, depending on your preference, you'll either find yourself in the maintenance hallway or the marketing department. From there, you have three targets. First, you have Lucas Drexler's computer, located in his office on the executive floor. Second is Faye Sengsavan's computer, in research and development. And third, you need to obtain the prototype they are working on also in R&D. As you can see, you've several floors to traverse. So I hope you're prepared for an adventure. That's what we're counting on. Now, I had Ularu create a program that you need to run on both Lucas and Faye's computers. I'll let her explain the details. You see, once we expose Infinity LTD, all of their data is going to come under intense scrutiny. We only want the public to know about their mercenary hires and unauthorized human trials. But Project Dominion needs to remain confidential. I've created an overseer program that will gather all the evidence we need, and at the same time delete anything relating to Ryujin and the internal Nero amp. Exactly. And what the public doesn't know, doesn't hurt them. With tech like that, I can see why you'd want to maintain control of the narrative, though I strongly object to the methods. If the media were to draw their own conclusions, I'm certain they'd just create a panic among people. Controlling the narrative is of the utmost importance. Oh, let's just hope this program is as thorough as you say then, and as safe. Now, we don't want to mess on this one. A body count will only distract from what we're trying to accomplish here. In fact, unless they're a master at being one with the shadows, I'd suggest you leave your friend behind. Lower the risk. Simon Rychek provided some useful info on how to evacuate civilians from the building. I'm sure you remember him from Sidonia. 
Infinity's maintenance crew is understaffed. It's only a matter of time before pressure gauges go unchecked and they have a massive issue on their hands. Once that pressure becomes too much, every floor in the building is going to suffer from gas leaks, setting off an automated alarm to evacuate the building. Simon was able to get a passcode for you to access their system's computer, so you can force the heating system to fail. My thoughts exactly. We're also issuing you an operative suit. It should help reduce their ability to detect you. These suits are typically reserved for the senior ranks, but we want to reduce as much risk as possible. Well, you're still here, so apparently you didn't need it that bad. Once you've run the Overseer program and obtained the prototype, your final step is to deliver the slate to David Barron at the SSNN field office. If he asks questions, feel free to give him just enough information to pique his interest, but no mention of Ryujin or who you are. SSNN is used to anonymous tips. They'll do whatever verifications they deem necessary on their own to confirm the story. You and me both. So, any final questions before you go? You have the ability to manipulate others. If someone's in your way, you could get them to move. If someone has a keycard, that means you have a keycard. The possibilities here are really up to you. You'll be restricted to the marketing floor. An appointment is not a free pass. Good luck, and be sure to report directly back to me when you return. Here's Simon's passcode, your operative suit, the Overseer program, and your cover identity. Your cover ID card is encoded with roof entry and elevator access, so that's your ticket in either way. Don't screw this up, Skylar Lumen. Spend no expense on the exec program. Don't cause any trouble. Do you have the program? I'm certain Ularu won't pass up this opportunity. So, let's take a look. hit a snag. There's definitely something here. This is exactly what we needed. According to this code, Ularu intended to plant false evidence that would show Masako was working with Lucas. The moment you launched the Overseer program, a series of fabricated communication files would have been uploaded to the Infinity LTD network. One of them even frames Masako for encouraging Lucas to push for early human trials. First Imogene, now Masako. Ularu keeps using people as rungs on the way up the ladder. Any one of us could be next. I'm going to copy the necessary files off this slate and issue you a new one. I want to keep this one intact, so Ularu can't dispute it. All right. Now, we finally have the evidence we need to prove Ularu's guilt. Good. Then let's nail Ularu right to the wall. She deserves everything that's coming her way. Yes. 
And had you not brought this program to me in the first place, you would have been the one planting the false evidence. Without that falsified evidence, Ularu is in for a big surprise. I fully expect she'll be eagerly awaiting SSNN's broadcast, anticipating Masako to be accused alongside Lucas Drexler. Here's the new slate with the revised Overseer program. Let's get this assignment finished the right way. I've always liked that statue. It's beautiful, isn't it? Hmm. I wonder what the artist was trying to represent. I've flown across it's most of the seven systems of all manners of spacecraft. And yet, I still get sick.
Working at the office of interest. You can't go in. You just can't. We're close to the action here in New Atlantis. But Prime position dad. to report on he the big me. stories that affect the United States. I hate colonies. to break it to you, but his PA is the one. Can I help you? Cards and headshots. Mr. Barron's a very busy and important man. Well, I'll be the judge of that. I came all What's this so called story about? Listen, I might be able to hook you up with some... All right. I'll take a look. Maybe get you a ticket to a I don't suppose you want to tell me how you got this evidence. You are the best! I figured as much. Is there at least a name I can cite as my source? Why am I not surprised? As long as the evidence is adequate and verifiable, I expect it'll be aired within the hour if not sooner. Now, if you'll excuse me, I obviously have some work to do. <laughs> David Barron is the most famous journalist in the civil system. I believe you were specifically told that we did not want a body count on this assignment. Your best is sorely lacking. All the tools at your disposal, and yet here we are. I hope you at least attempted to use the internal neuroamp. And yet not useful enough to avoid a body count? Still, it's good to know the applications are proving themselves. So now it's just a waiting game for SSNN to break the news. Once the story airs, we have another board meeting scheduled to decide how to handle Infinity. Go ahead, Maeve. The SSNN broadcast has started. Shall I patch it through? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. The murders are believed to be linked to a new investigation <laughs> where Drexler would have been accused of numerous violations, including murder for hire, unauthorized human trials, and corporate theft. Authorities representing the UC and the Freestar Collective have been dispatched to a consolidated mining station and the clinic. Both locations are believed to hold numerous victims. Drexler's motivation appears to be an attempt to launch a new product based off stolen information from a competitor. The details on the project itself and the competitor have yet to be confirmed. This has been David Barron for SSNN. Perfect. This exposure puts Infinity right where we want them. The meeting will begin momentarily, but I want you to discuss the options we have with the other members. Infinity's net worth is about to hit rock bottom, so this gives us the opportunity to win a little more public faith. Quite right. The truth is, we'll be making evaluations. We'll shed any employees who don't make the cut, slowly but surely. By incorporating Infinity, <coughs> we eliminate a competitor, get their best employees and contracts, and all while boosting our public perception. It is the right thing for Ryujin. Which is why I'd like you to talk to the board to convince them this is the right move. There are several who might disagree, and you have the perfect tool to help sway them. Good. You'll find most of the board members in their offices preparing. Vina is also here, waiting for the meeting to start. We'll need at least 50% of the vote to go our way. In the event of a tie, I will make the final decision. I trust you'll get it done. Did Masako send you to try and convince me to acquire Infinity LTD? I think we both know that's not going to work. Huh. 
Our public perception is good enough. If you ask me, reaching out to save Infinity just makes us look weak. The internal Neuroamp gives us the power to crush our competitors, not take them under our wing. This is exactly why Masako's time as CEO is finished. <laughs> I'll overlook your poorly educated statement. For now. Throwing your competitor a lifeline when they're about to crash and burn hardly seems wise. Uh, well, it does make Ryujin look good. And we do gain a wider customer base, which means higher profits. You're oddly right about this one, Op. I guess you are worth keeping around. As long as everyone has Ryujin's best interests in mind, this should make for an interesting meeting. I can only imagine the contracts that will be pouring in. We'd almost be literally in control of anything we wanted. Now if you'll excuse me, I still have a lot of preparations to make. I've got my eye on you. <laughs> you operatives really will wear anything. Just the person I wanted to see. I want to get all the details locked down for this meeting, and I believe you to be one of the best sources available. Good. I prefer first-hand feedback when available. You've had the chance to encounter members of Infinity LTD throughout your assignments here. Do you think they're worth redemption? And why? Your statement confirms my suspicions. As much as Genevieve believes the public perception would boost overall sales, there's no way to know the repercussions of their financials. Next question. What is your opinion on how Masako handled the mole situation? Any insight into what made it successful? Being prepared for anything is a great asset, one that Masako excels at. I appreciate the insight. I suppose I should ask if there's anything I can do for you, considering how helpful you've been. This has been rather enlightening for me. I appreciate the time. Is Masako checking up on me to make sure I'm on her side? Well, you can let Masako know to rest easy. It just so happens that her agenda lines up with mine. We just need to grab Infinity LTD while it's got the public's full attention. I'm all about free PR, especially when it's painting us in a good light. I'm sure I can squeeze enough goodwill out of this to last us at least a year. Well, you have my attention. You're preaching to the choir. I have every intention of using it to our full advantage. In fact, I already have an entire marketing campaign in the works and ready to pitch once it's officially approved. Well, it seems your talents really do stretch beyond just being an operative. Good talk. Maybe I'll even consult you on future endeavors. So much work to do. If you need something, make it quick. I'd like to make sure my arguments are solid before this meeting. You heard correct. I've every reason to believe that Infinity LTD is the Pandora's box of corporations. All right, I could use the entertainment. Tell me why Infinity is a good asset. If it was anyone other than Infinity, I assure you it would. I do care about people. 
The people at this company. Hmm. I'm starting to understand what you're saying. Huh. Well, what do you know? I think you just convinced me. Talent like yours belongs in the courtroom. Are you trying to add to my stress right now? First off, if I find out you use that device on me, I will tie you up in court on whatever charges I can conjure for the rest of your life. Second, that tech is one major human rights violation that no legal team wants to fight. I'll do whatever I can to make sure it's either severely delayed or collects dust in storage. In an ideal situation, yes. And I suppose creating that ideal situation is within my power. Hmm. Now you've made it sound like a proper challenge that I can't help but accept. Masako is lucky to have you at her disposal, you know? You may be the greatest asset, aside from the internal neuroamp, that Ryujin has. This exchange has been surprisingly insightful. But now, I really do need to get back to my notes. This meeting should prove to be very interesting. I assume Masako briefed you on her preferred outcome. That blasted tech. If it were up to me, I'd have shut down Project Dominion a long time ago. I knew it was a grave security risk. And look what happened. Hmm. I suppose you're right. As long as I'm fully aware of the risks, I can properly account for them. My first priority will be to get the board and all security members set up with shielding as soon as possible. Plus, if we vote to acquire Infinity LTD, we're about to add a significant workload onto my team. The last thing I want to deal with are any more incidents this new neuroamp might cause. I imagine we're looking at months of work. Infinity LTD is obviously not known for their security. I only hope that Masako and the others will be patient with the process. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have some preparations to make. We'll be announcing Ularu's termination of employment at this meeting, so I need to have security ready to escort her off the premises. Ooh, look at that. Your surgical wound's healing like a dream. And how's my favorite patient doing? Not seeing any temporal memory flashes or losing time, I hope. Oh, that's great. I'd say Project Dominion is ready for legitimate human trials in that case. One step closer to seeing market approval. Genevieve is going to be so excited. So, tell me what you think of the Neuroamp. I'd be the next Ray Dakaris, my childhood hero and mentor. How amazing would that be? Demarcus, eat your heart out. Don't tell him I said that. He knows I love and respect him. So the next question is, what will the fate of Infinity LTD be? I'd like to acquire them, although it won't break my heart if we don't. Faye may have stepped over a line in her attempt to replicate my work, but she's a brilliant engineer. I'm very curious to see what else she may have been working on and dig into her research. Exactly. Not that I want to gloat over it. Maybe just a little. Okay, so Demarcus and I have really been looking forward to it, so fingers crossed this deal goes through. Well, this has certainly been the most interesting conversation of my day. All we can do now is look forward to the meeting, right? See you in there. Don't wander into any restricted areas.
All right, everyone. As you all know, we've successfully exposed Infinity LTD's botched human trials and murder for hire through SSNN. The public is demanding their leadership, namely Lucas Drexler, face trial. And he's probably writing his resignation as we speak. Ryujin will be launching a statement, but I believe now is the perfect time to acquire Infinity LTD. Believe it or not, I agree. The acquisition has risks, and it's going to create a lot of work for all of us. But the overall payoff will be worth it. Legal ramifications are a certainty, but the benefits far outweigh the disadvantages. Arguments? Infinity LTD could be the Pandora's box of financial and legal risks. I simply cannot support an acquisition. I think what we're all overlooking is what led us to this situation to begin with. Yes, our security was compromised. But considering Dalton was hired by Masako, the issue obviously starts at the top. In fact, I propose that Masako be removed from CEO altogether. Ularu, this isn't a line you want to cross. And considering you're the mole, if anyone's going to be removed from power, it's going to be you. Hold up. Are you saying you lied to us? Dalton, the last meeting we had, you distinctly said Imogene was the mole, and she'd been dealt with. Do you even have any proof to back up this outrageous claim? Of course we do. The malicious code you hid on this slate to upload incriminating evidence against Masako onto Lucas Drexler's computer. To put it bluntly, Ularu, you're fired. Security will hold you in your office until a proper exit interview can be done. This isn't right. I should at least have the opportunity to resign. And allow you to still be marketable to a competitor? I don't think so. This may be news to me, and I will be reviewing the evidence closely. But this isn't something you just get to walk away from. Security, escort Miss Chen to her office, and see that she stays put. You'll regret this. All of you. I believe the only regret would be trusting you to begin with. All right, back to business. All in favor of acquiring Infinity LTD? Aye. All against? Nay. Good. Alexis, start drawing up the necessary documentation. Anyone have anything else they'd like to bring up? If there's nothing else, this meeting is concluded. I'll be following up with a few of you shortly. So much work to do. If Operation starts to bore you, let me know. You'd make a perfect lab so, for the R&D. So, Infinity LTD learned a lesson the hard way, and we exposed the traitor among us. You've proven yourself to be quite the asset here at Ryujin. I suppose it is. Gratitude isn't something you typically hear these days in the corporate world. I truly appreciate the work you put in to exposing Ularu. No operative has ever had to investigate our own to the extent that you did. I can imagine it may have been a lot of pressure, considering you were fairly new at the time. Imogene's instincts were right about you. Now, as promised, I have your bonus. I hope you'll find it appropriate for all you've done. And I'm promoting you to senior operative. You've more than earned it. It's well deserved. As for the details, I think someone back on the operations floor would prefer to explain those to you.
looks clean. Let's set it down. If you'll follow me, I'll show you to the director. Kaya Patel, our administrator and research director. 28 years in quantum particle physics, or so I'm told. It's beyond me. We'll take the back way up. What the? Easy! Easy! What the 
hell was that? One minute, you're following me, and then you're just gone. Minute later, you pop in out of nowhere, looking like you were in the middle of a fight. But there's nothing here. I should have never let you inside. What is this? Some kind of stealth tick? Who are you working for? <sighs> Look, I don't know what's going on. Let's get you to the director. Maybe she can figure this out. Come on, this way. Finally, someone came. The distress signal. You picked up the distress signal, right? What do you mean? Wait, how did you get in here? Hughes? Ethan Hughes? But he's dead. No. No, no, no. This doesn't make any sense. Unless... The accident. Maybe... Maybe this is a side effect of the accident. If the probe is still feeding power to the distortion, then... Right. Sorry. Three months ago, I was calibrating an experiment in our high-energy research lab. There was an accident. An explosion. It caused a gas leak. Sparked a fire. I was trapped in the control room. There was nothing I could do. They're... They're all dead. The lab was built around a xenolith with a dense metallic ob... Disappear. We should... Wait. He's back. All right. We're on our way up. He was out. I was just filling in the director. Let's keep moving. If anything happens, the director's office is on the second floor, end of the hall. You can't miss it. Where? Director? Thank you, Ethan. Come in. Kaya Patel, research director. And this is our chief scientist, Maria Hughes. Ethan said you disappeared right in front of him. Twice now? Three times? Director, you can't be taking this seriously. Look, I don't know who you are or what you're doing here, but there has to be a rational explanation for all of this. Excuse me? That is quite a claim. What makes you think that? Tell us about this other universe. Raphael? Raphael died in the accident. He... Wait, burned out? The leak? Director, there was a hydrogen leak right after the accident. It was contained in a minute or two. But if it hadn't been, it could well have caused an explosion. Another universe, though. 
That's a lot to swallow. An artifact? You mean the source of the distortion? You know something about it? Really? That's all you're gonna say? No, no. Fair enough. You have a prior connection with them, then. Maybe that's why this is only affecting you. <sighs> this facility and the research level two kilometers beneath us were built to study a gravitational distortion. This artifact and the field it creates. Three months ago, our chief engineer, Raphael, was calibrating an experimental probe when something went wrong. We still don't know what happened. There was a series of explosions, and somehow, it's still running. That would make sense. That's why the field strength keeps increasing. We have a control unit for the probe. After the accident, I tried to use it to shut down the system, but the kill switch isn't responding. We could shut it off manually, but the entire research level is locked down. We can't even get down there. I told you the research level's locked down. We can't even use the damn elevator. What? Clever. In this other universe, Raphael survived. He made it back from the lab. So clearly, his elevator works. Take it. And you might be able to shut down the experiment. This is crazy. But first, we have to do something about your shifting. We can't shut down the probe, but we might be able to adjust some of the other parameters. It's risky. We don't know what we're dealing with, but... <sighs> All right. It's worth a try. Then it sounds like we have a plan. Come with me. The control unit is in the fabrication lab next door. What have we gotten ourselves into? Disappeared, and the ceiling caved in, and and uh, I thought I'd finally lost it. What? How? Look, if you think things are bad up here, the research level is even worse. I barely made it out, and that was months ago. I don't understand any of this. If I hadn't seen you disappear with my own eyes, I wouldn't have believed it. I. <sighs> Okay, okay. You're my ticket out of here. We'll do this your way. We can get out through the pantry. Here's the key. I'll back you up, I guess. this out, assuming the rest of the building doesn't come down on top of us. I'm not sure. 
sure. It might stop whatever's happening to you. It's a reasonable theory, I guess. How should I know? You're the one who keeps winking in and out of existence. I just want to get out of here. Go do whatever you're going to do. I'll see if I can clear a path to the door. I was in the lab, working on the frequency calibration for the probe. I was walking out of the control room when it happened. I heard the tanks rupture. The alarm sound. I only had a second to react. I jumped back into the control room. The door sealed. I was safe. From the gas. The fire. Everything. But I was trapped. There was nothing I could do to stop it. If I had gone the other way, maybe I could have made it to the ventilation controls. Killed the system. Even if it killed me. I don't know. I don't want to think about it. They're a native species. We had an electric pulse field to keep them out. The fire took out the generators, damaged the foundation. They just keep coming. What? I... Oh, it's you. You realize you just popped into my locked office. So much for security protocols. Uh, sure. Down the hall. Take the stairs next to the atrium. Yeah, let me get the doors for you. And done. Is there anything else you need? Uh, yes. Kataxi. Nasty things. The original survey team ran across them. You're welcome to read the old logs if you want. Yeah, I'll unlock the terminal for you. The Kataxi in the other universe. Aha. Uh -huh. Wow. I got an experimental thing one of the engineers put together. But... Uh. Huh. That makes a lot of sense now that I think about it. Haha, <laughs> I hear you. All right. Yeah. It's never been field tested, but all yours. Did you get lost in the hallway? Uh, all right. This is the probe control unit. Most of these controls aren't responding. I'm going to very carefully adjust the settings I can. There's no way to tell what's about to happen. Pay attention and be ready for anything. I'll begin by adjusting the energy feed of the electron beam array. We're at 93 teravolts. Calibrating to... 95, 97, 100. Ugh, nothing. 
Let's try the other way. 91, 89. What the? Okay, okay. It looks safe to approach. But what in the world? It's a micro distortion. Flux pattern matches the distortion in the lab. The setting is just exposing it somehow. Hmm. Step into the distortion, please. Hmm. Nothing. No, hold on. There's a slight pattern change. Some kind of resonance. All right, stay there. Let me turn the feet back up for a moment. Calibrating to 90, 91. What happened? Are you all right? So, the lower setting causes the distortions to manifest, and the higher causes you to shift. That seems promising. Keep it on the lower setting until you want to shift, and you should be able to avoid any more accidents. I'd give you my control unit, but it looks like you already have one from the other universe. Love to take a look at that when this is all over. Right? If you can get down to the research level, you need to make your way to the High Energy Research Lab. Disengage the power interlocks, then pull the emergency shutdown to stop the probe. That should finally put an end to all this. Oh, and before you go, the director wanted to speak with you. It really is just down the hall. Well then, all set? If you need supplies, I've asked Dr. Barakova to take care of you. It's the least I can do after everything we've put you through. Before you go, there is one other thing we should discuss. If this experiment is the cause of your shifting, when you shut it down, the shifting will stop. What happens then? To you and to us. Nishina is a closed system. Two potential states held in tension. When you shut down the experiment, that tension will resolve. You are the outside observer in the system. Whichever reality you are in, at that moment, is what will become real. For you, and your universe at least. The question is, which will you choose? Hmm. If this were a choice between my life and Raphael's, I would ask you to save him. But as the director of the station, I am responsible for the lives of my staff. 30 people. People with families, careers, futures ahead of them. In this universe, you don't have to decide now. But when the time comes, please keep them in mind. Now, it's time you are going. With the network offline, we can't shut down the security system on the research level, so you can expect some resistance. Be careful. Ethan, unlock the elevator lobby, please. Ma'am, research level is still locked down. I'm aware of that. I... All right. Done. Good luck, dear. It's been a fascinating day. Yes, what? Tatiana Barakova, station. I can spare. Beyond that, I am not your therapist, your psychologist, or your cosmetologist. 
If there's anything else you need, ask. Hmm. You won't even need a bandage for that. All right. <sighs> Let me see what I can find. What is it now? Excuse me? Perhaps you'd care to try a dead-end medical post on some godforsaken planet in the middle of nowhere, huh? Six-year surgical residency, and I spend my days treating paper cuts and hurt feelings for a bunch of mathematicians and physicists. And now I have to deal with some spacer who thinks they're jumping between universes? Spare me.
Security lockdown is active.
vehicles are available on designated security terminals.
security lockdown has been terminated. You are? Welcome back. Ethan, how are we doing? Research levels back online. Definitely some damage, but it could be a lot worse. We will have to replace a few robots. Yes, well, that's a small price to pay, all things considered. This is a lot to take in. Artifacts, multiple universes. Look on the bright side, dear. Just imagine the papers you'll publish. If anyone even believes this, I am curious, though. Why did you decide to stay here, with us? Of course, I'll make sure the Consortium remembers his sacrifice. Our next supply ship will be arriving soon. I'll have a full report ready for them. For now, I'd like to extend our gratitude and what compensation I can offer for everything we put you through. Thank you. This has been a truly remarkable experience.
Handling those tricky decisions regarding Ryujin must have been difficult. In fact, I'm amazed you were able to deal with them at all. Those types of corporations remind me why I never ventured into business. I can't stand that way of life. Oh, really? Well, let's examine that statement a bit more closely, shall we? Take what Ryujin's doing, for example. Based on your recommendation, they'll be continuing their work on the NeuroAmp technology. How exactly does that absolve them from their immorality? I can't argue that point. But imagine that technology in the wrong hands. Imagine the awful things you could force people to do. It's almost too horrible to contemplate. I suppose I can't completely blame you for that. I'm sure they dazzled you with its advantages. Perhaps next time you'll consider the consequences before buying into that corporate rubbish. When you have a moment, I'd like to speak to you. I have an important personal decision to make, but I need to discuss something with you first. Phew, thank you. So, where to start? Um, before I was with the Navigator Corps, I was career military, part of the United Colonies Navy. When the Colony War broke out, I was posted as the Chief Navigator on a warship, the Dauntless. Well, the position didn't last long. There was a particularly bloody battle. We were fighting over a world in the Ata Cassiopeia system. Worst fighting I'd ever seen. We lost 12 ships that day. 12. Including my own. No. This is important. I need to tell you this. The ship was barely intact. The captain and first mate died the previous day, which put me in command. A shrewd captain would have called for the crew to abandon ship, but I was so angry. I wanted to stay. I needed to fight. <sighs> I believe you, but you haven't heard the worst of this. We fought for hours, but the damage was fatal. I gave the order to abandon ship and the crew piled into the escape shuttle. As the shuttle launched, I could see it was damaged. I... I heard screams before the radio cut. The last thing I saw, they were... spiraling helplessly towards the planet's surface. There was... There was nothing I could do. You're sorry. For me? If I hadn't been so stubborn, so eager to prove that I could handle command, my crew would have had more time to escape. Try telling that to their loved ones. When the dust settled, the United Colonies gave me a medal. Can you believe that? A damn medal! I never even had a chance to find the shuttle wreckage and give my crew a proper burial. After I checked every section of the ship for wounded crew, I took the other escape shuttle. If I hadn't, I would have died. The Dauntless came apart minutes after I escaped. Bad luck. That sounds familiar. Remember when you said no one but me would have pushed harder to keep the Navigator Corps going? Well, this time, pushing too hard cost lives. Don't you get it? Everything I do, everything I touch, somehow falls apart. 
That's why I'm worried about us. <laughs> All this nonsense and you still have faith, eh? You really care about me, don't you? You know, I spent a lot of time thinking about us, about our relationship, how we've clearly become close. I practiced what I was going to say when the moment was right, and now that it's here, my mind's gone blank. <laughs> uh, look, you deserve the best. Someone who can give themselves to you entirely. But right now, I have too much baggage. Too much on my mind. I hope you'll forgive me for pushing you away. I just need time. Are you shooting at ghosts now? here and some grass there and this place might not look so awful.
This silence is getting awkward. I see you've done that before.
You didn't tell me we have visitors. We have visitors. Welcome. What's mine is yours. Well, no, it's still mine, but you get what I mean. I'm impressed. How did you... Did you... You don't deserve the final artifact. This life you've led, you're nothing but a thief, an opportunist, a liar. It's more than credits that the Unity will demand of you. You think you have a right to the infinite? You're nothing! Guards! Come on, Rook. Come on. You can make it. Barely stepped on the juryman's road with us. Can't see another soul off to the void so soon. No. No! I'll pour one out to the blackest sea for you, Rook. this ghost? What kind of cruelty is this? This some starborn trick? Come to mock me before you twist the blade? Multiple universes? You're a visitor jumping through the gates of space and time? Not sure if you're just a reflection of a shattered brain, but okay, I get your meaning. Well, ghost from the other side, I'll keep what you said rolling around in my head for a spell. But for now, wouldn't mind if you gave me a bit. I just lost a friend.
What are you doing? This still has some value, you know.
So, where to next? So this is it. This armillary can finally be assembled, and the Starborn assure that something will happen on the other side. Something that will make us like them. Funny. I thought after all this time I'd be screaming in excitement to jump into the unknown, but I feel like I'm hesitating. I know that, and believe me, I feel it. The destiny of it all. But after that, what happens? Say we go to the Unity. Become Starborn. Enter another universe. Will there even be a constellation there? It won't be ours, even if it is. I really turned you into a true believer, didn't I? Oh, what have I done? Ah, all right. Let's get back to it. One more jump into the unknown. I can't wait to get to the Unity! I've been reading all about Parallel Universe Theory, and I'm so ready to meet another version of me. You think it's okay if I call them Korra too? I'll have to check all my charts and double check all the locking mechanisms and see what kind of differences there are in the next universe. You know, in case we get into the kind of trouble we always do. Look. Dad said that there's a chance we might all get separated after we go to the Unity. You don't think that's going to happen, do you? That's what Dad said. I feel... kind of bad, you know? That I want to go anyway? I'm sure gonna miss the Lodge, but I can't wait to see what happens next. Walter spends a fortune to maintain them. It appears Constellation's current mission is at its end. It is customary to offer congratulatory statements. Thank you. If I were sentient, I am sure I would be feeling a great sense of pride and increased social connectivity to you. I hope the process of becoming Starborn is done without causing any physical trauma. But, given the unknown physiological requirements of crossing universes, that seems unlikely. Given that the Starborn encounters have so far not included any robots, the safe assumption is that I will need to remain behind. If we do not see each other again, goodbye, Captain. From a statistical standpoint, you have been an unusually effective member of this team. There must be something. So I know we aren't keeping all the artifacts here anymore, but I think I can get some good readings from your ship. You have no idea how excited I am to analyze the data after you jump to the Unity. I'm gonna make some coffee. Pull an all-nighter. What? No, no, no. I do not do field work. Especially not the restructuring yourself at the molecular level kind. Or whatever the Unity actually does to make you starborn. Anyway, Vladimir and I have been talking, and 
We're both staying here. Someone has to keep Constellation going with so many people leaving. It'll be pretty quiet at first, but that's what Constellation has been doing forever, right? An old generation moves on, a new one moves in. <laughs> Maybe one day. For now, I think I'm better off letting Vladimir have that headache. Okay, I promised myself I wouldn't cry. <laughs> And I'm sticking to that. So, goodbye. I'll miss you all. Come now. Tip your ear for a moment. Ah, oh, it'll be a shame to pack up all the modifications to the eye for finding the artifacts. But she's earned a break. Gilded our fortunes for sure. Ah. Uh -huh. I'm just an old blade in the dark trying to make good. I'll be taking up the chair when everyone's gone in the Unity. Set Constellation's course for another new beginning. Not my first time at the helm for a crew, but going to take it slow. Uh, don't know about that. Intend to keep teaching folks how to play the Troublemaker's game. No use being an explorer if you aren't a little dangerous. Well, tipped your ear long enough. I'll be smiling as you walk through Eternity's Gate. Give the next universe something to talk about, yeah? Really, Walter? There must be something. It's taken Do you care have a second, of. friend? There's nothing to discuss. I've thought about it, and as much as I would love to see the unity the way Keeper Aquilus has experienced it, I'm not coming with you. I know I should be excited, but I can't stop thinking about the fact that the Keeper knew about the unity but chose to keep it hidden. I think I need to look for my answers here in this universe. And I can't leave my parents. I know they would understand, but they're not getting any younger. You too. I know I'm flaking out at the end, but I'm glad I was a part of all this. I appreciate what you're doing, Walter, but honestly, Let's get a second opinion, oh, sorry. shall we? I was just doing Walter something. and I were just discussing the expenses incurred during the attack. No, I was explaining that there's nothing to discuss. It's been taken care of. It seems that Walter has taken it upon himself to cover the costs of the repairs to both the Lodge and the Eye, as well as any expenses relating to the... to the funeral services. Barrett, for all his antics, was an essential part of this group, and a friend. None of us would be here without the others. We're all incredibly indebted to one another. Well, I can't thank you enough, Walter. Sarah, I know we argue about money all the time. Most of it is in jest, but Occasionally it's not. This is the one way I can best contribute to our work. It has been, and continues to be, an honor to do so. And when this is all over, we can go back to squabbling about minor expenses. But it was important to me that I do this. Fair enough. Well... Since we're already talking about this, there is one more thing I'd like to do for Barrett, and I'd appreciate your input. Nothing extravagant, just a small plaque here in the lodge. Something to remember them by. Where do you think would be appropriate? Sounds fitting. Any objections, Walter? No. I think this is a fine idea. 
Yes. I think that's right. There's nothing like an investment paying off. We've succeeded beyond my wildest dreams. Everyone should feel proud. Oh, I just don't know how he does it. Up there all alone for so long. Oh, no. This moment isn't about my corporate holdings, no. Being part of Constellation was... just for me. Although there's always opportunities, I'm not above taking advantage of what we learn as a group. <laughs> Alas, while I would like to take the final jump with everyone, I'm afraid the saying, you can't take it all with you, has caught up to me. There might not be a Stroud Eklund in the next universe, and certainly not mine. And I would be a poor choice of company if I was, well, poor. You know what? I owe you that. Maybe once this all dies down, I'll take another look at our charitable efforts. The streets of Neon sometimes produce a true diamond in the rough. We shouldn't wait for the next one to just fall in our laps, fresh from some mining excursion. Goodbye, my friend. If I could borrow a bit from Sebastian Banks, Bring light into the darkness of the unknown. journey seems to be coming to an end. So, the unity awaits. I'm not as afraid as I thought I would be. Stepping away from the world you know can lead to a better place. I do not know if I would say the same. More that I accept it. I'm ready. Do you think we will see each other after the unity? Will we even recognize each other if we do? Oh, that was already my plan. If we do not see each other again, then goodbye. I am proud of all that we have accomplished. I have things I wish to discuss with you, when you have time. Hello. I'm up for a little adventure. Coming up on the end of a long ride here. We got all the artifacts. Are you ready for what comes next? Might not see each other on the other side. I know. Just bracing for it. Hey, listen, uh... You're probably wondering about Korra. I played it over in my head a thousand times, and... I've made up my mind. She's coming with. I know what everyone's gonna say, but... Even if I told her no, she'd find some way on board that ship. And if we stayed behind... We'd both regret it. <laughs> Glad to know you still got that sense of humor of yours. Okay. Let's get it, huh? The unknown is right over the next bend.
You made it. I hope you're enjoying the view. I never get tired of staring at it. Eternity. Everyone says that when they hear themselves for the first time. But no, you don't sound like this. At least, not this you. I am as much you as you are a part of everything. All points connect to here. When a star is born or dies, its existence beats through the heart of this place. The unity. I have seen all you are, have been, and could be. Do you feel like you've lived a good life? Is there anything you regret? Do you feel dead? You are energy, and energy cannot be destroyed. That's good. You will need that clarity for what comes next. In order to become Starborn, you must give the universe one last thing. Yourself. That intangible part of you. That something that makes you unique amongst the infinite will explode like a supernova. A part of you will fuse with the essence of this universe, while another part leaves it behind forever. Do you understand what I mean? This one final leap will change this universe forever, even as you leave it behind. Unknowingly, you just answered your own questions. For who creates things but creators? That is what they have been named throughout the endless circle of time. Are they one or many? Human or alien? Terrestrial or celestial? One day, you might even meet the creators. But not this day. As for the why so that you could ask that very question. So that you could stand before me for time immemorial and delve into the mysterious of the unending cosmos. Much like the death of a star creates new kinds of matter, so will the part of your being become fused with the unity itself. That part is what becomes Starborn and crosses into the multiverse. Through your eyes, it will be as if waking up from a dream. Walk into the gate of light and you will become Starborn. Everything will vanish and you will awaken somewhere else. But that isn't your only potential destiny. You could turn around, walk away from the unity until the stars fade away, and you will wake up on your own ship. In your universe, you could live out the life you have. I have enjoyed speaking to you once again. All of you. Every version that is here in the Unity, right now. Go out into the stars. As you consider stepping towards infinity, I offer you a glimpse into what will happen to the universe you may be leaving. As the essence of who you are is spread throughout space and time. By defeating both the Hunter and the Emissary, the path to the unity in this universe is left for the people of the settled systems to discover on their own, uninterrupted by powerful Starborn. Ron Hope's downfall proves once again that the Free Star Rangers put justice above petty power plays and politics. 
a sense of commitment to the common good grows throughout the Freestar Collective. Acts of heroism and noble sacrifice increase. The Constellation membership who stays behind will in time publish their data about the discovery of the artifacts, the Starborn, and the Unity. Space exploration across the settled systems is given new life as people search for home out there in the stars. The resurrection of the Asili species leads to a massive reduction in terramorph attacks across the settled systems. At the same time, the need to spread the Asili's far and wide increases cooperation between all the factions. Belief in the UC as the diplomatic leader of the settled systems grows. produces the internal Neuroamp, which becomes the killer device every negotiator, diplomat, and salesperson purchases. When people think of success, they think of Ryujin, whether they want to or not.
Khan. We're going to attempt to scan you for contraband. Please comply. Uh, pretty please. Scan complete. You are clear to land in New Atlantis.